Uh, look, Angie, I better tell you. What? Well, you know the invoice you gave me? Well, I've already given it to Holdsworth. Oh, great. Well, no, it's not so great, you see. He's got this idea that because the whole thing was for charity and because the staff gave their time for free... Oh, no, just a minute. Look, I'm not saying I agree with him. I don't. You earned every penny of it. He's refusing to pay me. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Well, he's just got this idea that because the thing was for charity... I know it was for charity. That's why I didn't charge more. Look, I'll tell him that. I'll get him to change his mind. I will. Yeah, well, you better. Because I put over 300 quid of my own money into that and a hell of a lot of time and effort as well. Yeah, I know you did. He, um, look, he asked me to, uh, to give you this. A shopping voucher? Yeah, it's for £10. You can come in the store and get... Well, yeah, I know how you feel. It's an insult, yeah. yeah. I don't want vouchers. I don't want stamps or food parcels. I want money. Cash, cheques, but money, right? Yeah, I'll convey that to him. Yeah, you convey it, or I'll be down there to convey it myself. Yeah, bye, Gail. Right, so I'm washing up these doing here. Any volunteers? Martin. What? Don't resent me. What are you on about? You know what I'm on about. I just like things the way they are. I don't want to risk changing them. Well, all right. But let me just ask you one question. What? Well, suppose you were to die in an accident or whatever, which I know is something none of us want to think about, but it could happen, right? Yeah. What do you think would happen to these? Hmm? Because it wouldn't end up with me. I'm not the father as far as the law's concerned, am I? I don't know. I haven't thought about well, it. Well, I have. They'll probably end up with Ivy or maybe with Audrey. Or maybe there'll be such a scrap between the pair of them over who's going to have them. They'll end up with someone else altogether. But they won't end up with me. Because who am I? I'm just the boyfriend. And you think that's a good enough reason for us to get married? <laughs> don't you think? No, I don't think. It sounds more like moral blackmail All right, to me. then, forget I even mentioned it. Yeah, I will. Right. <laughs> well, it looks like I'm volunteering again, doesn't it? Never in love. Do you want me to get you any shopping in? No, I think I can manage my own shopping, thanks, Phyllis. Ah, but what sort? All those convenience foods. I mean to say, find him the rubbish I do with you. Listen, it won't keep you fit and healthy, that oh, love won't. Give us a break, will you? You're supposed to be cleaning, not keeping tabs on me every move. Hey, have you heard from that wife of yours yet? No. Nope. Oh, well, don't give up hope. She changed her mind once before, she could do it again. Phyllis, let's do a deal, shall we? What? You want to go on about what I'm eating? That's fine. You want to go on about whether my socks are clean or not? That's fine as well. What I don't want you going on about is my wife, where she is or what she's doing, right? I was only saying... And I'm only saying, forget her. She doesn't exist. Oh, oh what a day, Mrs Duckworth. Day of triumph. Day not to be forgotten when the history of better bars comes to be written. What a night, eh? You can't have put it away when you get going. Well, I, I was in character, wasn't I? Bacchus, goddess of wine. <laughs> and he had a skin full of now, did Mercury? Yes, <laughs> yes, thank you, Mrs. Duckworth. I'm sure there's something you should be getting on with now. Uh, Mr. Holdsworth, if I may bring up the subjects of the float. Well, well, last night, if you remember, I, I gave you a bill. A bill from Angie Freeman, who designed the float and put a lot of time and effort into it, not to mention money. The head office. And they've not been told, have they? Oh, they've got to give them the good news. It'd be better to give it to them than you, Mercury, my fleet-footed messenger. Uh, Mr. Holdsworth, hey, we well, need a photo, don't we? Oh, we must have a photo. Right, press there here, ring them up, tell them, ask them, ask them if they've got a photo. Then send it with a letter to the head office, informing them of our achievement. Yes, what, 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 what? Miss Freeman gave us a bill. Head office will be sending us gold stars when they hear what we've done, lad. Come on, Mercury. Jumpy, 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 jumpy. Love that shit. I thought it were a miscarriage of justice myself. I can't say that I'm that interested, Percy. Thanks, yeah, Jack. A uh, packet of fags and all, oh. please. Yeah. Well, I thought we had the better costumes, and we certainly had the more patriotic theme. I mean, what were they? Greeks? What's Greeks got to do around here? I have no idea. 374, Jack. Ah, love, what is he going on about, Audrey? Weatherfield Carnival. Did you not see it? No. Oh, Ooh, you missed a treat. You miss Percy and a rather overweight Britannia rolling about on the back of a lorry. Nay. Mm, now he's complaining because he didn't get a prize for it. Well, it seems to me you got all the prize that anybody could want, Percy. <laughs> the woman fell over. I was trying to save myself from being crushed. Yes, oh, uh... of course you were, Percy. Oh, Sally, 
they're the very person I want to see. Oh, that's nice. No, I just want to check it's all right for tonight. Yeah, as soon as Kevin takes over, I'll be straight round. Oh, great. Only yet Alma has got this bean up on it about going to night school and in a moment of weakness, which I have regretted ever since I said I'd go along with her. Oh, do you not enjoy it? Sally, I never even enjoyed day school, I know that, but you will be here. I will, Right. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Uh, I've had this idea, actually. What's that? Next year's carnival. Mm. Army field kitchens, 1939 to 45. Now, what do you think? Hiya, Phyllis. Hey, you're back. For me clothes, yeah. Look, don't let me disturb you. You carry on. Just ignore me. You can't do that. You can't just come here and take your clothes when your husband's not even in the house. I tried it when he was. He cut me suitcases up. It's the best way, believe me. Hello. Is that you, Des? It's Phyllis. No, I can't speak up. She's here. Steph. Miss Freeman spent a great deal of time devising that float. Hours and hours. Hmm? Yes. Yes, I'm sure she did, yes. And she put her own money into it. Hmm. Did we ask her to? Well, no, not in so many words. Oh, well, there you are, then. It'll be a lesson for her, won't it? Always make sure that the client understands his obligations. I believe she wants to be a professional designer. Yeah. Mm. Well, then she should be grateful to us, shouldn't she? It'll stand her in good uh, stead for years to come, then. It can't be serious. Oh, yes, I am. Look, she worked very hard on it, spent a lot of time and a lot of money on it. She deserves to be paid. I put a lot of time into it, Norman. Starring in it, you might say. Am I being paid? No. No. Are you being paid? Is Mrs. Duckworth or Mrs. Brennan being paid? They're different. Oh, yes, they are different. They are different, but why are they different? Well, they work for better buys. There are employees. No. No, yes, they are. Well, they might be, but the significant difference is, Norman, they don't share the same address as you. What's that got to do with anything? Oh, come on, Norman. Neither of us were born yesterday. We both know that if you share the same premises with a, an attractive young lady, hey, and I'm putting it no higher than that, an attractive young lady, well, then, your opinion, it, it can be biased. She did the work. She deserves to be paid. <gasps> the event was for charity. The none of us are being paid. Well, in that case, it wasn't fair of us to ask her to design it. Am I being paid? Are you being paid? I heard all this the first time round. Oh, you did? Yes. Then why am I having to repeat myself? Are you going to pay her? No, I am not. Right. Right. I've tried to be reasonable, but you won't be. Right. Hey, just one minute, you. Just one minute. What is this right business? Is that intended to be some kind of a threat? Is it? Because let me tell you this. Anything like that, the tactics of the bully boy, anything like that would be completely out of order. Right? Right. So let's have no more of this right business. Can I go now? Well, I thought it was you who wanted to speak to me. So I would have thought whether you can go or not depends quite simply on whether you have finished. I have. Have you got everything then, love? Yes, thank you. <laughs> You'll have to unpack those and iron them, you know. I know when I'm packing what it's Bye, like. Bye, Phyllis. Don't go yet. Why not? Well, the least you could do is to ask me how he's going on. How's he going on? He misses you. He doesn't say much, but I know him. Do you know, I don't think I've seen him smile since you went through that door. Well, I'm sorry. But at least he won't have my things to remind him anymore, will he? Will you stay for a cup of coffee? I've just made one, look. I'd rather not, Phyllis. I'm sorry. I just don't feel too comfortable about being here anymore. Give him another chance. He's heartbroken. And if I gave him another chance, I'd just break his heart all over again. Now, I really must be... About time and all. You rang him? I did, love, and I'll do it again. Thanks, Phyllis. Well, if you want to thank me, just get your marriage back together again. That's all the thanks I need. 
alludable to it. I didn't ask her to. Have you got five minutes or have you got to get off? It's no use, Des. Whatever you're going to say, it's not going to be any use. So what have you got to be frightened of, then? Yeah. I've got five minutes. Of course I have. So, this is true love, is it? You and this fella? Des, I'll talk about anything you like, but not Simon. OK, talk about us. What did I do wrong? Nothing. Oh, I must have done. If I hadn't met Simon, I'd still be here. No. No, that's not good enough, Steph. You could have met him without falling in love with him. No, I reckon you were going off me already. Could be. Oh, I'm sure. Look, I don't think this is serving much purpose, is it? Yeah. I'm finding it quite interesting. There's all I want is my clothes. That's it. You can have everything else. House, car, furniture, it's all yours. Oh, I'm all set up, aren't I? And I've told me dad. He knows it's all my fault, so you won't be getting any hassle off him. Great. Never known you so organised. I don't feel organised. I'm just trying to make it as easy on you as I can. That's why I thought I could sneak back here this morning. Of course, I'd forgotten about Phyllis. She's been like a mother to me. Good. Only it's not a mother I want, is it? It's you that Des, I want. Des, don't make it any harder. Can't be any harder. Not for me. I'm going. I shouldn't have stayed. Listen. It's not doing either of us any good. Wait. Will you just listen to me? Can't you even do that? Can't you even just stand to listen to me for five minutes without running off to Loverboard? Des, let me go, please. Yeah, I'll let you go. I'll let you go when we finish talking. We have finished. No, we haven't. I haven't. And I'd be grateful if you could stand there and listen. It's not too much to ask, is it, considering? Hiya, Sal. Oh, hi, Steph. How are you doing? How's little Rosie? Well, not so little now, is she? Oh, come on, Steph. Are you still working or what? Yeah, but only in the evenings. That's the only time Kev can go to babysit. Oh, well, better than nothing, isn't it? So what are you doing? i just come to pick up a few things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Breaking up the happy home. See you around. Yeah. Look, you didn't have to do that. Didn't I? No, I know you're leaving. I know I can't stop you. Look, all I want to say is, if you ever change your mind, if you ever leave that bloke... I won't. If you ever change your mind and you want to come back, then you can at any time. Bye, guys. Just pick up the phone and call me. I'll pick you up. Doesn't matter whether it's next week, next year, any time. Mrs. Dogworth, do you know anything? About what? The shield, it's gone. Oh, yeah, you're right, it has. Right, somebody must have stolen that. Mr. Watts! Mr. Watts! Oh, come here, Luke. It's gone, it's missing. Call the police. Somebody's stolen the shield. Yeah, it's right, you know. I was going to mention that. Mention what? What are you talking about? I've taken it. You what? I've appropriated it for Miss Freeman. Don't be ridiculous. And it's, it's not going back up there until we pay her what we owe her. Oh, where? What do you mean? What's going on? Nothing at all, Mrs. Duckworth. Right, come here, you. What? Right. I want that shield replacing, and I want it replacing now. No. I'm keeping it. I'm giving it Angie. Oh, no, you are not. Oh, yes, I am. You know what this is, don't you? Mutiny! I can have your sack for this. Well, and then you'll never get it back. <laughs> what do you think I am? A man of straw? Hmm? You think I can't live without some proxy shield? You think I would sacrifice my principles for it? Suit yourself. No, no stop. Wait, Norman, please. I... It's no good. I, I can't do this. I can't stand by and watch you sacrifice your career, even though you do seem to have some sort of a death wish. Now, where is it? Where is the shield? Are we gonna pay her? Yes. Yes? Yes, every single penny. Now, where is it? Where is the shield? Oh, it's in my locker. Well, get it out of your locker and back on display. Here. And when I say I'll pay her every penny, 
I mean, what she's actually spent, of course. £306, if I remember correctly. Oh, no, and she wants pain as well. Mr Watts, learn to be gracious in victory, eh? Right, meet me in the, uh, meet me in the Count's office in five minutes. Right. And then I realised she was calling them to collect all her things. And I felt awful. What, and oh. Des was there? Yeah, he was just stood there watching. Oh. You would have said that Stephanie and Des were the perfect couple and all. Not anymore, you wouldn't. Mm. Yeah, well, if Kevin ever left me, I wouldn't stand and watch him. I'd kill him. <laughs> there, you see. Secret of a successful marriage. If sex doesn't work, try violence. <laughs> That's no secret. It's always been like that. Mm -hmm. I'd better go. I'll see ya. Bye. Bye. Talking of marriage... He's tried sulking. That didn't work. So his latest ploy... What had happened to the children if I were to die? Oh, there's romance. Would they go to Ivy or Audrey? Oh, no, you can't let them go to Ivy. Oh, the poor things. You've got to get married. You've got to get married <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. One check for 306 pounds. 400. Wait, wait, plus. <clears throat> yeah. 20, 40, 60, 80. 100, giving us a grand total of £406. Great. Proving that capitalism does have a conscience after all. Yeah, well, capitalism might, but what about Holsworth? I thought he was dead against giving me a penny. Uh, well, I had a little word with him. I don't think he understood all the implications. Well, well done, Curly. I'll buy you a drink later. Hmm. Wish I kept that shopping voucher now. It's all going, mm. it, eh? Make sure you put them away. I'll be up in a minute to check. I will. Night, Nick, lad. Night, Night darling. Ta da. I have thought about it. And what you said if I were to die. Oh, I. And? I suppose it were better than Alec that put it into your head, was it? Now that they've ended up responsible for their grandchildren. <sighs> I don't know what it was. But think about it, Gail. I'd have no claims to either Nicky or Sarah. No, okay, okay. I've told you. I've thought about it. And? Let me put these away and then we'll talk. Two fifty, please, love. All right, thanks, Tardy. I must be mad. No, you're not. Conversational Spanish. I've had trouble with it. I asked her. I asked her, what did I do wrong? She said nothing. Did nothing wrong, and she still leaves me. No, no, no. You see, Des, some marriages stick together, right? And other marriages fall apart. Now, there is no understand. You're all right. You've got a wife that'll never leave you. <laughs> Aye, that's only because nobody else would have her, eh? <laughs> Jacko, yes, there's another pint in here. A large whiskey for dad. Large whiskey. Cheers. He must have been in here since 7 o'clock. And there's my daft husband buying him another. I think he should make it his last. Yeah. Who's it? Jim. I'll have any. There you go. Thank you very much. Sorry. Yes, love. Can't you see he's nearly legless? What do you want to go buying him more for? Ah, sure, he's all right as long as he keeps going. It's only when you stop that it hits you. Night school. I used to do that. What conversational Spanish? Oh, no, I did uh, pottery and English literature. That was before I was married, of course. <laughs> I once did a course on photography. You didn't. I did. Well, you never told me that. I'm a man of many talents. 
You know the thing I most enjoyed? You meet so many interesting people. You do? You do? I mean, there were two nuns on my English literature course. Well, we got on like a house on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I once met my tax inspector. There we were, my tax inspector and me, on the same course. <laughs> Courage, Audrey. I can't wait. I can't. <laughs> hey, what were going on with that shield, eh? One minute it were there, then it had gone, then it were back again. Uh, just a little misunderstanding, Vera. All right, then, don't tell me. But I think there was something going on. Are you going to tell me? Well, it was just that Reg needed a little persuading before he'd part with your expenses. Fee, uh, fee, fee. How come I got a cheque for what I'd spent and cash for the rest? Why not a cheque for the whole lot? Uh, it was just an uh, accountancy procedure. It's too difficult to explain. Oh, no. What? Oh, Curly, yeah, that's soft. What? That's your money, isn't it? That £100. You're paying me that out your own pocket. Well, yeah, until I can claim it back. Yep. You can have the rest when we get home. No. Yes. I'm not taking it, not from you. I want to be paid, but I want to be paid properly. You take a vow, Vera. From till death is due part. Oh, yeah, you do. Well, you did, and you've kept it. Oops, no. 60. I'll get these, and, um... Oh, Same again here, again. again. Uh, no, I'm sorry, lovey. I think you've had enough. I'm Take him home, Jim. Come on. Oh, no, right. I, I've Come got on, a drink guess. to finish. Come on, Come on. Home, son. Come, on. Oh. Come on, leave your drink, son. See, See you tomorrow, Jess, See you tomorrow. See you. Hey, he's in a right state. Uh, his wife's left him. Oh, drown his sorrows, he said. Celebrating. If the kids were yours, and had your name. Yeah. Then you'd be happy. Do you mean you will? Not get married, Martin. I don't... I just can't. But... What if you were to adopt the kids? Adopt them? Then they'd have your name. They'd be yours, whatever happened. Yeah, but you'd still be Mrs Tilsley. Oh, Platt. That's easily changed. They would all be Platts. But the kids would be yours. Yes? I think you've got yourself a deal. <laughs> Platty. <laughs> What's this? Your breakfast. You can have it with milk, sugar, tomato ketchup, whatever turns you on. How many times do I have to tell you, Angie, it's yours? You earned it. I know I did, darling, but from better buys, not from you. It's the same thing. It's not the same thing. Just because Holdsworth's an unscrupulous little toad, it doesn't mean it's down to Jimmy Muggins there to pick up the tap. Look, I want to. It was me that asked you to design the float in the first place. It's a matter of principle. If we let him get away with it this time, which of his minions is he going to trample on next? All right, all right. I'll have another word with him. No, I will. I can fight my own battles. I'd prefer it if you didn't get involved. Don't be such a wimp. He's your boss, not mine. I'd have to bow and scrape to him. Who's bowing and scraping? What you don't understand, that is in business, you've got to use a modicum of diplomacy. Modicum of diplomacy? God, you're even talking like him now. But well, what are you having to go at me for? I'm supposed to be on your side. All you're doing is taking the line of least resistance. I appreciate the gesture, but it doesn't solve anything. Your Mr Huff and Puff is going to have to learn a lesson in common decency, and if you're not prepared to teach him, I am. Are you going to nip across before you start work? What for? Well, just to see if he's all right. Oh, he'll be all right, love. He might have a head the size of a football, but he's hardly likely a shot in the gas oven. Jim, please. Look, he won't thank me for sticking my nose in. You're not sticking your nose in. His marriage has just broken up. Aye, too wet behind the ears to get married in the first place. Uh, we were younger than them. Ah, but you see, we were lucky, love. We survived. Mmm. Once or twice it could have been there but for the grace of God or a friendly shoulder to cry on. Just let him know that we're there if he needs us. You're right, we Nelly, aren't you, eh? Any lame dog. <laughs> All right. See you later. See you later. I'm coming. 
I'm coming! What about you then, Des, eh? Ah, uh, listen, I just thought I'd pop around and see if you're okay. You know, state you were in last night. Oh, well, you saw me back. Well, somebody had to. So they think I need a minder now, do they? Uh, well, uh, no, they're just concerned about you, that's all, Des. No, no, they're right. Shouldn't be allowed out on me own. Any bloke who's too dim to realise his wife's running off with another fella. Come on, Des. Dim's got nothing to do with it. It can happen to anyone. Look, I don't need your platitudes, mate. It's me it happened to. Any idea what it's like to be dumped? No, I haven't, but I can guess. No, you can't. You can't have any concept. Listen, Des, you uh, wallow in it all you want. I can't stop you. But where's your pride? Oh, what the hell's pride got to do with it? A lot, Des. Listen, don't go losing your self-respect because your missus gets the hots for some other guy. It's her bad judgement, son, not yours. Chalk it down to experience, right? Well, yeah, something like that, yeah. It'd be different if it was your missus that ran off with another bloke, though, wouldn't it? Well, it hasn't happened to me, so I can't say, Des. I'd be hurt. <laughs> I'd be angry. But I'm damned if I'd let it cripple me for the rest of my life. Can't see me ma'am learning no Spanish verbs. Took her all the time to get one lousy O level. Well, it's not grammar, it's conversational. I thought it might come in handy if some millionaire invited me on his yacht in Porto Buenos. Dos Cuba Libras, por favor. There you I see, I've made a start. <laughs> you also know that the Spanish for castle is Alcazar. Oh, yes, right. I wonder what uh, will you help me set fire to this petrol station is? <laughs> you don't oh. still hold it against him? No, not really. Not after what happened. But I was right, though. What goes round, comes round. Well, we're on level begging now, me and Mike. We've both got two failed marriages under our belt. Yeah, well, at least yours are both the same bloke. Still scored out twice. Well, I scored out once. But I'd still bite his hand off if some half-decent bloke offered me a gold ring. If you're referring to me and Martin, I've solved that problem. He's adopting the children, and I'm changing the name. Hi, Sally. You're out and about early. Oh, Madam here has had me up since five o'clock this morning with her teeth. I thought if I walked around a bit, she might drop off. The only thing that's dropped off are my feet. Sit down, I'll get you a cup of tea. What do you mean you're changing your name? To Platt. What, are you getting married? No, changing my name and Martin's adopting the children. Then we'll all belong to the same clan. Well, wouldn't it be easier just to go off to the registry office? No, she doesn't like to do things the easy way, our Gail, do you? What Martin was most concerned about was his child not carrying on the Platt dynasty. This arrangement suits us all. Anything with your tea, Sam? Yes. I'm up here, Phyllis. What are you doing home? Bit of spring cleaning. Oh, you didn't persuade her to change her mind, then. Give me a couple of minutes. You won't even know she lived here. The heel, love. Even broken hearts. Hey, what's this? Just some more junk she didn't want. Hey, it's your wedding album. Like I said, junk she didn't want. Hey, you can't throw this away. She threw the marriage away. What's the point in hanging out a couple of old photos? Hey, I tell you what, she was a lovely bride. I'll give her that. Oh, yes. Very pretty, my wife. Everyone said so. Maybe that's where I went wrong. Should have married someone with a face like the back of a bus. I'd still have a wardrobe full of clothes hanging up there, wouldn't I? Oh, you can't just throw everything away. This is part of your life. Listen, love, one day you'll sit down and look at this and it won't hurt. Doesn't hurt now. You know, I can look at these two, smiling their silly heads off, and you know what? They're strangers. And what's the point in cluttering up the house with pictures of strangers, eh? Mm. Oh, so how's my favourite ex lodger today, then? You're wheedling, Vera. I know. I hate it when you wheedle. It's not necessary. If you want to know something, just be up front about it. Right, I will. So what were all that between you and his holiness yesterday and you nicking the shield? I did not nick it. I just took charge of it. Oh, why, why? 
Now, come on, you said be up front. Mum, can I trust you? We're alive, Chuck. Well, look, it's not that momentous. It's just that... Well, Angie was upset with Mr Oldsworth because he reneged on his promise to pay her for designing the float. He never. Mm. What's reneged? You know, rescinded. Retracted. Didn't do. <gasps> Rotten swine. She worked really hard on that, I know. Yeah, my feelings exactly. But, to be fair, from his point of view, it was a charity event and everyone was given their services for free. Yeah, well, we had to be OK, but she didn't. It's a well-argued point, Vera. Do you know, I've often thought I could have been a barrister, me, you know, if I'd have had right education, like. Yeah, quite. Now, can I trust you to keep it to yourself? Cross me out, no, today. Mm. Hey, he's just been telling me what a dirty trick Oldsworth played, kid. I'm not giving any secrets away, because she already knows. Don't look so shocked. I told you I'd come. Yeah, well, you'll stand up for your rights, Chuck. I intend to. He wouldn't have treated you like that if you'd have been a man. Hit the nail on the head there, Vera. Or a PC. <laughs> a what? I think she means a QC. Vera's delusions that if she came back in another life, she'd make it big in the law courts. I think she probably would. She's certainly got the gift of the gob. Yeah, well, you'll get in there and give him hell flower. Look, aren't you needed on cooked meats, Vera? All right. Go in there and give him it right between his bulgy little eyes. Tell him what a miserable torang he is. Yeah, we're knobs on. I intend to be more subtle than that, but that's about the gist of it. Look, I know you want to have it out with him, but this really isn't a good time. When is three weeks come Christmas? Look, in a minute, he's off out to chair a meeting of branch managers, which to him is the equivalent of being the Speaker of the House of Lords. Look, couldn't you do it tomorrow? It's not just a ploy to put me off. Could I put you off? No. But all right, then, it's not a ploy, it's, uh, it's a tactic. Many battles are won by choosing your moment, or not, as the case may be. All right, tomorrow. But I'll nail him then, even if he's rushing off for an audience with the Queen. about Miss Freeman's fee. Oh, I thought I'd been explicit that that particular debate is closed. It's not closed as far as I'm concerned. I don't think we've been particularly fair. I am employed to make executive decisions, right? You are employed to carry them out. Is that distinction clear? Yes. Is it... that distinction clear? Or are you still in doubt as to the order of seniority in this place? No, but you see... Good. That... Good. Right, if you need me, you know where to find me. Yes. What's this? It's an account for payment. I can see that. But what's it for? It's for the Better Buys Carnival float. I've already passed a cheque for that. Yes, I, I know. That was for the expenses. This is for the designer's fee. Nobody well, told me anything about a designer's fee. Well, I'm telling you now, Dennis. It's a chargeable item, and I'm authorising it. A hundred pounds. It's very irregular. Well, of course it's irregular. I mean, how many times have we put a float in a flaming carnival? Now, she wants cash. Now, where do I sign? Oh, isn't it sweet? All right, we're in a pile of stuff this yuppie woman took round to the charity shop. Mrs. Bishop was really kind. She put it to one side for me. She thought it just looked like Rosie. Yeah. Do you know, it's practically brand new, that. Well, it's lovely having a little girl to dress up, isn't it? Do you know, I remember when I was expecting our girl, I was hoping for a little daughter with beautiful hair so I could put satin ribbons in it and everything. About the only time in my life that I actually got what I wanted. Oh, she was like a little doll. Oh, well, Sarah Louise is too, isn't she? Mm. So how do you feel about changing her name to Platt? What? Sorry? Well, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it, instead of them all having different names. But they are going a very complicated way about it. I'm sorry, Sally, love. I'm not with you. Well, you know, Martin adopting the kids and Gail changing her name. Oh, I thought she'd told you. No, Sally, no. 
I'm just her mother. Anything important, I'm the last to know. Well, as far as your partner changing her name goes, there's no problem. She doesn't even have to do it by depot. Oh, no. Is it not a lot of palaver? Well, nothing very involved. But if she prefers, all she needs to do is inform the relevant authorities, tax, insurance, etc. That's it. Obviously, it'll be a settling in period where there might be a bit of uh, confusion. But I expect she can live with that. Yeah, right, good. And the other thing is about the adoption. Yes. Well, there, it's not quite so straightforward, I'm afraid. such a perverse child. I mean, I'm not perverse, am I, Alma? Not if you get your own road, no. I'm not being perverse, Mum. I'm doing what feels right for me. But it's so peculiar. I can't understand why you're going about it in such a cockeyed way. Unless, of course, he won't marry her. Is that it? Is that right at making the final step? No, ma'am, that's not it. Well, I can understand why I would be scared. He's been so much younger than you are. Oh, thanks for reminding me. I'd almost forgotten. Just that I thought, now you'd have the little one together. Shall I talk to him? No, ma'am, it's nothing to do with you. It's nothing to do with anybody but me and Martin. Can you fathom her? Huh? Well, I mean, we all do things different, don't they? I mean, when you walked on out on Alpha, I thought you'd gone off your trolley, but I mean, it was your right to make the choice, wasn't it? That was quite different. It always is. Gail, look, listen, I am just thinking of you. I've seen you go through enough heartache in one lifetime. I don't want you to go through any more. And I appreciate it, ma'am. I really do. I mean, that's the reason we're doing this. We've got a good life together. We want to tie up the loose ends. You don't object to the kids being called Platt, do you? I've never had any great love for the name Tilsley, no. Well, then. But why can't you do it with a wedding certificate instead of an adoption certificate? I mean, that's what I want to know. That's what everybody's going to want to know. Then they'll have to go on wanting, because it's our business, our decision, our choice, OK? Suppose you're wondering which meddling busybody it is now. Of course not. Well, yeah, they do seem to be coming out of the woodwork at an amazing rate. People want to help, don't they? Do they? Or just feast like vultures on the bones? Oh, they'll always be the gossips. But most folk are genuinely caring. Everybody's been through their own bad patch. It's not a time to shut yourself off from your friends. Yeah, who wants someone else's misery inflicting on me? Speaking for the McDonald's, I think we can take it. Yeah, well, thanks, Liz, but it's my problem. Fair enough. You can still come and have a bit of tea with us. That's kind, Ta, but I'm not feeling exactly sociable. You've got to eat. Phyllis will have left me something she always does. She's very good like that. This is all down to her. Tidy, isn't it? Spotless. Wasn't like that when Steph was here. Five minutes home, there was stuff everywhere. Shopping, jacket, shoes. Flung them all off as soon as she came in. Even smells different. She had a favourite perfume. The minute I walked in, I could tell if she was home. What can I say? Nothing. I've heard all that gumph about time being a great healer till I'm up to here. How long, Liz? How long's it gonna be till I start to feel right again? I don't know. But each day, each week, it gets a bit easier. A bit more bearable. Yeah, you can guarantee that, can you? No, Des, I can't guarantee anything. Except we're there if you need us. I know. Thanks. Oh, 
Oh, hell, is that the time? You mean you haven't prepared a four-course banquet? You mean you haven't brought in a couple of fillet steaks? Uh, no, but I've got this. Oh, Curly, we're not going through all that again. And this. What's this? That is a docket from our accounts department, authorising the payment of £100 sterling to Ms Angela Freeman, spinster of the parish, for services rendered to Better Buy PLC Weatherfield branch. Now, is that official enough for you? You made holes with pay-up, I don't believe it. I merely got the company to honour its obligations. I'm sorry I caused you so much aggro earlier, and I'm sorry I called you a wimp. That's OK, you were entitled. It just made me seem red with this flaming pig-headedness. So how did you do it, anyway? Do what? Get him to change his mind. I, uh, used a little initiative. Oh, I should have trusted you instead of having a girl. I should have known you wouldn't let me down. Smells <sighs> good. Mm. Speciality mm. de la maison, which means keep them paws off Ooh, till it's served. I love it when you're masterful. Mm. Ah. I'm not so keen, ah. however, when other folk tell me what to do. What folk? Try me, mother. Audrey, she likes to get on with it mostly, doesn't she? Mostly doesn't include when I'm trying to have my kids adopted. Oh, she's not into the idea, eh? She'd prefer it if we were married. Well, good honour. I'm on her well, side. Anyway, I've told her we know what we're doing and it's all settled. Um, <clears throat> well, not quite. What? I went down to the citizens and vice today. Well, there's no problem as far as your name change goes. That's easy. Good. But it's a different story when it comes to adopting the kids. Huh? Well, it seems they're going to have to go in front of a judge, and it's more than likely his honour, or that's why we're not married. You know the kind of thing. You say you want to make a lifelong commitment to these children, Mr Platt, but you're not prepared to enter into a similar commitment with their mother. I do find this rather odd. You mean he might refuse? Well, it's on the cards. He could do, yeah. According to the woman from the citizen's advice, it's not an essential legal requirement, but, well, if we're not married, it certainly won't help. <sighs> Silly girl. She wants her bottom slapping. She'll wake up one day to the fact that she's lost a lovely lad just through a bit of excitement. Won't last, you know. Never does. I asked him around for his tea, but he wouldn't come. I told you, love, leave the boy alone. Look, he probably just wants to lick his wounds in peace. <laughs> Evening. Hey, uh, Jervis. Well, I took your advice. Good. What can I get you? Um, spritzer. I'm not going to do me falling down drunk act two nights in a row. Oh, good. Because I'm not going to do me carrying you home act twice in a row either. <laughs> uh, Jim, that's enough. And, uh, what would you like, my darling? Uh, that was a lovely bit of steak casserole, Phyllis. It was lamb. I'll bet he never had to buy it. Hello, mate. How are you? Oh, still alive, just about. Yourself? As a matter of fact, I'm rather chuffed with myself. I've just pulled off a rather neat bit of negotiation. Can I get your drink? I said I'd only have one. Well, what are you drinking? Spritzer. Well, they're not going to do you any damage, are they? Uh, when he's ready, please, Liz, and a pint for me. I'd like a word with you, Mr Watts. This is Mr Watts, like. It should be Normie and Reggie when they're off duty. Oh, it'll be something to do with that shield. Oh, they're not laying bets on it already, are they? Des, what odds are you lot giving City this season? Not that shield you created. The one we won at the carnival. I saw Mr Proctor today on the way back from my meeting. Dennis Proctor from Accounts. We've only got one Dennis Proctor. Hmm. He was very agitated about a highly unorthodox transaction in which he was forced to participate. I take it, Mr Watch, you know the transaction to which I am referring? Yeah, I do. Hmm? The one authorising the payment of Miss Freeman's fee. And he wasn't forced. I merely presented him with a signed docket for the amount due. Yes, which you signed, not me. You know that I have totally vetoed any such payment. Yes, but taking things on balance, all things being equal and that, I thought maybe you didn't have the time to give it your due consideration. I mean, I am aware of the high-octane pressures that you are under, and I take it as part of my job to relieve some of those pressures. It is not part of your job to flout my authority, nor the company's rules. Angie, uh, Miss Freeman is a friend of mine, and I do not let down my friends. Oh, really? Well, that's the nub of it, isn't it? Abelard and Heloise, hmm? Samson and Delilah, me and Mrs. Holdsworth. What? See, when a strong man crumbles, it is always a case of chercher la femme. I beg your pardon? If your cohabitee had been a man, well, I venture to suggest that you would not have been in such a pickle, and a pickle is precisely what it is. A veritable jarful, as a matter of fact. Mr. Holdsworth, I admit I did bend the rules slightly. And if I've caused any bother, then I am sorry. But surely all we have to do to keep Proctor happy is for you to countersign the docket. Oh, no, 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 that's not good enough. Two wrongs don't make a right. 
there's no way I'd ever put my name to such subterfuge. And even if I did, it would uh, well, be too late. What do you mean, too late? The auditors are coming in tomorrow. The whole details of this little sordid transaction are now irrevocably recorded by the miracle of the microchip. You took the law into your own hands, and now I'm very much afraid that you are right up to the neck in the brown mucky stuff. My hot-headed young friend, good evening to you. You're up early. Blast! Come here. I thought I'd make you a Freeman special breakfast for standing up to the ogre holes with about my feet. I haven't got time. You've got bags of time. Stand still. Look, I've got to go. But there's nobody there yet. It's only eight o'clock. What's the matter? Nothing. I'll see you. Curly? No, no, there's no Nickies here. They're all Sarah Louises. I'm not having them on. Well, you should lose them fighting, should you? You weren't fighting. We were playing Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. I'll have to get some more today. I have Nicky tails on them. I don't like Nicholas. You can have whatever you like as long as you go and brush them teeth and tell Sarah, hurry up, eh? I want to be called Michelangelo. Michelangelo! <laughs> That's the turtle, not the painter. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go for the adoption papers today? Yeah, well, I've been thinking about that. About some judge deciding if I'm a fit and proper person or not. I mean, I've got no job, I've got no prospects. I look at the age difference. I mean, it's not even as if we're married. Oh, don't either. start on about that again, Martin. I'm not. It's just that I go through the old procedure, fill in the forms, tell the kids, they put the kids in front of this judge and all that rigmarole. What if at the end of the day he just turns around and he says no? He won't. Yeah, but he might, Gail. And how are the kids going to feel then? Some big wig in a robe saying I'm not good enough to be their dad. Of course you are. Don't be dead. That's not the point, though, is it? The point is, it's not up to you and it's not up to me, is it? So, anyway. I've decided to drop all this adoption idea. It's more hassle than it's worth. Martin, you've been going on about it for I ages. know, I know, yeah, but I just didn't realise how dodgy it was. But you don't know. You won't succeed. No, but I know how I'd feel if I failed. Right, come on, you two. Mr. Watts. Ah, Mr. Proctor, I was uh, just looking for the uh, staff sickness record. Well, that's the wrong file. That's the petty cash dockets file. You'll be needing this. Thank you. Oh, this is Mr. Hardiman, the auditor. He wants to make an early start. How do you do? There you go for this, Tempe. Ah, oh, love. It. Having a cleaning binge, are we? The Desmonds. He's got no tin. Oh. Steph's definitely gone for good. Oh, you'll not see her again. She's packed all the stuff. She's out and good riddance. Do you know, she wasn't good enough for him. Hey, I wish I were 20 years younger. Oh, 20? Well, maybe 25. <laughs> morning. Oh, oh, morning. 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 Oh, Sally, now, before I forget, uh, you are all right for here tonight, aren't oh, you? Oh, yeah. Why? Going to night class with Alma. A night class? What's all this about? Alma and me have enrolled for conversational Spanish. <laughs> oh, Spanish help me get a nice teacher like Julia Ringelglass. You know who I mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, his name is Julio, actually. Oh, Spanish. Fat lot of good little do you around here. I thought you'd have gone in more for bookkeeping and management. Oh. Well, it'll be handy for chatting up all them Spanish waiters on your holidays, won't it? Well, I don't think we'll get any holiday this year, the way things are in the shop. Weekend in Blackpool, if we're lucky. Mind you, of course, I could always go on my own. You don't want to start that game. Hey, separate holidays. That's what happened to Steph and Des. And look where it's landed them. Oh, aren't you back at college? Next week. Got a project to finish, so I thought while I was having my coffee, I'd treat myself to a cream one to keep my strength up. I'm starting college tonight, night school. Conversational Spanish. Oh, are you going to Spain on holiday? Oh, no, not this year. No chance. But, you know, I've always fancied running one of those little bars in the Costa del Sol. Oh, you'll want assertiveness classes then, won't you? Dealing with all those lager louts. You know, I never, I never fancy all that assertiveness stuff myself. I think it's just a fancy name for getting your own way. Me? I just use my eyelashes. Much good it's done me. They are, then. Strong women don't get pushed around. No, but I reckon it puts men off, you know, if you're too strong, Will. A lot of strong women end up on their own. Listen to me. A lot of weak ones do and all. Cream bun. The really gooey one. <laughs> I don't think you're weak. No. A bit trusting, maybe. Not anymore. 
Men are definitely off my menu. Oh, they're not all bad. Gail's got a good one, haven't you? What? Sorry? Take no notice. She's been like that all morning. She's in another world. What is the matter? Nothing. I'm fine. Look for something in the weather. Curly was like a cat on hot bricks this morning. Ah, uh, Norman. Have you got a minute? Yes. A minute, Norman. Very busy today, you know. We've uh, got the auditors in. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. It's uh, about the dock it's assigned. Ah, oh, yes, yes. In breach of company regulations. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, but if you were to countersign it, give it your seal of approval. Norman, have I not already explained to you? Hmm? In words of one syllable, can I make it any easier? I cannot sign the docket. Yeah, but... Because see... that would be an act of post authorization, Norman. Nay, a cover-up. I'll, I'll give you the money. I, I'll write you a cheque. Have you ever heard of Watergate? Do you know what happened to President Nixon? Hmm? Finished! And all because, out of the goodness of his heart, he covered up for his subordinates. Mr. Holdsworth, mm -hmm. Reggie, whenever we've had a, a misunderstanding in the past, we've always come to a, a compromise. Yes, but this is more than a misunderstanding, isn't it? This is a flagrant breach of company regulation, eh? It is not against company regulations to use petty cash for services rendered. No, but it is to flout the authority of your superior. Well, I... You knew, you knew, didn't you? that I had expressly forbid that payment. Angie was entitled to that cash. You had no right to withhold it. Oh, lummy. You see, there you go again. Undermining my authority. As the manager of this branch, I, I have every right to take the decision I think fit. A manager has to take some unpalatable decisions sometimes, you know, and stand by them. As you will find out yourself one day, if this misdemeanor hasn't permanently sullied your career prospects. So, no. Your only hope is that the, the auditor does not spot the offence. If he does? Well, then you'll have to live with the consequences of your action, Mr Watts. Like a man. Right, bye. Thank you. Mm, a little before the storm, I hope. Could do with a bit of activity in this place. Look, tell me to mind my own business. But, I mean, things aren't right with you, are they? I mean, there's something wrong. Martin scrapped the adoption idea. What? Told me this morning. But why? I mean, he was so keen on it. I thought it was his idea, wasn't it? Yeah, that's the trouble. But apparently it's not a formality unless you're married. You have to go before a judge in chambers and... Martin reckons with the age difference and him not being employed and... Oh, that some old buffer in a wig and fancy dress is going to put the car wash on the whole thing. Doesn't want to risk the disappointment, getting the kids worked up and everything. Well, any judge can see how much he loves them kids. That's what I say. I mean, they want to know how they feel too, won't they? Yeah, but the judge might think they're being pressurised. You know how things are today. Martin just doesn't want to risk it. I mean, he is serious, isn't he? I mean, he's not just trying to put pressure on you. No, he knows how I feel. How do you feel? Like a heel. Do you know, I don't know what it is with you and marriage. I mean, it's more superstition than common sense. I mean, you live with him. You love him, don't you? Yeah. I mean, you're not going to go running off with another fella like Steffi Barnes? Of course not. Well, then you are married in all but name. Look, I know I'm the last one to give advice on relationships, but I cannot understand why you're letting a little scrap of paper cause all this aggro. I suppose I just think if it's not broke, why fix it? Yes, but if you let it drag on and Martin starts to brood, how long is it going to stay unbroke? Mrs. Duckworth, have you seen the state of these frozen foods? Look, I can't help it if Fuck chuck stuff around. It is your job to tidy them up, make them look desirable. Not like a lot of leftovers from a jumble sale. Look, what is up with you, my dear? Yesterday you're like a monkey with a bag of nuts. Today you're like a, a bear with a sore wopsie. Yes, well, zoological similes do not tidy up frozen food. Is this because of that money for Angie? And Oldsworth paid up yet? No, no, that problem has been resolved. Hey, that's great. I knew you'd get the old skinflint to cough up. Mr Watts, a word? I, uh, thought I'd like to know straight away. What? The sword of Damocles has fallen, Mr. Watts. What? The fates have begun their inexorable journey. Mr. Hardiman, the auditor, has spotted the incriminating evidence. 
Your docket's been discovered. Yeah, well, thanks a lot. I will. Bye. Not what you wanted to hear by the look of it. My solicitor. I gathered. Martin was right. There's all sorts of reasons why a judge should say no. But you thought he was trying it on, pulling a fast one. God, no! Just check it to see he'd got it right. Martin wouldn't lie about a thing like that. He's as honest as the day's long. And you don't want to marry him. You want your bumps looking at. It's not just signing a piece of paper, Alma. It's for life, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I believe in it, too. You? Well, maybe it's not going to be for me, but it doesn't stop me wanting to see two people I care about being happy. Or maybe you just want to wear that new hat I bought in the sales. <laughs> yeah, so get that down your neck. Look as if you need it. Cheers, Jack. I'm not in the best of moves today, I can tell you. Stupid son. Oh, young Steve. She was telling me he doesn't want to go to school. Go ah, on. young agent. Yeah, can't tell him these days, youngsters. I wish I'd have stayed on at school, but I couldn't wait to leave. Do you know when I was 14, I was on the bin. Uh -huh. Got my first wage back. It thought it was Jack the Lad. New suit, tram fare, all the beer I could drink. And some you couldn't? I did my fair share of falling about in them days, yes. I put the knees out in my suit in the first week. But it's not the same now, is it? I mean, there are no jobs about. Yeah. Well, well, like I said, he'd regret it when he's on the dole, so he will. Yeah. And you look at our Prime Minister. Left school at 16. Exactly like I said, Betty. I wish he'd stayed on, eh? Oh, thank you, Betty. Thanks. That was most enjoyable. Thank you, Lily. How are things next door? All quiet? Oh, what, you mean with Dad? Yes. yes. Very quiet. I've not seen him hardly. Oh, he's taking it very hard, maybe, so he has. I'm surprised him going off the rails, you know. What do you mean? Well, young men get to be single again, making up for lost time. <laughs> Booze and wild parties, women all the time, eh? They're not all like you, you know. <laughs> well, chance will be a fine thing, eh? Well, if you need anything, let us know, will you, Mavis? I could just do with one of them wild parties. You'll have to patch the knees in your suit first. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't they look smashing? You know, I feel dead proud every time I pass them. Clever girl, that Angie, you know. Well, you're not so mad, are you? You've had no lunch yet, have you? I'm not hungry. Hiya. What are you doing here? Shopping. Hiya, we're just saying what a clever girl you are. <laughs> All them costumes. Mind you, you needed right models, didn't you? You know, to show them off like. <laughs> well, it does help. Yeah, I could have been a model, me, you know. Oh, yeah. Bit of a told my mother I wanted to do some modelling. Well, she just belted me, you know. Because modelling then. Well, it were another word for. Uh, uh, yes, Vera. Oh. I'm sure that our fruit and veg display could do with your modelling skills at the moment. Cheer him up, will you? He's been like flaming Percy Sugden all day. Actually, that's what I've come about. Are you all right? You were acting most peculiar this morning. Is it something I've done? No. Well, not directly. Not directly? What do you mean? Curly, what do you mean, not directly? Uh, Mr. Holdsworth. Did you persuade him to overlook it? Uh, no, no, I'm afraid not, normal lad. No. Oh, no. Well, although I used my considerable powers of persuasion on your behalf, as I promised, he was deaf to me in treaties. See, the soulless men, all it is. Uh, the figures, that's the masters. Computers, the gods. They, they, they don't seem to have the time to develop the richer side of man's nature. But what's he going to do? Auditors, Norman, accountants, men of that ilk. And they know the price of everything, don't they? The value of nothing. These supermarkets to them, they're like, well, money-making machines. Worse to me, the temples of delight, steaming corner gold. But what is he going to do? Do? Well, what else can he do? Report it to the third office, naturally. Oh, no. Anyway, rest assured, I shall use my good offices to intercede on your behalf. I shall explain to them that this was uh, just a temporary blip and an otherwise exemplary career. And do you think they'll listen? Listen, <laughs> Norman, as manager of one of uh, Better Buy's foremost stores, I do have a certain amount of influence at the head office. So chin up, lad. Not to worry, all is not lost. But I hope you've learned something from this, you know. Rules are not meant to be broken. No? Hello, Jim's Cafe. Oh, hello, Martin. Oh, well, who's a silly boy, then? All right, yes, I'll tell her. 
Uh, Martin is cooking toad in the hole and he's forgotten his sausages, so would you like to take some home for him, please? <laughs> Eating up the profits, eh? Mm, not like him to forget. He's usually Mr. Efficiency. And you've got a jewel there. I wouldn't know where to start with toad in the hole. Uh, oh, it's easy. The difficult bit is catching your toes. <laughs> Bumped into him this morning. A toad? Oh. Martin, taking the baby out for a walk. Looked as proud as Punchy did. Lucky fella, having kids. Shall I get you some sauce? Uh, no, Ta. You know, I reckon if me and Steph had had kids, we'd still be together now. Oh. Well, that's what marriage is for, isn't it? Kids, I mean. I know you two aren't married, but you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. oh Curly, you idiot. What did you go and do that for? It was your money. You were entitled to it. I know, but you didn't have to break the rules to get it. There was nothing else I could do. I could talk to Holdsworth until I was blue in the face. I told you I'd talk to him. He didn't have to put your job on the line. You're mad. Oh, thanks. I go to all that trouble. I get myself in a right mess, and all I get is a load of abuse. Curly, I'm sorry. Of course I'm grateful. It was very sweet of you. But I didn't want this to happen. I feel responsible. It was my decision. Have you got Holdsworth's home number? Why? I'll ring him, tell him I'll give the money back. It won't work. I've already tried that. The auditor has reported it to head office. It's out of Reggie's hands. He'll wish he was out of my hands when I get hold of him. Look, Angie, I appreciate the concern. But doing GBH to my boss will only compound the offence. Anyway, I want you to stay out of it. What will they do to you? Well, they could sack me. Oh, there must be something we can do. Well, there isn't. To quote Reg, we must let fate run its course. But will you be able to give your side of the story? Well, they'll want to see me, yeah. So you can tell them what Reg was up to, that he wouldn't pay me my legitimate fee? It doesn't excuse me breaking the rules. And anyway, I don't want to do that because Reg is going to put a good word in for me. Oh, great. That's like getting a character reference from Attila the Hun. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you for building up my confidence. <sighs> Curly. I'm sorry. I don't seem to be able to say the right thing, do I? But I am on your side. I'll do anything to help. Oh, thank you, but I'm not in the mood. I was thanking you, not seducing you. Oh, well, perhaps another time, eh? Oh, uh, we're looking for conversational Spanish. Si, centavos. Uh, pardon? Centavos, por favor. Uh, oh, I don't think we've got the right class. Si, centavos. Uh, well, no, it says here, uh, Mr. Perez. Perez, si, centavos, por favor. Um, but... Senor Perez has gone home. Oh, oh, is he ill? Que... Has he gone home because he's ill, Mr. Perez? He has gone home to Spain. Centaos, por favor. Oh. Como se llama? Oh, Sarah, could you speak English? What is your name, please? Roberts. Audrey Roberts. <laughs> Mrs. Roberts, you speak Spanish here. No English. You want to speak English? Room 12. Saki <laughs> cow. Hi, come on, you. Bed. It's no school in the morning. So Wanna well, watch the film? You can't watch the film. It's too violent. I've told you, you're not watching films like that. You're gonna watch it? Yes, but well, that's because I'm an adult, aren't I? You can't tell me what's a Hey, Nicky, bed. It's not fair. Yes, well, you'll find a lot of things aren't fair, mate, as you're going through life, but you've just got to put up with them, haven't you? You can do what you like. Oh, no, I can't. Now, come on, kiss your mother. It's bedtime. <laughs> God bless. All right, then, come on. And can Nigel Mansell take it set around the landing tonight? I don't think I could stand all those late night parties and carryings after. Oh, there's no reason to believe he'll turn into some sort of drunken hooligan, maybe. Yes. Are you, uh. Yeah. Want to tie one on again tonight, are you? Well, I might if the mood takes me. I've got no one to get at me now, have I? I'm a free agent. Lucky devil. Listen, if you're having any wild parties, don't forget to let us know. You'll be the first to know, Jack. Aha. Uh -huh. Mr. and Mrs. Normal. 
Now, why can't me and Steph be more like you two? Just getting on with life, taking it as it comes. Well, we are all different. Age and maturity and all that. I'm just a big kid at heart. Always wanting something new, easily bored. Still, I please myself now, can't I? Derek and I really are very sorry. It happens, Mavis. It's life. I don't want you two to feel bad about it, because I don't blame you. We were put into an intolerable situation. Quite, quite. And you acted with the best of intentions, I understand. But if there's anything that we can do to help in any way... Well, if you know one, if you're someone who wants to buy a bijou little residence in the heart of fashionable Weatherfield, then let me know. Pardon? I'm selling up, packing me parrots and monkeys and moving on. Oh, Norman, I'm glad I've caught you. I'd like a word. And I'd like a word with you, Mr Holdsworth. Angie. It's about your little problems. Little. Anything you can say to Curly, you can say to me. I'm involved in this too. It's a confidential business matter, actually. If you just paid me in the first place. Angie! Please. Come on. Right. Um, there has been a development. I had a phone call as I was leaving the meeting, and uh, head office wants to send somebody down to interview you. You know about this. Yeah, yeah, I expected that, but you're going to put a good word in for me, aren't you? Ah, uh, well, I'm afraid not, Norman. My words would fall on deaf ears. <clears throat> the person they're sending is uh, Brendan Scott. Oh, Sarah insists on calling told her told all, told in the old. <laughs> you know what's in the film? No. You all right? I've been thinking. Ooh, hey, dangerous habit, that, you know. I think I must be the most selfish person I know. <sighs> I don't know about that. What about your mother? Well, perhaps that's where I get it from. <laughs> Always doing what I want to do. So... I've decided to change. Have you lost something? No, I've found something very special. I don't know why they get down on the knees, but I want to do it proper, so... Will you marry me? <laughs> what? Will you marry me? Hey, is this a joke? It's no joke kneeling down here. Gail! You were dead against it. I know. I was wrong. I was being selfish. Look, is this about the adoption thing? Because it no, is, there's no... Not really. I mean, that brought it to a head. Made me think. Realise that... I love you. The kids love you. What am I messing about at? Look, Gay, I hope you're not doing this just because of me, no, because... I'm not doing it just for you. I'm doing it for all of us, because I like what we've got. I love what we've got. I want to keep it. I'll say something. I'm getting crammed down here. <laughs> well, I don't know, Gail. I might need a couple of days to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come here. Of course I will. Oh, yes! <laughs> I don't care about like the old flaming street. Oh, yes! It's not a question of me sticking up for myself. Yes, you don't understand how Better Buys works. You can't make out you were nicking the money. A disbursement that I was not authorised to make. You were. I heard him say. Say what? In the pub, Alec Gilroy said something about it not being right because I was a professional. Yeah, yeah. And Reggie was all full of himself. The professional attitude is the only attitude and all that. Yeah, yeah, but Reggie's not going to remember any of this, is he? And you jumped in and said about professional budget. And he certainly isn't going to stick his head in the firing line, not where Brendan Scott's concerned. And I said, and professional fees, and he said yes. Brendan Scott doesn't give a monkeys about what was said or not said in the public bar of the Rovers' return. What he does give a monkeys about is what happened in a certain hotel in Buxton on a certain night with a certain Miss Betterby and a certain bottle of Asti's Pavanti. This is what he's waiting for. I should have realised. Oh, dear. And is that the fella? I knew I was pushing me luck, taking the Asti Spavanti off him as well. And that's the same fella, the one that's coming down? The very same. Oh, well. The thing to do is make sure they sack you. Don't resign or anything stupid like that, because it really mucks up for claiming benefit. Mate of mine in the DSS told me that. Oh, thanks. It's my fault. No, no, no. It's down to one person. A Reggie Holdsworth. Curly. Nice morning, buddy, eh? Huh. Jam. 
great advert for it. I don't mean the house. What are you on about now? Just trying to tell us something about marriage. <laughs> Nothing you don't know already. Huh? Right, come on, you. Out. Can I go and see Granny Audrey? Uh, in a bit. You're going to see your Granny Ivy first, and you're going to behave. Aye, and with any luck, so will your Granny Ivy. If she doesn't, I'll be using you as a human shield, pal. What? I wish you wouldn't. <laughs> Hey, oh, what's happened? What's to do? <laughs> Nothing's happened. Well, not yet, anyway. Oh, <laughs> come in. Hey, Ivy, look who's here. Hiya. Oh, Lord, now what's happened? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's happened. You're as bad as him. <clears throat> no, uh, we thought we'd better come and tell you because, uh, well, we didn't want you hearing from someone else and thinking we hadn't told you. You're not... You never... Oh, Gail, not again. <laughs> Hey, but it's certainly not out of the question. <laughs> uh, what it is, is, um, we've decided to get married. Yeah. She popped the question last night. I blushed, as you can imagine. But, uh, he said yes. Oh. Well, that's good of you to come and tell me, although uh, it's supposed to do with me, what you oh, do, I do. I'm just hey. simply saying it, it, it's good of him to come and tell me, isn't it? Well, I think that is smashing. Look, it's a bit early for a drink, but what do you say we put kettle on again, Ivy? Yes, yeah. Look, when I saw you standing on pavement then at this hour, no one, and I thought, well, I thought your house would burn down or something. I don't know what I thought. <laughs> yeah, well, don't put the kettle on for us, because we've got to go and see Audrey now, because if you know and she doesn't, there'll be ructions. But we're having a drink tonight down the Rovers, I mean, if you fancy it. Ah, tonight, yeah, it must be worth a drink. Mm. I mean, we have been waiting for this, you know, haven't we, Ivy? Oh, yes, yes. You'll need your, your hockey stuff and all that business. I don't know, there's a list of things here you're going to need Pickford stuff. Now, how much are we going to need to get for you, love? I don't know. I mean, they have a laundry here at this school, do they? Well, it'd be pretty nifty if we didn't. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it would. I didn't thought of that. And he told me he went to Eton, else I'd never have married him. <laughs> Eddie Rose will not lay you down. Anything you've got to have, well, you'll have it. There's, uh, there's one or two items on here, but... I'll... I suppose you'll have that in your kit already, eh? I'll go through it with her, I will. Yeah, that'd be best, love, yes. You're not saying very much, Vicky. I mean, you do want to go back to school, don't you? I suppose. You sure now? Because, you see, to me and Beth, I mean, it's something we can't imagine, actually, going away to school. Well, I do want to see everybody. I suppose that's where all your friends are, eh, love? It is all right, then. I am going back to Codrington. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what all this is about, isn't it? Well, I wasn't sure, and I didn't like to ask. Oh, love, of course. It's all right about the money and everything. I mean, I know you're not rich. <laughs> Look, the money's there for you. Well, at least it will be when it goes through probate. What's probate? Well, it's the legal thing. You know, it's how it all has to be done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you've been worried, love. I mean, I didn't realise. You've no need to be. No, no. My granddaughter's going to Codrington. Yeah, <laughs> love. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, oh I'm so pleased. <laughs> You're making an honest man of him at last. <laughs> well, as near as possible. <laughs> have you told Ivy? Oh, just uh, wait. Yeah, you? we have, as a matter of fact. Oh, have you? Well, just five minutes since, but we thought if we told you, and then she came into the shop, Ivy would think. <laughs> well, you know Ivy. Yeah, well, I'm going too slowly. I still think you could have told your own man first. Oh, you're not going to do an Ivy yourself, are you? I don't know what she'd do. <laughs> oh, did she get one of them looks on her? You know the one. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was all right, actually, wasn't she? I mean, she wasn't chewing the carpet, you know. No, and Don was nice, wasn't you? Yeah, he was really nice. pleased. <laughs> and he said to, we should go to the Rovers tonight, so... Will you come? Oh, Chuck, I love you. Of course, <laughs> oh, come on. I've just been waiting for an excuse to get out of going to Spanish with Alma. <sighs> uh, Normal lad, a word. Mm. Uh, don't go for your dinner. Mr. Scott's arriving at one o'clock. Oh. oh, right. Uh, Mrs. Brennan has pointed out that the Florentine caramel it's welded itself together. Right. Well, I've checked the cabinet. That's all right. It must be the packaging, so I've taken it off sale, you know, on the safe side. Yes, yes, whatever you say. Mm. Look, I'm sorry it's turned out like this. Yeah, so am I. Because there was no need. You've been very foolish, you know? Well, at least I wasn't dishonourable. I didn't go breaking me word. You've got a fixation about this, haven't you? When did I go breaking my word? A professional fee, you promised. When? When did I ever say such a thing? In the public bar at the Rover's return. You were going on about how professional our float was going to be. No, that was just a figure of speech, Norman. And if you were A professional fee, she said. 
Of course, you said. Well, Alec Gilroy will remember, just in case I might need a witness. Oh, right. Well, if you want to kiss goodbye to your career altogether, fine. Go ahead, bring him in, Alec Gilroy. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, he's known to be a friend of yours, is he, Alec Gilroy? He was there. Oh, you just don't understand, do you? Do you think Brendan Scott's after you? Hey, don't kid yourself. In the normal way of things, Brendan Scott would never, never get up as far as that. Oh, no, no. Well, it might be different in my case. Yes, and I'll tell you why. Because the real person Brendan Scott is after is me. If he can unearth anything in this against me, he will. And make a rope out of it to hang himself. See, that, that, that is his scheme. Oh, this is your little way of telling me you're not going to intercede. What, with Brendan Scott? <laughs> you might as well ask the Oxford they asked to, to, to use his influence with King Eric. Oh, well. Oh, well, I expected this. Look, it is all vastly more complex than you could be begin to understand. This is the way better buyers gone. Since Brendan Scott went up a few rungs, I tell you, it makes the Roman Empire under Lucretia Borgia look like the Boy Scouts. But Lucretia Borgia, she didn't actually have... He can bring his firepower to bear on me, he will. Where, on the other hand, as far as you're concerned, it is just damn his limitation. If I can keep my colours flying unsolid, I think you'll find that I'm not without influence up at the head office, despite Brendan Scott. Absolute dedication. Damage limitation, that is what the keynotes are. You mean keep Reggie Oldsworth out of it? I mean that people in rubber boats should avoid the temptation, and I mean any temptation, to go thrashing about with knives at other people's backs. <laughs> Do you have any justification for what you did? <clears throat> yes. Yes, I do. Well, we, I, I mean this branch. Well, Mr Holdsworth, as much as... I didn't as... say that I wanted to hear your justification. I just wondered whether you thought you had one. <clears throat> well, y yes, I do. It disappoints me to hear you say that, Mr Watts, because there can be no justification for what you did. None. I'm sorry, Mr Scott, but I beg to... Then you must be made to understand that once a manager started to justify making free with company funds in knowing defiance of the standing instructions and to the direct orders of his superior. He's on a... <laughs> yes, I was going to say a slippery slope. But it's not a slope, Mr. Watts. It's a vertical drop. Do you accept that what you did was contrary to company regulations? Yes. And that it was as Mr. Holdsworth says, in defiance of his express instructions. Yes. Then it's my unpleasant duty to convey to you the consequences, Mr. Watts. Perhaps it's best if I read to you this communication from head office. You don't have to read it out. I'm not dyslexic. You may think that I enjoy these disciplinary proceedings, Mr. Watts. I don't. Making promotions is much more satisfying to me, but in this case, it's a satisfaction that I've been denied. Well, if you want to read it yourself, by all means. <clears throat> yes. Yes, it would have taken effect from the first of next month. Manager of the Miles Platting branch, Mr. Watts. Your own command, hmm? your own command. Promotion was in the pipeline, awaiting signature. And then this little lapse came to light. Now, that's a letter I would prefer to have sent. This letter, on the other hand, conveys the company's standing instructions. You may take that as a reprimand. And the matter will rest there. Yes. Thank you. Right. Oh, uh... Would you ask Mr Holdsworth if he'd be good enough to call in for a word? Oh, yeah. He wants to see you. There's a delivery due here. Right. All right. How did he take it, then? I think he realises he got off fairly lightly. Uh, well, I hope he took it like a man, any road. We didn't go around uh, blaming other people, casting wild allegations about. About, um, about 
about anyone in particular? Well, you know, some people, they like to blame everybody in sight of everything they can think of, don't they? I hope he isn't turning into one of those. I'm sure he isn't. No, no, no. I think Mr. Watts is made of stronger timber than that, Mr. Holzer. I imagine you rely on him a good deal. Rely on him? Rely on him for what? Rely on him for his efficiency. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes, naturally, yes. And you delegate a good deal of authority to him. Well, you know, Brendan, delegation, key to management. Yes. Well, in that case, it's understandable that he thought he was running the branch. <clears throat> Probably does most of the time, I imagine. I'm sure you'd be sorry to lose him. Well, I'd hate to stand in the way of his career, yes, naturally. Yes, of course you would. No, no, I mean that. I hope that this doesn't affect his chances in the long run. Do you, uh, do you think it will? Well, I'd be reluctant to say. Oh, come, come, Brandon. Anybody's an expert on the subject of how to get on this company, it has to be you. And ditto on how to hold a man back. Well, you know, Reg, it's not easy to keep a good man down. And Watts is a good manager. It's simply a question of marking his card. But if I had one doubt about him, be whether he had the killer instinct. Mm. Well, it's not everybody who believes you need the killer instinct in food retailing. Ah, but we do, Reg, don't we? We know. Yes, Dave. I hope you enjoyed the Aste Spumante. Sorry? Oh, yes, yes. <clears throat> well, Miss Better Buy, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that night at the hotel. Right. I hope she got all she was entitled to. Yes, she was uh, very um, appreciative. Ah, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, I must say, I admire your taste. Do you uh, see much of the young lady still? No, no, she's gone to bigger and better things. She's a photographic model now. Well, at least when you see her picture in the magazines, you'll have the pleasure of recalling the night you laid the foundations of her glittering career. As for this business, consider it blown over. Um, did Reg, Mr. Holdsworth, did he know about Miles Platting? I was wondering when that would occur to you. The answer, of course, is yes. Right, are we off to Attic Rovers then? Are we? I don't know. I don't feel so sociable. Well, apart from our else, Alec and Bette asked us to stop by. It's their anniversary. Oh! Four years and they've gone without throttling each other, oh. eh? <laughs> Are they laying out on? Well, it just says stop by. And uh, there's Gail and Martin now. Are we going or what? Don, can I ask you something? If she marries him, where will that leave Nicky and Sarah Louise? Well, they won't be any worse off, that's for certain. No, I'm not so sure. Well, come on, how can they? It's all took good. Well, she'll be a plat then, won't she, Gail? Well. Well, what about them? Well, what about them? Well, have they got to be plats as well? Ivy. Well, have they? Does it matter? Yes, it does. They're Tilsley's, those two. And that's what's important, is yes, it? Yes, of course it's important. And you're a Brennan. Is that important? Well, is it? Cos all I've read is harking back Tilsley's, Tilsley's. Look, you paid for it carved in stone, Ivy. Rest in peace. Now let them, and let the living get on with it. They're getting wet, they're going to give them kids an home. Now be happy about it. Entonces. La semana que viene, vamos a reunirnos miércoles a las seis y media. A las siete no, a las seis y media sí. ¿Me entienden ustedes? ¿Me entienden? ¿Comprende? Es un trabajo decisivo. ¿Me entienden? La semana que viene... ¡Ah, oh, sí! Uh, la semana viene. Cambio de hora. Cambio de lugar. A las seis y media en vez de las siete, y debe de cabernos en otra una. Pero sí, sí. ¿Lo entiende? Lo entendió. Uh, entendí. Entonces, hágame el favor de anunciarlo a los otros estudiantes. Buenas tardes. Hasta la vista. Oh, hasta, 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 hasta la vista. Hasta la vista. Oh. 
was all that about? It was about next week. It would have been next week. But I think they would okay to get that far. She said, Alice says I'm my dear. That's half past six, isn't it? That's right, yes. It's half past six next week, not seven o'clock. Half past six. Hey, what about the rest? <laughs> Spanish, but you know, I don't think I'm going to get very far oh, with it. Because it's all in Spanish. You know, she said one word of English all night. What was that? Robinson is her name, or her husband's name. You couldn't tell the way she pronounced it. Robinson. <laughs> well, you seem to be doing very well. Uh, listen, are you teaching? Because if it's interesting, I'll do a swap. Uh, no, no, a day's teaching is enough. No, I'm doing the wine thing. Oh, oh yes, I saw that. But I thought, well, what is the point of educating my palate if all I can afford is plonk? Ah, well, to buy a really great wine, you don't need to know anything. You just have to be rich to buy a really great plonk. That takes education, so here I am. Well, you with your wine, me with my Spanish, we'd be all right in the Costa Brava, you and me, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we would. Um, how about we compromise over a glass of Rioja somewhere, um, if, if you're not dashing off? No, no, I'm not. Oh, no. Good. Well, um, let me just speak to that fellow over there who's been inviting people back for a coffee. Oh, no, listen, don't. No, no, no. no really, I'm glad not to. Come on, Siama. You're a quick worker. Oh, no, he's my neighbour. No, he is, honestly. Is he attached, is he? Well, you better ask him yourself. Well, if you don't want to snuffle him, move over. <gasps> I think he's quite a dish. <laughs> Listen, you, uh, you don't have to be stuck with me, you know. Uh, no, I'd really rather not go. <clears throat> I think it's the nucleus of a Lonely Hearts Club. Well, you don't need to join. I think you've just made a conquest. One of my Spanish lot is coming over to your wine lot. Oh, good grief. I think, uh, dishy was the word she ah, used. Ah, well, dishy, that dates her a bit, doesn't it? Tell her at her age she qualifies for free specs. No, I, I use dishy, you know, and I'm far too young to remember the twist. <laughs> I believe you're looking after the waifs and strays of the parish. One more won't hurt. Come on. Well... Do you like ice cream? I love ice cream. Sarah Louise is asleep, so I love hers. Good, because I've brought a whole tub of rum, peach and pistachio. Let's get really sick on it. Yeah. Yeah, but tell me. Oh, well, I didn't get the sack. See, I said. Well, get some bowls and spoons and I'll tell you all about it, because I think I'm just beginning to understand it. Or, to be more precise, my thinking's getting bent enough to follow it. Do we have to buy him a present? Of course we do. I suppose that's the only reason they're getting married. <laughs> oh, Kevin, you're so romantic. Oh, be fair enough. When it's a dead heat between a teething ring and a wedding ring, I'm not sure they're entitled. It's all right if I go out, isn't it? Where are you thinking of going? Just to say goodbye to Steve and Andy. Uh, yes, well, I'd rather you didn't. I'd rather you stayed around here. I mean, it's a bit of a special night tonight. They're not depraved or anything, just because they had a radio station I'm going. I'm not saying that. You are. Look, they're just drawn to trouble, them lads. And they'll draw you to trouble and all. I'd rather you didn't see too much of them. And you've got all your school things to get ready. Oh, aye. And what lads are these? Uh, now, let's, let's not start this. I have nothing against them. It's just that she's led a very sheltered life. He knew I was in for Miles Platin. And he knew I'd get it. It was a setup from the start. He can't have planned it all, not right from the start. Oh, couldn't he? You don't know him. The perfect job for Reg Oldsworth would be wallpapering a spiral staircase. Why would he? Cos. Cos, if I left, that branch would go downhill faster than Franz Klammer. And he knows it. You mustn't get paranoid. No, no, paranoid is when you think you're being persecuted. I am being persecuted. Every time I'm up for a promotion, he has to nobble it in his dirty, sneaky little ways. Curly? You mustn't start thinking like this, otherwise you'll end up as twisted as him. I'm gonna get Red Joldsworth. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but I'll get him. It's a solemn oath, Angie, you're my witness. I will topple Red Joldsworth, I will lay him low and humble him. And I'm never gonna eat pistachio ice cream again until I've got my jackboot on his throat. And then I'm gonna pig out. Hasn't it occurred to you that this is exactly what this Scott fella wants you to do? You know, you're brighter than I am, Angie. It took me half an hour to work that one out. Is there any more? There will be, Nicky. <laughs> there will be. Oh, yeah. I don't know what it's supposed to be, fourth anniversary. If it's your marzipan, I've done very well. You've done <laughs> cracking, Betty. Oh, I love marzipan. Good. Oh, 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 hey, 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 hey. Four years and he's chasing the barmaids already. Eh? <laughs> Does it necessarily take that long? Oh, I'm sorry, mate. Get it sliced, Alec. Come on. Yeah, go on, Alec, son. Yeah. 
Thanks, darling. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Here we are. Hey! Hey! Oh, hey. hey. <laughs> Ooh, what's that? Mm. Oh, shit! Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Sure, sir. <laughs> hey? I'll tell you later. Uh, this. See what everybody wants. Tell them it's on the house. Uh, oh. Regular's mine. Oh. 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 Hey, oh, talk yeah. about timing. Oh, all right. Yeah. So many. Oh, oh. Been so now, then, Where have we been? We ran to Gail's mum's, and then she decided to change her frocks. So, oh, well, seeing as we were waiting, I decided to over all gearbox on the car, put a couple of shelves up in the dining room. It's all the way for the paints is right, the elders up. Oh, give us a pint, please, bet. I'll have some frock on my nose, and I'll be happy. Mine's a double, I've got a lot of catching up to do. Evening, Ivan. Evening. Now, then, can I have the best of order, please? Now, it's not often I make a speech, but on this occasion. Now, I can't sing we've been together now for 40 years, because the way I sup, I don't think I'll last that long. <laughs> but <laughs> if the first four is anything to go by, I don't think 40 would be too bad at all. Oh, oh, they're very near eligible for me bus pass, be there. Yeah, hey, you're eligible for a pass from me any time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> in hey, well, 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 seeing as you're giving it such a good press, Alec, I'd just like to announce... Oh. Gail and me are getting married. Oh, Everybody oh, knows that already. Oh, do you? Oh, right. All right, there was something you don't know. It's all happening on the 27th of this month. Oh, and God. you're all invited. Oh. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> you haven't got a nose. She was pleased then. Of course she was. You know me, ma'am. She was over at Moon. I rang her up way back from Pauline's. Oh, why, yes, you'd have got phones that clam by now and all, they'd have a coach, books and all that. <laughs> I don't think we can afford to feed all your lot at once, would you? I wouldn't worry about my lot if I were you. They'll all be down the chippy. <laughs> They're not that bad. Oh, I don't know. They could open a few eyes down at number five. Oh, don't. We've got enough going on there as it is. Nikki, come on. Half past eight. Of course, she also massively thought it was going to be a church, do you? Don't believe it. Oh, yes, you're very traditional. My mum, you know, underneath all that trendy gear. Mind you, I think she's got a point. What? Well done properly. Top hats and tails, bridesmaids, chauffeur-driven limos. Could be something really nice to look back on, couldn't it? <laughs> yes, well, you won't find me on the photos if you do. Do? No. It's forwards I want to look, not backwards. Mm. <laughs> Nikki! All right, all right, it's just a thought. I don't care where we get married, so long as we do, and you're happy about it. Good. Because I don't think he'd be too happy prancing around in blue velvet knickerbockers <laughs> all day. <laughs> <laughs> it won't happen. <laughs> well, I think you'll need a couple of new skirts. And this looks past its best and all. Mm, I expect Mum would have taken me to be kitted out before now. We used to do it in the summer back. Yeah, well... What do you say we pop into town today? I expect you'll need underwear a lot. And you're the one who'll know where to buy it. Yes, but it's not cheap. Nor should it be, love. Your grandad wouldn't want to see you in out cheap, would you, Alec? What's that, love? I'm just saying, you wouldn't want Vicky to go back to school looking like a tramp. I should say not. It's just that she's grown out of this lot. Oh, well, I'll get some more then. Yes, but there's a lot I need, Grandad. Listen, don't you start worrying your head about that. You just make us a list and we'll see that you get it. I thought we'd nip into Manchester today, if that's all right with you, love. Oh, absolutely. Good idea. Hey, pick a new one of these up and know while you're at it. It looks like it's in better days. No, that doesn't matter. They have them at school. I can just borrow one when I need to. I'm not having a granddaughter of mine borrowing anything when we can afford to buy it. Let's get another one, bet, will you? Roger will go now. Oh, thanks, Grandad. You're smashing. Ah, oh, well, that's what we're here for, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Typical Alec. I bet he saved himself a fortune last night. Hey? Using Victoria as an excuse not to invite us back after hours. Well, he gives us a free drink, didn't he? Yeah, but he could have shut doors and let the party carry on, couldn't he? Happened he fancied an early night. Early night, nothing. He didn't want to give his drink away. Well, it didn't bother me. Because there's more important things to think about than free beer at times like this. Times like what? I'm not telling you, you'll only shout at me. Martin and Gail again, innit? See, I told you you wouldn't like it. No, the point is I do like it, I think. I think it's a very good idea. And what if he wants to adopt those kids? I'd be delighted, and so should you be. What? When they change the name and then they're going to forget who the real father was? I, uh, I don't want to be cruel, but they've probably already done that, especially Santa Louise. They'll never forget, not as long as I'm alive. Why can't you just let them get on with it, no matter what they're doing? It's their lives. They know what's best for their kids. It's not their kid I'm talking about. It's my son's kiddies. Listen, you think that that lad is poaching something that doesn't rightfully belong to him? How many men 
and take on somebody else's kids and treat them the way he has. You ought to think yourself lucky that Nicky's got someone like Martin who can help him get over losing his dad. Just let him get on with it and be happy. There's more to life than just being happy, Don. You don't have to tell me that, Ivy. I know. First stand. Thanks very much. Nice. Bye. Oh, but you're having me on. No, I'm telling you, there were that many blokes that I was having to fight them on. Oh, there'll have to be a brighter bunch than the ones we saw the other night. Oh, different altogether. There's plenty of life in this lot. In fact, I was so overwhelmed, I had to seek refuge in Ken Barlow. Ken Barlow? What was he doing there? Wines of the world. Wines of the... Ooh, yes, I can see that. It's kind of sophisticated. So, uh, you landed up with Ken Barlow. Then what happened then? What do you mean, what happened then? Nothing happened then. I mean, I was there to learn Spanish, not chat somebody up. Alma, you are there, so you are one up on the rest of us when it comes to chatting up foreign ways. Oh, charming. You'll have me labelled, you will. Hey, <laughs> Did he invite you out or what? Well, we had a drink. I mean, listen, it is purely platonic, mm. and that is the way that I wish it to remain. Yes, yes. well, if you believe that, you'll believe out a moustache. Now, listen, keep on with that, because it'd be a very good catch for you, Ken Barlow. No. Bye, you. <sighs> Bye, Mum. Bye. Oh, dear. What would you do with her? I've <laughs> been trying to work that out for years. Well, it's just as well she doesn't know he's coming round for a meal tonight. Ken? Yeah, you know, to sort of return the compliment. <laughs> I see. Hey, listen, don't you start. It's bad enough with your mother. It is platonic. We are just good friends. All right? Fine. If that's what you say. Oh, oh. Oh, you're off then? We'll probably have lunch out somewhere, love. Aye, good aye. Make a day of it. Yeah, I wish I were coming with you. Yeah, well, I don't think you'd be too happy standing about in underwear departments somehow, love. <laughs> no, you're quite right, I wouldn't. <laughs> See you later then. Yeah, have fun. Oh, we will. I mean, you know how much I like spending money, especially your. Hey! Nice your dark day shift and struggles. See you later. See you later. Oh, she's a grand little lass, is that, yeah, isn't she? she is. Yeah, she is, isn't she? What that's got to do with you being late, I don't know. Oh, Alec, it's only five minutes. We'll make it up after. You can bank on that and all. Two. Nice to be greeted with a smile, isn't it? And a little word of welcome. Oh, well, he's still sulking with me about Victoria hanging round with my two lads. Uh, could have cause or no. Do you mean? It's only a joke. I don't know what's worse, an overprotective mother or a besotted granddad. <laughs> Hey, nice car. Yep, you'd be on Easy Street if you could afford one of these. Yeah, yeah. Don't you ever wish you had one then, Kev? I nah, couldn't run to the spares. I'm amazed at the amount of folk can afford to shell out on something like this. I mean, you know. People do, though, don't they? Aye. I mean, guy you fetched that in, younger than me. Was he? Well, that's a rich daddy syndrome then, isn't it? Either that is on the fiddle. Yeah, but have they got what we've got, Marcy? And what's that, Kevin? Families. I mean, no amount of money can buy that. No, that's true enough, pal. Yeah. You coming in? Uh, no, nah, I said I'd pick Gail up at half past. Well, I said I'd ask you tonight, but I might as well ask you now, seeing as you're here, mate. Ask me? What's this, money or what? Why, well, have you got some? No, and I can say that without blushing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just as well I didn't want any then, isn't it? So, go on, what can I do for you? <laughs> well, it's a favour. Favour? Mm. Car need servicing and you're broke? No, 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 not exactly. Well, what is it, babysitting? Because they can't offer anything else. <clears throat> Well, I was just wondering if you fancy being me best man. Me? Yeah. Now, if you don't fancy it, Kev, I'll understand. Well, what do you mean, if I don't fancy it? I'll be honoured. Go on. No, seriously, I will. You, so you do it, then? Well, you sell the invoices? Of course she's in bad. Well, that's that settled, then, isn't it? The way things are at the moment, we'd do anything for the free meal. <laughs> no, seriously, Martin. I'd be dead honoured. I would. Dead honoured. Cheers, pal. Liz. About earlier on, I'm, uh, I'm sorry I snapped at you. Oh, it's all right, I'll let you. It's you know, just one thing and another, you know. Yeah. Well, we all have off days. Is Beck back yet? Yeah? Uh, no, 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 she, she's not, not yet. Shopping for the new term, eh? Yeah. yeah. There you are, well, I mean, she's, uh, she's grown. Well, I mean, you know all about it. I mean, you've got kids yourself. Oh, I know. Never stop paying. Must be worse for you. Private school and all. Oh, well, it's important that she has the best education possible. 
I suppose, if you can afford it. And then again, of course, there's her friends. I mean, all her friends are there, familiar faces, you know. Well, that's true. Still, I don't suppose you had to worry about such things, did you? <laughs> yeah, well, you'd be wrong there, Alec. The army offered to pay a big chunk for my two to go to boarding school if we wanted them to. Really? Mm. Didn't you take advantage of it? I thought about it, but in the end, I decided I'd rather have them with me. Oh, did you ever regret it? Not really, no. Oh, they're no angels. But at least I've seen them grow up, and that's the real point of having kids, isn't it? Please, Mr. Watts, sit down. No, thank you. I prefer to stand, Mr. Holdsworth. Oh, why so formal? We're old friends, you and I, Norman. Not even an optimist could describe what you've done to me as an act of friendship. Well, you think I've acted in my own interest? Yes. Miles Platin. Oh, Brendan. Yes. Oh, I see. Well, Norman, no manager likes to lose the valued uh, member of a winning team, but no caring manager would ever stand in the way of a, well, a fortuitous transfer to a better side. But I put it to you this way. Miles Platting is no Benfica. Miles Platting is no real Madrid of the supermarket circuit. But Miles Platting is the veritable graveyard of the Better Buy Empire. And by preventing your transfer to this backwater of inertia, I might have extended your professional life by several decades. What do you think, sir? Yes. And although you are not thanking me now, you will most certainly be thanking me later. Have you finished? Yes. I have said what I wanted to say, certainly. Good. Can I go now? Oh. I'm, I'm very sad that you're taking it like this, Mr. Watts. Yeah, I'm sorry what you've done to me and all. I regret all the times I've stood up for you, even lied to protect you. Well, from now on, Reggie, you keep your boots on, cos you never know when I might strike the fatal blow. I mean, for instance, I could start with these. Hey, hey! Ah, recognise these, Reg? Yes, you know what it is? It's a book of trolley dash tickets with one missing, the winning one, the one that you planted on Mrs. Faircloth. And there's always this. Give me that. Yes. Me that. Brendan Scott's personal telephone number. Now, I could put these two together, and who knows what might happen. <laughs> See you got a new one. Yes, it's smashing, isn't it? Yeah. Thanks, Grandad. Well, what kind of fish you catch with this, but I'll bet they'll be big ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take some of these upstairs while you're brewing up. Uh, brewing up. I say she's learning quick, isn't she? Yes, isn't she? well, don't encourage her. I shouldn't think there'll be many where she's going who brew up. I see you've had a good time. We spent a lot of money. I can see that. But there won't much change out of ten quid for this. That was five pounds, one p uh, short of fifty quid. What? Forty-four ninety-nine. We could have got one for thirty-five, but you did say to get the best. Yes, I know I did, but are you sure it's the best? Well, I mean, it ought to be at that price. I think we'd finish them off, wouldn't you? All in all, we spent just over four hundred quid. Four hundred quid? It would have been more, but for Vicky. How do you mean? Well, after we got the new blazer, she had me out and about the department stores. Well, why the department stores? I thought you'd got all these in one shop. If you take out a mortgage to pay for it, her words, not mine. And a grey skirt is a grey skirt, wherever you get it from. Well, anyway, as long as she's happy. I think she's inherited a bit of the old Gilroy thrift, as far as money's concerned. Aye, and quite right, too. Huh? <laughs> quite right, too. <laughs> Hey, I think it's dead romantic after all this time they're finally taking the plunge. Well, I suppose it'll make things legal, at least. Is Kevin to be the best man? As he now? Well, we were going to ask him tonight, but they're taking Des out for a drink, try and cheer him up a bit. Martin's going out tonight? Yeah, like I said, they're going off to Rovers. Oh, Kevin's dead chuffed is the best man. He's never been a best man before. I bet he'll have to make a speech. Well, at least he'll have plenty to talk about, won't he? Mr. Holdsworth, you've been following me round this store all afternoon. 
Now, if you want to say something to me, please feel free to say it. Say something? Why did you want to work? Oh, come on, Reggie. Just ask me. Ask you what? Ask you what? Oh, suit yourself. Um, Norman. Hmm? Um, about these biscuits, I thought we could... You know, you're pathetic. In fact, you're that pathetic, I'm going to do you a favour. Here. Go on, go on, take them. I had no intention of grassing you up in the first place. I wouldn't stoop to your level. Some of us have got standards. Right, I'm off down the road for a drink, then. Oh, uh, all right, love. You sure you won't change your mind? No. Do you know, Dan, I fancy a night in. Yeah. Look, uh, if it's something I said this morning... No, it's I... not that, love. It's, uh, well, there's a couple of teleprograms I want to watch, and um, I thought I might do a bit of ironing. Yeah. Well, if you change your mind, you know what I am, eh? Yeah. Don't bro, then. No. Don't worry, I won't. Because nowhere nowadays. Mind you, good little shopper. She don't mess about. <laughs> Bec, where did you put the name tapes? Uh, in a brown paper bag with the underwear, I think, love. Right. Hang on a minute, what are you up to? I was going to iron love while I watched the telly. Everybody's ironing tonight. Right. Find a bit of love, please. Well, there's no need to do that. I can see to it in the morning. Oh, it's all right. I always do it. Do what? I iron name tapes on my knickers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cry. Grandad, you're such a prude. Where's the iron? It's in a cupboard in the back, love. Look, I'll show you, cos you'll need the ironing board and all. I'll well, put you in your place, Alec. You are. Young Victoria. Bags of spirit. Oh, aye. You're going to miss her, you know, when she goes back to school. Aye. You never said a truer word than that, Don? No. Hey, Don. All right. Oh, well, I'll have you. Let me get you a drink. No, no, it's all right. I'm with Des and uh, Kev's due in a minute, so, you know. I'd be said that you'd have to be your best man. Too blimey, that got out quick, didn't it? Well, she saw young Sal in better buys. <laughs> oh, no, usual, please, please. No, no hang on, look, I said I'd get him and I will. No, no, I saw that. I'm buying for three. Yeah, well, I might just be able to run to that. Well, all right, then. I'm not a man to argue. So, uh, where's Ivy, then? Left her at home? Ah, yeah. Well, she gets tired on her feet all day, you know, and she said, uh, since she fancies a night, yeah, anyway. Hey, Ivy. Hi, Kevin. You all right? Hi, fine, love, thanks, yeah. Oh, well, if we get through that lot, we won't have too many problems. I'm not too early. No, perfect timing. You look very nice. Oh, thank you, kind sir. You don't look bad yourself. And something for afters. Oh, I can see you're going to be no help with my calorie control diet. That sounds ominous. No, 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 don't worry. No slimming tonight. You will go out of here looking like the Michelin man. <laughs> Come on. Fancy a cup of tea? No, we're not really, Gail. I've just got David and Sarah down, so I'm having one. I have them comfort tea. I've come for a word. You don't mind if I do? Ooh, you're out, please yourself. I am doing. Listen, is Nicky in? Uh, no, he's out playing football with his mates, but uh, I told him to be back about eight, so he won't be long. Oh, well, I'd better say what I've come to say while he's still out then, haven't I? Sounds ominous. Yes, it concerns him and Sarah Louise. Ah, oh, yes. I'm not going to beat about the bush, Gail. I want to know if Martin Platt intends to try and adopt those kids. Yes, he does, Ivy. That's one of the reasons we're getting married. Yes, I thought as much. Is that it? No, it is not it. You can't let him adopt someone else's children just like that. It's not right. He's a good father to Nicky and Sarah. They couldn't have better. What's your objection? Because he's not right. And you've no rights letting him either. I'm not letting him, Ivy. I'm encouraging him. And you better get used to the idea. And what about Brian? Brian's dead, Ivy. The kids are very much alive. They need a living father, not a dead memory. I'll fight this, Gail. So help me, I'll fight it every inch of the way. Well, you must do what you think fit, Ivy. But if I were you, I'd get used to the idea. Never. Never do you hear. You're not getting away with this, Gail, I'll tell you. We'll see about that. I... Oh. Hiya, Gran. Hello. Nicky, get those clothes off and into the bath. Your granny's just going. I'll tell you something, lady, shall I? You'll not get rid of me as easy as that. No, I know you'll hang on, Ivy. In the end, you'll lose. Make sure you don't lose everything. My goodness, that looks splendid. Well, I hope you like muscles. I love them. <laughs> right, there we are. What, is something wrong? It's the way it's done. Oh, is it a good one? I haven't a clue. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Swirl it about. Release the uh, the subtle ethers. 
Mm. Quite fruity. Nice acidity with just a, just a faint touch of apple. Mm, I've been called a few things in my time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Be careful. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, <coughs> perhaps I better just drink it. Good idea. <laughs> Here's to us. Yeah, why not? Oh, dear. Oh. <coughs> oh, do you know, it's nice to have a laugh again. Yeah, yeah, dear. Not easy on your own, is it? No. I think you just get used to being with somebody. Well. We're both with somebody now. Absolutely. To single people. <sighs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Alec? Not for a while, no. Is he in the back? No, it's been empty since Vicky went to bed. Yeah, come on then. Maybe he's gone to the loop. <laughs> right, maybe. Look, see to Kitty for me, will you? She's on a pint and a half. Oh, right. <laughs> Alec. Hello, love. What are you doing out here? I wonder where you were. I'd, I'd just, just come out for a quiet smoke. You had me worried. Yeah, well, as you can see, there's nothing wrong, so you can get back in if you like. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. What's that supposed to mean? doing I know what's wrong it's Vicky isn't it you don't want to go back to school yeah yes you're right I don't it's the right thing to do love I know I know it's the right thing it's just that I'm gonna miss her But she'll be back for the holidays. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just that... Time's... more precious by the day, isn't it? And you'd like to spend as much of it with her as you can? Yeah. You've got to let her go. I know something like that. Well, you stay out here, Tiger. I'll see you to the pub. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be in in a minute. You know, you're wasted down there and all those egg and chips. Down there with them egg and chips is all I've got. <laughs> Nonsense, you've got it all going for you. <laughs> oh, I wish I had your confidence. <laughs> Listen, you've got looks, personality, you like people. No, oh, I'm always attracted to the wrong sort. Oh, present company accepted. We all make mistakes, Alma. I mean, I wish I could turn the clock back. And you wouldn't be attracted to Wendy Crows here again? Can't say that. But if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have risked losing what I lost. Would you still go back to Deirdre if she'd have you? Who wouldn't have me? It's too late for that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, having said all that, you've got to accept your lot of what's happened to you. I mean, you don't have much choice. Nope. Would you go back to Mike if he asked you? You don't like Mike, do you? No. But then, who am I to criticise? You know, I really loved him, you know. <laughs> oh, I know he was a sod, but... 
when we got together, I, I really thought we'd made the right match. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that is a drink I shouldn't. Oh, I'm sorry, I really am sorry. No, no, it's all right, it's all right, it's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. No, just I let it go, just let it go, fool. let it go. <laughs> I understand. Just let it go. <laughs> Where's my clean shirt? There's no clean shirt in my drawer. I said to you last night, I must have a clean shirt for this morning. Oi, oi, calm down. There's no clean shirt in your drawer because it's on a coat hanger in your wardrobe. Ah. Oh. Come on, love. Sit down, have a cup of tea, bit of breakfast. Oh, later, later. I'm just going to get in the bath. The bath? It's never your birthday again already, is it? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Very highly comical, yeah. <laughs> Listen, this visit to our Vicky's school. Uh -huh. It's not a pleasure trip, you know. No. No, the crucial thing is to make a good impression. You don't have to bother coming if you don't want. Well, I do want. Well, I can't see the point, really. You know, two of us are driving all that way. I mean, it only takes one of us to put the headmistress in the picture. Anyway, you'll only be bored. I won't. It's not your thing, is it? Schools. Not yours, neither. No, I know. I mean, I have to go, haven't I? You haven't. There's plenty to be doing here. I know what you're up to, you know. Huh? You think I'm going to show you up, don't you? Oh, this is silly. Yeah, you do. Listen, it doesn't matter about showing me up. I'm used to it. It's our Vicky being shown up I'm worried about. Now, listen here, clever clogs. If you think for one minute... That, oh. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning, Good morning love. All bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, ready for school, are we? I suppose. Actually, I quite like school. Well, of course you do. Happiest days of your life, school days. You don't have to talk a lot of twaddle. Take no notice, love. Life gets better, believe you me. Mm, well, if I'm going to be told I'm talking twaddle, I'll get it bath. At least one of us will be clean, well-groomed and suitably dressed. <laughs> You've got no rights going round there upsetting Gail. How do you think she felt, eh? Telling her that Martin wasn't fit to adopt them kids. I didn't say he wasn't fit. Mind you, he's not, is he? He's not but a lad. All I said is what's right's right. Nicky and Sarah Louise are our brains, and they should have our brains' name. What the heck does it matter what their names are? It matters to me, and I'll tell you something else as well, shall I? It would matter to our Brian. Their name's Tilsley, them two, not Platts. Look, what your name is, that's not important, it's who you are. Look, you were Ivy Tilsley, then you married me, now you're Ivy Brennan. You're still the same person. Oh, come on, Don. A woman changes her name to her husband's when she gets married. I'm wasting my time here. It's no good talking to you once you get an idea in your head. Those children are our brains, and their name is Tilsley. If Gail and Martin change them into Platts, that cuts them off from their real father. And it cuts them off from me. There's only one person who can cut them kids off from you, and her name's Ivy. Tilsley. Hi, Elma. Good morning. Oh, what's up? Hangover. Too much vino with Ken Barlow. Mm, I wish it was a hangover. Oh, what did you two get up to last night? Well, not what you're thinking. Oh, well, if you must know, I made a real fool of myself. I mean, there we were having a really pleasant time, a really nice night, and suddenly I start moaning on about Mike Baldwin. Oh, well, a little moan about an ex. Everybody understands that. Ken Barlow should. He's had more exes than most. Yes, but he didn't stop with a little morning. It was a great, big, boring, hysterical morning. I couldn't stop. I finished up crying my eyes out all over him. I mean, God knows what he must have thought. Well, I know what he must have thought. He must have thought, well, I've got a right misery here, haven't I? <laughs> sure, it's not as bad as you make it out. Oh, trust me, I couldn't have picked a better way of killing a real nice friendship stone dead. And what's even worse than that? What? Well, after that exhibition, I mean, he won't be coming within a mile of me. Which means we've lost another flipping customer. <sighs> Morning, Audrey. Morning. My turn to supply the staff room coffee. If I oh, turn up without it, the whole school grinds to a halt. Oh, you're later than usual this morning, aren't you? Yes, yes, overslept this morning. Not used to these late nights, you see, Audrey. Going out to dinner is quite a rare occasion these days. So. Out to dinner, eh? Oh, somewhere special. Well, Alma's place, actually. I must say, Alma's a first class cook. I should have expected it, I suppose, if she does it for a living, but really, quite the gourmet touch, must I? Oh, hello. Hello. Well, he's a fast worker and no mistake. Oh, who is? Ken Barlow. Seems he's got his feet under Alma's table. Well, and she said nothing to me about it. What should she have done? Yes, I'm supposed to be her best friend. Hmm. 
If she's keeping quiet, it must be serious. Oh, thanks for coming in early, girls. I really appreciate it. No problem. And there's no need to rush back. We can cope, can't we, Betty? Of course we can. Signal, ain't it, love, when you've got to go back to school? Oh, I can't wait. Oh, oh, come on now. It can't have been that bad. Stuck here no. with me and Alec. I just meant I can't wait to see all my friends again. Oh, I'm sorry I was forgetting. You've got no friends around here, have you? Well, the Stephen and eight. Tell the boys I get a pirate radio station going at school. You <laughs> dare, lady. <laughs> Worthy ex, Sally. Do you know, he mithered the life out of me to be ready on time. Then he disappears. I bet he's reading on that lavatory again. <laughs> ah, at last. Come on, come on, we can't hang about. Oh, you're wearing that, eh? What's wrong with it? Well, I didn't say anything was wrong with it. Well, why mention it? I mean, you can see I'm wearing it without asking silly flaming questions. No, no, no. Are, you, are you ready, Vicky? Yes. Now, are you sure you've got everything? Because I don't want to get halfway down that motorway and have to turn turtle. Uh, see, it's all packed. All you've got to do is put it in the car. Right. Now then, Betty. What? If the drayman give you any back answers, I do. See, we've got the drayman coming. Bet, you should be here. Look, I've been coping with the drayman for 25 years. Now, get off with you and stop fretting. Look, I am coming with you and Vicky. Let's get going. We should have hired a bus. We could have taken the duck bus with us and all. Come along, Vicky. Charlie. Ah, moment. Ah, Mr. Holdsworth. What news on the Rialto then? I'm afraid I couldn't say, Mr. Holdsworth. Oh, dear. Norman, Norman. This is no good, is it? I thought you'd got all this disappointment by now. Well, I'm not. Well, your disappointment is normal, Norman. But misguided. If it's misguided to be upset when you've had a branch managership snatched from you, then I'm guilty, Mr. Holdsworth. Norman? This branch they're trying to land you with, it's the elephant's graveyard. They're handing you the poison chalice. There's a light flashed on checkout number 10, Mr. Holmesworth. <sighs> hey, I say, about get a load of this lot. There's some money here, eh? I tell you what, Vicky, you're rubbing shoulders with the nation's future top notches here, love. They're pretty ordinary, really, Grandad. Ordinary? <laughs> Aye, ordinary millionaires, if you ask me. What do you reckon, Bet? Vicky knows them better than we do. Aye, she does. Aye, I wish I'd had this sort of schooling. Vicky, you're made for life if you box clever while you're here. This is where you make your contacts, get the friends who'll be useful to you as you go through life. She doesn't want to choose her pals like that, Alec. She wants proper friends. I wish you'd stop undermining what I'm telling her. I'm not saying she should pal on with people she doesn't like. There's no law says your pals have to be poor. That's your best friend, right? Oh, what does her dad do? Uh, do you know? Alec, give it a rest. I'm only just saying that... Well, hey, them lads. Do they go here? They're just a sixth form granddad. We call them the Beefcake Boys. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Vicky. Oh, there's a head. Victoria, I'm glad to see you back. Hello, Dr. Carr. You must be Mr and Mrs Gilroy. That's us. It's a great pleasure to meet you. Oh, it is indeed. It is indeed. Oh, I mean, for us as well. <laughs> Victoria, I want to have a talk with your grandparents in my office. I'm sure Susan will help you with your things, won't you, Susan? Yes, Dr. Carter. But I want to chat with you. Come and have some tea at four o'clock. Oh, come this way, Mrs. Gilroy. Mr. Gilroy. No, uh, after you. Leave the talking to me. They are doing all this fusses making about taking Victoria back to boarding school. I wouldn't care, but it's not as if Alex's paying for it. It won't stop Alec putting his prices up, though, and the strength of it. He wouldn't have the nerve. Poor. I mean, when you wait up, it's Victoria who pays for it. You pay all the money out of her dad's will. Well, Alec will help her spend it. I tell you, he has definitely got worse since he had Vicky to worry about. Got worse, you reckon? Not an easy thing for the wee lad to do, in my opinion, Liz. <laughs> it's a dreadful business. But you may rest assured that I shall keep a more than usually watchful eye on Victoria in the months ahead. Thank you. Yes, we, we appreciate that. More coffee, Mrs. Gilroy. Oh, no, thanks. I better not. Coffee always goes right through me. Uh, you, you'll be wanting the uh, the doings. <laughs> you know, the uh, the necessary uh, Victoria's school fees. Oh, yes. 
I'm afraid that's something nobody can afford to forget these days. Oh, my word, no, you're quite right. And uh, should there be any extras that, that she needs, you know, there's no, no need to get in touch, you know. I mean, she's to have whatever you think. Uh, though, mind you, if you want to get in touch with me, if she's upset or anything, please give me a tinkle. I can be on the motorway in ten minutes. The business practically runs itself these days. That reminds me. I was very struck by your address. The Rover's Return. I take it that's a... Public house, love, yes. Uh, hotel. Uh, ho hotel come hostelry. <laughs> £2,800, I think you said, uh, Dr Carr. Yes, if you'd make it payable to the school. I will indeed. Yes, yes, a hotel come hostelry. <laughs> yes, but our food has quite a reputation amongst the discerning. Isn't that right, Ben? <laughs> what? <laughs> Best hot pot in town. And that's saying something up our way. I mean, up there, we wean them on our pot. No, no, a, a very conducive layout you've got here, Dr Carr, if I might say. We've both been most impressed by what we've seen, haven't we, Bet? And like I was saying, you know, if there's anything in the way of extras that Victoria should be having, and then she must have them. You know, music lessons, horse riding, whatever it might be, because uh, there's no problem on the money. Oh, no. Between you and me, once the estate's all sorted out, you know, she'll be quite a wealthy young woman. Mind you, I've always said, you know, there's nothing more worthwhile than spending your money on the education, eh? I wish more people thought like you, Mr Gilroy. Me? Oh, University of Life. That's me. <laughs> no, 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 I, I am. And although it teaches you a fair amount, you're learning it the hard way, aren't you? And I don't want that for Vicky. I mean, she's had it hard enough, you know, losing her mother and father. She'll be well looked after here. Oh, I've no doubt on that score, none whatsoever. I was only saying to, the, uh, to my good lady here the other day, well, if ever Victoria's poorly, at least we know there's a doctor on the spot. <laughs> Not that kind of a doctor, I'm afraid. Philosophy, not medicine. Yes, yes, well, well... Right, well, I think we've taken up more of your time than we should have already, Dr Carr. Eh? Yes, we'd best go and find Vicky and say our goodbyes. Well, once again, delighted to have met you. Oh. It's a social call, ma'am, or do you like watching us work? No, no, I just happen to be passing, that's all. This is the sausage, beans and chips, Oh, uh, chuck the tongue. Right. Now then, miss, who's a fast piece, then? Oh, oh, don't come in, isn't it, with me. I heard about you enticing Ken Barlow into your flat last night. I just cooked him in the order. Oh, well, it must be keen. <laughs> or you must, one of you must. Well, it is not what you are imagining. Whose fault's that? Actually, you could do worse. I mean, I don't suppose he's exactly rolling in money, but something like Audrey! Well. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, oh right. I am to sound not in front of the children. Oh. Well, uh, I'll let you get on with it then. Oh, tell you what, Alma. Now, why don't you come for a drink in the Rovers tonight? Tonight? Oh, no, I'm stopping in tonight. Oh, come on. Come and have a few in the Rovers. Uh, you never know who might drop in. I'll tell you one person who won't be dropping in. Me. Oh. You were downright abrupt with that woman, brushing us off. She'll think with no manners at all. Oh, give over. She'd had quite enough of your chunnering to last her for 12 months. Oh. There's Vicky. Well, hello, Vicky, love. <laughs> did, uh, did Susan help you with all your gear? Uh, you've uh, you've got it all in, have you? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Where's uh, where's your mum and dad, Susan? Oh, the to Oh, oh yes, never mind. I see. And, uh, Come on, love. What did, uh, what did you say your, your dad did? Alec, please. What? Will you be setting off that again, Grandad? Well, I, uh, I reckon we're better. Uh, how do they, uh, how do they work the sleeping arrangements here? Keep these lads well segregated, I hope. Yes. Perhaps we could look round a bit longer, eh? Well, we'll leave that till we visit. Time when we're getting back. You see? <laughs> you see how it is I'm being dragged away? <laughs> well, I'm gonna miss you. You will write, won't you? Of course I will. Anything you want. Anything you need, just give me a ring. Anything, OK? OK, OK. Bye, Bert. And thanks for everything. You're welcome, love. Bye, Grandad. It's another world, is this, isn't it, eh? eh? I'm glad we've seen it. When I'm thinking about you, I'll be able to picture it all in my mind. Now, you look after yourself. 
Remember, we're always there. Grandad, drive carefully, won't you? Tarloff. Well, he's not in. He won't be back from work till six. All oh, right, Tarloff. <laughs> oh, shut that line! Well, I'll be in there to you now. Shut it! <laughs> not badly lousy these, are they? This will just suit me in the life. Yours will be the same, I dare say. Can I get a look round yours? Get an impression of what I'll be buying. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I have to get back to work. I'm sorry. Oh well. Well, never fret, Flo. I never fret. I've seen the back garden. That's the main thing. Got to have a good run for the dogs, you see. How many dogs have you got? Well, don't worry. I mean, they won't bother you. I'll put a proper wire fence up first thing I do. <laughs> and I'll tell you again, you'll get a punch if I come in there. That's quite straight and all. Pub Andy. Right, this will just suit me. Got a dog, have you, love? No. No, we've got a budgie. A budgie? There, you want a dog, man. Budgie's no good to you when you're coming out of the post office with your pension. And a budgie won't defend you, will it? Oh, pardon? Excuse me. Got one in pup right now. And seeing as we've been neighbours, you can have picket litter. Better bet than your budgie. There's some funny blokes about, you know. Ah, well. I'll come back when these Barnes fellas in. Is that Jim McDonald's place there? Yes, yes, it is. Right. I'll go and have a crack with him. Oh, shut up, you daft devils, it's your dad! Ta-da, love. That cheque you give her for the fees. I hope there's enough in your account to cover that. Aye, just about. Oh, Alec, it's a lot of money. 2,800 a term, three terms a year. I mean, that's nearly 9,000 quid. Before you start forking out for gear and rest of stuff. Yeah, but it's not us that's paying it. It's coming out of the estate. It could be ages before that comes through. Well, I'll ring the solicitor then and see if we can't get some sort of interim payment. If not, I mean, we're just going to have to wait, aren't we? Oh, I'll let me fade. Are you hungry, love? I could shove a couple of hot pots in the microwave. Don't talk to me about hot pots. I've said enough about hot pots today. You have fancy talking about hot pots in front of Dr. Carr. What were wrong with that? What's wrong with it? What sort of impression do you think we've given her? She'll think we're running a backstreet alehouse. We are. And don't you dare start talking about giving impressions to me. I could have told you she wasn't a medical doctor. Yeah, well, they've no right to call themselves doctors if they're not proper doctors. Oh, give over. If she hadn't put you straight, you'd have had a sound in your chest before you'd done. Seriously, though, I mean... What do you reckon she thought of us? Well, I'd say she thought, hellfire. Got a right pair here. Fat little fella, thinks he's a bloke of the world. Fat? And his lady wife looks like a barmaid who's very gaffer. Well, if that's what she thought, she... she's a flaming good judge. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you mustn't take any notice of me, though. Know? Not that you ever do. No, it's Vicky I'm worried about. I don't want anyone giving her a hard time on account of what I am. Turn up. What's yours? I'm not hungry. I'll have some later. Tell you what, love. We'll have an hour in Rovers after that. Eh? I'm not in mood. What's up, love? What do you mean? You know what's up. I'm thinking about my grandchildren, aren't I? I'm thinking about this wedding as well, Don, and quite frankly, I don't see that I can go. Why not? Because I don't hold with what it's leading up to, him taking our Brian's place. He's already done that, love, cos he's alive and your Brian isn't. Oh, look, I'm sorry, Ed. I know that's harsh, but it's the truth, and it's about time you faced up to it. I know he's dead. I don't pretend any different. 
but he still lives on in Nicky and Sarah Louise. They are his kids, and I want them brought up in his name. It's no good, love. Them kids have got to get on without Brian. Just the same as you, just the same as you've got on without Bert. Them kids have got the next best thing to Brian. He's called Martin. Just the same as you've got the next best thing to Bert and me. John, that's not how I feel about you, love. Second best. Honest, I don't. Yeah, well, it's just the same. I'm not what you started off with, am I? <laughs> Look, life doesn't work out fair, love, does it? You've got to get on with it, like Gail and Martin. Now, them kids is OK. Dan, I know that you mean what you're saying. But to me, it's not right, love. And it never will be. And you say he had a, a van full of dogs? Well, how many are we really talking well, about? I couldn't see, Derek, but it sounded to be like about a dozen. What kind were they? Well, I've told you, Derek, I couldn't see. They just sounded big and vicious. Oh, I don't like the sound of this chap, Mavis. I don't like it at all. And you say he was very keen on the Barnes's house. Very. Oh, Derek, he was dirty. And, oh. and he smelled. Oh. And he was very offensive. He seemed to think that I should be drawing my old age pension. Oh. No, no, no. I mean, you can say what you like about England, but we still produce the best public schools in the world. All right, if you've got the money to pay for it, I suppose. Even if I did have, I wouldn't send my kids away. Oh, well, I mean, of course, I'd prefer Vicky to be here with us, but, I mean, it's what her mum and dad wanted, you see. I'll serve you, Jim. Oh, Sooner God. Liz than me gets the benefit of my husband's views on the old-school gym slip. Pint, is it? Please, Bert, all right. Um, uh, let me get that, Jim. <laughs> oh, Derek, my boy. Well, listen, seeing it's you, by all means, eh? Uh, uh, on me, Bet. And same again for Mavis and myself, please. Uh, Jim... Mavis was telling me about this chap that was round this afternoon, uh, keen on the Barnes's house. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he knew you. Why? Oh, yeah, Frankie Worrell. Yeah, a scrap dealer. A scrap dealer? Oh, might have known. Mm. Looks like he's going to be your new next door neighbour, Mavis, eh? Oh, dear. Bad news, is he, this fella? No, no. Frankie's all right, no harm in the man at all. <laughs> My new scrap dealers, eh? <laughs> it's the instinct and the work. You see, they can't resist doing it at all. Resist doing what? Mm. Derek. I wouldn't blacken a man's character behind his back. Mind you, I will say this. You see, when he moves in next door to you, don't leave your lawnmower out at night, eh? Anything metal, eh? And listen, in fact, if you can get your car off the road and undercover, so much the better. It'll save a lot of arguments later on. Can follow an old man? No, I can't see myself. Well, they're both very lonely people, aren't they, better? Oh, yeah. I suppose she's more his age than Deirdre. Of course, he's been around a bit, but then so has Alma. Mm. No, she could do worse better. Mm. She could do a lot worse. All right, all right. <laughs> oh. Sorry about the ringing. I knew you were in. I could see the light. Uh... I hope it's not an inconvenient time. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I, um... I just wondered if you fancy going out for a drink somewhere. No, I would. I, I, I would love to. Would you give, give me five minutes to make myself presentable? Of course. <laughs> right, come on up. Oh, and I promise you I won't cry into your beer this time. Oh, and Ken. All that performance last night, that was a farewell performance, OK? OK by me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, don't worry. This is a lightweight shop, just a couple of salad sandwiches. Do you know, I think Alf should keep an osteopath in the back for when deliveries come. Uh, oh, no salad made up. Would you settle for a bag of crisps and eight bars of chocolates? What, your third years have? Ah, oh, so you're responsible for all the acne, then? <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I'll take the ham and tomato. Right. You're uh, very chirpy this morning. Can't be the prospect of the autumn term. Oh, well, that's where you could be wrong. School autumn term or night school? You're kidding. What do you need night school for? Oh, the wonderful world of wine, believe it or not. What, making it or drinking well, it? Well, mainly talking about it, but with a view to drinking it. Uh, that's 180, please, love. Oh, 
I don't know how you get your head round evening classes after a day at school. I'm dead on my feet when I finish, do you? Well, if you think wine's energetic, you want to try conversational Spanish. <laughs> what is this, self-improvement, Mum? No, no, not me, Alma. She's down the corridor in the Latin Quarter. Alma Sedgwick? Yeah. Audrey, too, initially. Get away. Yeah, it's true, but the strain of the first session overwhelmed her, so she bailed out. <laughs> oh, well, good for Alma. Say uh, buenos dias to her for me, if you see her. <laughs> yeah, I will, once I've got real school over with. See ya. See ya. We give your mother another shirt. We're going to be lit, you know. Come on, Mum. Liz, listen, if you want to lift with me, love, you better look sharp. Don't bother, I'll nip in later. Oh, oh nice one, Mum. You might have said. Come on, Liz, he's late for school and I should have picked some spares up ten minutes ago. We're waiting on you. I only said I might want to lift. I didn't write it in blood, did I? Come on, you two had a round. No, not yet, we haven't. There you are, lady. Serves you right for telling Craig you looked peaky yesterday. You've only to look at him and his skies off. I enjoyed the walk, as a matter of fact. Good, cos his mum phoned. He's not going to be in tomorrow, either. Oh, I hope that man with the dogs moves in next door to you. What, him yesterday? No chance. His idea of luxury is a bivouac with a kennel run. Anyway, he was looking at the Barnes's house, weren't he? Well, there's a soul sign up on the flat next door. You are? I never spotted it. Well, I'm sure I saw it as I went out. You don't think it's that fellow with dogs, do you? Well, he was looking at the Barnes's, so he must like the area. I suppose it depends how much it resembles a bivouac. Sounds all right, Charmer. Hey, but no, Rita, you could drop dead lucky. Young stud with a bob or two, health conscious, hates women his own age. Watch it, you. My curiosity only stretches as far as how he or she will fit in. I mean, I've nothing against the Barneses, but I wouldn't want a repetition. Get her. Well, at least Des and Steph were lively. No, you didn't have to live next door to them. And stop making me sound picky. I get on with most people very well. If I thought the next person to walk through that door was my new neighbour, well, I'm sure I'd have no trouble striking up a rapport. Oh. <laughs> Come on, then, lady. Sure. Uh, have you got them? Yes, uh, I've got them. Stamps, uh, please, Rita. Here we are. Thank you. Only they're in danger of losing the legal tender if I've waited any longer. Now, if he were my next door neighbour, I'd want a rebate on my poll tax. I'm uh, just snipping into town. Have you got your key? Yes, I have, thanks, love. Uh, shouldn't you be turning up for the Rovers? Well, I'll have to be late, won't I? Hey, uh, hang on, Liz. What? Uh, look. You haven't said two words to me since yesterday. Have I missed some? If Andy and Steve nip home for the dinner, you'll have to give them some money for the chippy. I'll see you later. Bye. Don't pretend, Jack, because you know you can't. What? Read. How's she going on at St Trinian's, then? It's called Codrington. It's like a palace, is that place, Jack. Huh? Ah, you should have seen it. You wouldn't moan about maths in classrooms like they've got. They've had all sorts come out of there, you know. Oh, politicians. News readers. Playing fields, dormitories. Sounds like a cross between Butlins and Strangeways. Yeah, well, it would to you, wouldn't it? They're the only references you have to residential accommodation. I stopped at the Imperial once, you know, I darts do. They kept us there when the uh, coaches went on strike. Oh. Fancy. You. What? Is this how much it costs? Just stop, Ruth. Are you, you putting the bill for that? Of course, I'm certainly putting the bill. I happen to think. Uh, a good education is vital. And surrounded by people like you and your Vera only serves to drum the fact home. It's a bit below the belt, boss. That is more than I earn in six months. Earn, Jack. Earn? That's a verb. Verbs are doing words. So get doing something down that cellar. Now, pronto. You, cellar. All right, I'm going, I'm going. How's it going, love? Oh, lousy. I just feel like I'm begging for this money. You paid it out, you want it back. What's begging about that? Yes, but I, I mean, I paid it out for Victoria's education. Which is meant to be provided for under the terms of a parent's wills. 
just send that receipt and ask politely for the executor to send our money back. That's simple enough. But it's not, is it? I mean, it's far more complicated than that. In fact, it's downright embarrassing. I mean, we are family. Look, Alec, we paid that check out. Yes, and why did we? I mean, if we're to take her on as guardians, I mean, we have some sort of moral obligation to maintain her standards. What are you saying? Well, we're not paupers, are we, Bet? I mean, how can we say we're taking her on if we can't provide something as basic as her education? Because three grand's silly money. And because we'd be bankrupt be weekend. Get it back, Alec. How do you spell reimbursement? Just put refund. All right, come on, test me. Table. Uh, la mesa. Uh, bread. El pan. The bill. Uh, la cuenta. La cuenta? Hey, not bad. You're taking it seriously, aren't you? Oh, never again will I fly to Alicante and order egg and chips very slowly. Hmm. Do you know, I think they'd really appreciate it if you make an effort. Well, you've changed your tune. Yesterday, you were all for packing it in and calling yourself a bitter old spinster. Yes, well. Well? Ken came round last night and invited me out for a drink. I told you we wouldn't run a mile just because you got a bit weepy. A bit weepy? I cried buckets all over the poor bloke's shirt. And? Well, it's just. He made me feel less like a bitter old spinster and more like a member of Mike Baldwin's victim club. I don't know, it's just. Well, you talk to some blokes and it just goes straight out the other ear, but well. Ken's not a bad lad. Not a bad lad. <laughs> <laughs> Played it close to you, Jeff. What's Spanish for second date? Wait. Explicit? <laughs> yeah, if I can be bothered to go. Well, we're off down the baby clinic if you change your mind. <laughs> yeah, lucky. This little fella, someone like Gail, that's all I ever wanted, you oh, know. Oh, come on, Des, you're not even 30 yet. We've all made mistakes. Yeah, well, Steph's the only one who feels like she's made a mistake. What's well, she been in touch? Like a vent dummy through her solicitor. Right. Any news on the house yet? There's a bloke who's interested to come around tonight. Right. Well, look, it's my turn to cook tonight. And there's Irish stew, grab you. Look, you don't want to listen to all this. Um, anyway, I'm tied up tonight. Gail from work. Oh, well, it'd be sure. I was going to stick my feet up in front of the telly. I was going to get a few cans in, catch a couple of films. Films? Yeah, I was going to rent some. Gail's off out with a ma tonight when she's going to a party. Oh, come on. You sure? Yeah. You all right, Cock? What? Well, I'm not leaving. I'll do that for you. Jack, I'm fine. All right, all right. Jack? That's what we're serving. Beware, he's got his hobnail boots on today, love. No, the notice only went up this morning, and, um, well, I wondered if you'd seen anyone from across the street. There's a chance, Mavis. It's taken me all morning to realise Des and Steph have put theirs up for sale. I thought they liked it. Oh, dear. she won't know. <laughs> It was a messy business. Steph's taken off with a fancy man. You're kidding. She's not. Des, I, I, I wasn't gossiping, Des. Yes, no sweat, Mavis, only um, fancy grates a bit. Sorry, it was my fault. I was asking about the house. I thought you were moving. I am. Well, I'm very sorry to hear it. Yeah, well, uh, pint, please, Jack. I'll get that. Oh, cheers. Des, I, I, I saw a gentleman viewing your house. Yes, I've only spoke to him on the phone, Mavis, but uh, gentlemen stretching the imagination. Oh, well, do you know whether, whether it he... Loaded? Well, apparently, yeah, he's a scrap merchant. Well, they say that's where the money is. Oh, I don't doubt it. Yeah, I'm touch wood, he'll be talking hard cash. Clean deal. Well, as clean as you can get with a scrap merchant, anyway. Ah, uh, she's, she's barely gone and I'm already looking forward to her next holiday. Ah, well, don't get too set next time she comes back, because you'll only have to go through it all again. You know, the only compensation is, is having seen the place, knowing that she's cared for. Well, then. If I'd had that sort of privilege, you know, at her age, I could have ended up somewhat else. Bankrupt, probably. <laughs> One time we'll send her down there a kid and she'll come back a lady. Well, well, Grandad won't sound so cute then, will it? I, I think she'll be adopted. No. Something like that. No. Put her through law school. Get her to write your letters for you, Alec. Shall I tell you what the real compensation is, though? Keeping her out of harm's reach, that's the real investment. Bad influences. They say you grow into your surroundings. Some more than others. <laughs> and what's that supposed to mean? Eh? Makes her better than the rest of us, does it? Because you bust a gut to fork out school fees. Hang about, Liz. No, I won't. I live round here. 
My kids live round here. And the only bad influence is folk like you who think they've a bob or two more. You're a jumped up little snob, Gilroy, and I've had it up to here. <laughs> You were well out of order there. I'm sorry. Can I come in? Said no such thing. You did. You said her kids were bad influences. Nothing of the kind. And if she took it that way, then it's her guilty conscience. If from what I picked up, Jack's right. Who asked you? No, oh, I'm sorry. You Jack. more or less I said she had a family of Demics. My God, you're thick skin, Jack. Was you always talking about your pillock? Oh, now come on, somebody fill me in. Maybe somebody give me half a tip. <laughs> Server, it's on the phone. Uh, any more hot pots left, Alec? Uh, hot, hot pots. Yeah, and uh, well, a pint, please. It was not too much trouble. Yeah, a pint. He weren't referring to Stephen and Liz. I'm sure not. I'm sorry. I just... Oh, God, my mouth. I've talked myself out of jobs faster than that before, I can tell you. You haven't. Just come and see Alec and we'll iron it out. It's just cross wires. He really didn't mean any harm, Liz. No. What is it, kid? It's just... I've had some bad news, that's all. I'm sorry to hear that. Only I haven't told Jim yet. Fine. But if there's out, I can do. I'll stick my face on and come back with you. Nope. Forget it. I'll cover for you. Do you want me to get Jim? No. I'll sort it out. And thanks, Bet. Hey. Any time. Talk to the agent then. I'm talking to you. Cash. All right, love. Oh, my dear. It's been non stop. Honest. I've got the dry cleaners, five shoe shops before I found what I wanted, had to clip my frock, and then the hairdressers, except when I got there late, she couldn't fit me in, Franca. Gosh. Oh. I promise to take our gear to a clothes party. This this dress looks respectable, doesn't it? You bought a dress to go to a clothes party? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's 
to sound a bit clampy, don't I? You'd have been better off sticking to Spanish lessons. Oh, give over. Alma's welcome uh, for that. Five twenty, please. It's all full love. of middle-aged men and hitchhikers. Well, what did you expect? I don't know, dear. Give it a bit of a bit of a laugh. I mean, that's not much to ask, is it? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were coming. Excuse me. <laughs> You're kidding. The highlight of my day. <laughs> no, it's all right. I was just trying to shake Ernie off. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, first it was Bernard, then Ernie. For conversational Spanish, read knocking shop. <laughs> he looked harmless enough. You have to be joking. He's lethal. Anyway, I told him my boyfriend was coming. So if you hear me screaming down the corridor, I want you to come running out like a proper hero. Right? Right. I still want an apology, you know. Showing me up in my own pub. Drop it, Sammy. I have a profile once mm -hmm. repairing. I wouldn't care. She arrived half an hour late this morning. Did I throw it in her face? No, of Alec. course I didn't. I don't know how Jim McDonald puts up with her. She's more army trained than he is. I said drop it, Alex. She's having a bad time. Fine for you, Sheriff Adair. <laughs> You've got it the wrong way round. Is um, Liz not working tonight? Oh, no, we're keeping in the back now. 250 a ticket, surcharge if blood's wrong. I was only asking. Hey, yeah, Alan. Oh, thanks. You know, I don't believe this. I mean, Curly should have got that promotion. Well, he didn't. And he won't. Not if Uncle Fester gets his way. Oh. That man's platting job was as good as his. Hey, up talk of the devil. Listen, why should he want to stop Curly from moving up, though? I mean, it's not as if it were his job. No, you're right. I'm going to tell him. No, Vera! According to Curly, Holdsworth needs Curly more than he needs Holdsworth. And for all his faults, Curly's a pretty good lackey, you've got to have yeah. I'll tell you what it is, Mr. Holdsworth. I've watched that lad grow up. Mrs. Duckworth? Yes, and he's had some rotten knocks in his life. I think he deserves a leg up. I take it you are referring to the boy Watts? Yes, I would have got that manager's job. You want to stuck your oar in? Yeah, it's bad enough in this life trying to get on without somebody wheeler dealing behind your back. It's corrupt, is that? A drink, Mrs. Duckworth? Half a lager. <laughs> and a pint and a half a bitter. Stuff. Where are the lads? Upstairs watching a film. It's early, isn't it? I didn't see you in the rovers at dinner time, did I? No, I popped out on an errand, then I came home. Bit of an headache. I thought you were avoiding me. It's not you. Well, thank God for that. I just... Well, I'm going to get myself some toast. Does anybody want any? No, we're fine, thanks, Andy. You said you've got marking to do. I can wait. And it's made with milk. Oh, and I've got a figure to look after. Oh, do you know, I felt that small tonight. Our tutor started firing stuff off us at us in Spanish, and all that stuff we covered last week. And honestly, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> well, if I'm honest, I struggle tonight, too. You know, I honestly think my brain is so rigidly focused on teaching that I can't take anything in. Oh, give over. You're just trying to make me feel better. I swear. I felt like I said. Yes, but, you know, I feel that thick when they all get going. I mean, it's not going to be much good if I've got to slow a real Spaniard down to my level, is it? I'm going to sound like washing machines. <laughs> <laughs> you mustn't underestimate yourself. That's the secret to education. Nobody opens a mouth in class because they're reckon they're going to sound a fool. Oh, I wish I got a quid for every time I felt that as a kid. And then everybody who's a sigh of relief and the first fool takes the strain. I was that girl, sir. <laughs> You're a lot, lot brighter than you give yourself credit for. And you know, there are times when I don't wonder why you trained as a teacher. Oh dear. This one's tricky. Tricky? Oh, come on, Ken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. Well, I was hoping you might do that, but I wasn't sure how I was going to feel. <laughs> Me neither. Perhaps I wouldn't have done it. It seemed logical and 
technically it's our third date. It's not compulsory, you know. Deirdre still means a lot to you, and while I've got still a few ghosts to bury, maybe it's a bit too soon. Still, I'm dead chuffed you did it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Thanks. More tea, Vicar? <laughs> Thank you, sister. <laughs> Doctors, haven't you? How did you know? Couldn't pin it down to anyone else, really. I knew you did leave the book open with the surgery number. I have tried to start a conversation. I really have. I just. I couldn't believe it. Listen, darling. I'm your husband. We're meant to share these things from the beginning. I mean, how the hell do you think I feel shut out in the cold? I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. Hey, it's not the end of the world, you know. Look at our Sandra. What? Well, my cousin Sandra. She had the tests, had the smear, went to hospital. She had the treatment. Look at her now. She's a healthy young woman. It's not that, Jim. What is it, then? I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. So. Sure. I'm fine, honest. You say so. Been a bit sick. It'll go. You want to stay at home? I'll be all right. You tell her, Dad. She wants to have the day off. I'm going to. No, you're not. Well, I'll go back to bed. You've only just got up. Oh, come on. I'm not kid. Oh, what time did you put your light out, eh? I'm sorry, Jim. I can't face a fine breakfast. Oh, right. Sorry. <clears throat> That thing next door bawling its head off all night. What? We rose it? Mm. Once flipping gaggy. No, oh, so do you. Well, if it happens again, I'm gonna say something. Well, she didn't keep me awake. That depends how many pints you've had. Are you going to school or not? Look, I haven't got any lessons this morning. Yeah, but it doesn't mean you haven't got any work to do. If you want to do well, I wouldn't waste a minute if I was you. Do we have to? Mum? Please, Andy. Please. Okay. Are you sure you're all right? Yeah. Just a tummy upset. Oh, just the young man I'm looking for. Why? What for? Give us hand with this, Chuck. It won't take you a minute. Yes. What's that? OK. There. Right, go on. How much are you paying? Oh, you'll be lucky. Right, then. Well, next time I want some homework doing, I know where to come. You're on. Though I doubt I've got the brains to be of much help to you. <laughs> Bye, Andy. Well, thank you. Good morning. Hi, Ken. Do you know he's not a bad lad, Andy? He'll be breaking a few hearts in years to come. <laughs> I dare say he will. I wish I was still at school with my whole life ahead of me. I think he'd prefer your job to his next English assignment, not to mention the money. 
Ken, if there's any money in this shop, I don't see it. Mind you, that's not through one to try. <laughs> Enough of my troubles. How's your love life? Heavens, look at the time I'm going to be late. Can I leave this with you? Oh, of course you can, love. I'll, I'll have it ready for you. What's that? Shropshire blue, what's that? Cheese. Oh, right. Well, we've got plenty of cheese. I mean, Danish blue, that'll be the same thing, won't it? Well, not really, no. Well, what's that? Terra Masolata. You winding me up, aren't you, Cal? Never mind, I'll try Patel's on Rosamond Street. He's got a very good delicatessen counter. Ken, if you want Shropshire Blue and Tarama Salata, you shall have Shropshire Blue and Tarama Salata. Thank you. So why don't you go back to bed? I'm not ill, just pregnant. Oh, just? Sorry about the basin, I did try and clear it up. No, not at all. Hey, about time we got used to it anyway. Dirty nappies, wet sheets, the lot. Do you mind? Sorry, love. Just forgotten the joys of fatherhood? Well, you know why you've forgotten. Because you missed out on most of it. Uh, you know, Liz... It's bad enough being separated from your children. Especially when they're toddlers. That's what's worse is when you come home. You've been dying to see them. And there they are, and they haven't got a clue who you are. You want to talk to them, you don't know how to. You want to make them laugh, you don't know how to. You don't even understand what they're trying to tell you. You're just the guy who comes once a year with a presence. Santa Claus. And you're back up the chimney and off to Cyprus or somewhere. Well, this time it's going to be different. <laughs> you're pleased with yourself, aren't you? Oh, yes. You wait till I tell them down the rovers, eh? I'm really going to push the boat out. Not just yet, eh? Andy and Steve are going to have to be the first to know. And I'm not sure how they'll take it. They'll be dead, chuffed, love, the same as me. Have you thought how it's going to affect our lives? I've had 16 years of watching the lads grow up. Now it's like I'm back to square one. Look, this time it'll be different. I am going to pull my weight. And, uh, before you ask, I don't really mind if they're both wee girls. What do you mean, both? Well, with our family history, love is bound to be twins. Now, be sure you can manage without me for half an hour. Yes, you get off. Oh, you don't mind, do you? I know what it's like trying to find the right outfit. <laughs> well, she is my daughter, so I suppose I ought to make a bit of an effort. Just remember, Gail's the bride. I mean, it is her occasion. Don't worry. I shall find something tasteful and modest. I shall merge into the background. Not like Raquel Welch, you mean? <laughs> As if I would. Oh, listen. If you've got a minute, there's a couple of orders that need making up. Oh, right. Oh, I recognise that writing. Oh, Shropshire Blue, eh? He'll have Danish and lump it. No, no, apparently that's not quite the same thing. No, I'll get that. And the Tarama thing of that. Tarama Salata? You getting that specially in for Ken? Look, he's a good customer, Deirdre. I don't want to let him down. Besides, I was passing Patel's anyway. <laughs> See you, Lord. See ya. Anyone at home? Sorry, I was miles away. Everything all right? Fine. Not poorly you out? No. Right, shall I get this floor washed? Whatever for. Let Daft Jack do it. <laughs> She's got some neck on her, hasn't she, coming in here after what she said to you last night? <laughs> She's made an apology and it's all forgotten, Jack. Oh, uh, a bit strong, though, wasn't it? Eh? You jumped up little snob, Gilroy. Have you not finished drawing through? Uh, one thing you learn about this job is to keep your thoughts to yourself. I mean, I would never call you a tight-fisted, arrogant, pompous little... I, 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 I wouldn't, I just wouldn't dare, would I? Get them toilets swapped out. And one of them's blocked. Sit to it. Hiya, Sal. Oh, hiya. And how's wee Rosie, eh? Hey, she's been as good as gold. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm really sorry Thank about you. last night. She goes off all right. It's just that if she wakes up at night, she wants to come in our bed. Oh, look at her now, eh? Butter wouldn't melt. <laughs> Gail says if we persist with her, she'll be all right in a couple of weeks. We've just got to be firm. Yeah, well, don't you worry. The worst comes the worst, I'll get Andy some earplugs. Oh, so it was him banging on wall then, was it? Well, don't worry, lovey. I'm on your side. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, Jim. See ya.
There we are, love. One shepherd's pie. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> How's Audrey coping in the shop? Oh, fine. <laughs> when she's there. Mm. Do you know this is the first dinner hour I've had all week? Oh, Skyving, is she? No, she's shopping for the wedding. Oh, of course. I mean, it's not every day, is it? What beats me is how folks can spend so much money getting themselves all dolled up for a wedding. I mean, you ought to give it as them as needs it. Them as is getting wet. What does Audrey need with new clothes? Eh? So you'll not be buying a new suit, then? No, I'd be ashamed to waste the money. Well, I just hope they'll both be very happy. Yeah, well, they should know what they're letting themselves in for by now. I just wish I'd had a dry run before I got wet, both times. Not everybody gets a chance, though, does it? Yes, Mum? Hey, kid. When you told me there was a jumped-up little snob, I thought it was brilliant. You got my vote, love. Jack? Yes, boss? Ah, what am I? Say that again. Boss, boss. Exactly. Me keep wasabi, you tomto. Eh? In plain English, that means I'm the one with the silver bullets. Now, get down the cellar and bring some grapes. <coughs> Hi, Jim. Jack? Hi. Listen, I'll put my best bib and tucker on when I'm halfway through stripping down the gearbox. Right. Hi. Hey, I'm gonna crack open the bubbly, eh? Why don't you keep your voice down? I'm whispering. Yeah, well, if there's one thing that attracts attention in a place like this, it's when husband and wife start whispering. So, please, let's just drop the subject when we're Right. All right, Jim. How's business? Fine, fine. <clears throat> Got to sell throats. No, it's nothing. It was just to keep me hand in. It's a very simple pattern, actually. Oh, for real, is it? Yes, I haven't quite finished the sleeves yet. <laughs> oh, Mavis, it's lovely. Well, it's a bit on the big side. I mean, I wouldn't like you to think that I thought she was that size. I just thought she'd grow into it. Oh, Mavis, I don't know what to say to you. I think you're smashing. Well, you know, if ever you want any babysitting doing, don't hesitate to ask. Well, tell you what, would you mind if I just leave her with you while I nipped at Kemi? Oh, of course I do. <laughs> oh. Thanks, Mavis. Oh. I'm only going to be five minutes. Then. Hello. All right, then. Bye, oh, Look. Here we are. Brew up. Ooh, what do you think you're doing? I'm babysitting for Sally. Oh, well, right in. <laughs> She's not paying me, Rita. No, but I am. No. Oh. Oh, Rita. Mm -hmm. Look, that flat that's been sold next door. Yeah. Just seen a removal van passing. You don't think it's your new neighbour, do you? You know, just look at all them chip papers. I don't know. Some people. Where do you think you're going? Get back in. You're supposed to be minding that baby. Number 12? Um, round the corner, love. Not you moving in, is it? Oh, he's falling on behind. Oh, here he comes. His name's Onsworth. Mr. Watts, he would definitely want to get that manager's job at Miles Platin. Oh, he's a rat into that holes with them. Anyway, sign here, love. Mrs. Duckworth, over here a minute. Uh, what is it, Mr. Watts? Oh. Are you talking about? Oh, look, don't worry, Curly, I'm on your side. I gave it to him good and proper in that robe, as you should have seen his face. Yes, I've heard about your outburst, and I have to give you full warning, here and now, that should it come to my notice that you are discussing management policy in public, I shall recommend your instant dismissal. Is that understood? But you don't understand, Curly, all on signed. Signed? Signed what? Please, this petition. It should be him that should be investigated for standing in your way like that. Give me that, give me that. You must not, I repeat, must not interfere with management policy. And furthermore, should I go into the Rovers for a social drink, the last thing I want to be reminded of is better buys. Is that understood?
Do you know, that's all I need from you, complete lack of understanding. Yeah, well, I must admit, I wouldn't relish having him as a next-door neighbour. Well, then... Well, it's just that I think perhaps you're getting a bit paranoid. Could do without this, you know, Mavis. Well, I was just thinking that it's probably no more than a coincidence. Have you any idea how many properties there are on the market? It is no coincidence he's up to something. Whatever gives you that idea? Oh, I suppose when you bought your house, you looked at it one day and moved in the next. Of course we didn't. We had to get a mortgage. It took a few weeks. Exactly. He's known he's been moving round here and he's not breathed a word. Now, why would he do that? And if you say I'm paranoid or overreacting, I'll throttle you. Right, then. All oh, right. Many thanks. Not been any breakages, have they? No, no, I hope not. Moved an old lady last week. She had 170 pieces of china. Didn't crack a single one. Oh, very lucky. Oh, you employ us. You're dealing with professionals. That's what you pay for. Very nice. Cut glass, is it? Yes, yes, it is, yes. The uh, staff at my last branch gave me that. Had a whip round in appreciation when I left. I'll take it from you, Chris. I'll not drop it. Well, that's what you're paying for. Yes. Uh, here. Why don't you have a drink on me? Cheers. And, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll pick your brains before you leave, if you don't mind. I suppose in your line of work, you see the insides of more bachelor flat than most. <laughs> tell me, are, uh, are futons still de rigueur? You won't. Well, it's a miss, isn't it? Cleared me out. Even took the matrimonial bed, the swine. Oh, yes. I'll tell you, I won't be doing this for long. You know, we spend a third of our lives in bed. I mean, why put up the second best? Well, not me. You come round here in two weeks. Mate, just like John Jones's boudoir in here. <laughs> hey, you're just in time, Betty. I was just closing. Oh, wait, is that the time? Jack, my watch must have stopped. That's all right, love. What can I do for you? Uh, stick that in the window for us, love. It's all written out, look. Right. How many weeks? Oh, I think two will be enough. Right, well, that's just a quid. Oh, right. There you are, look. Thank you. I've been clearing out, you see. Oh, why? Jobs I should have done, oh, 20 years ago. Some yeah. of my Cyril stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a brand new tennis racket there. It's too yeah. good for Oxfam. It's hardly ever been used. And a pair of binoculars. Well, they're no use to me, Rita. Well, not at my age. <laughs> and they're wrong. What's, what's the matter? Have you not heard, then? Heard what? About my new neighbour. <laughs> Can I borrow a cup of sugar? <laughs> no, I'm only just joking, Rita. I've just come to browse. Don't mind me. You mean? I do. Oh, dear. Actually, I was just closing, Reg. Oh, well, I won't be a minute. I have just, uh, just want some bed, uh, bedtime reading. She doesn't sell those kind of magazines, doesn't Mrs Fairclough? Oh, well, this is it then. Oh, and, uh, well, I remind myself, I'll order me papers. Have you got a pen? Right, ready. Um, I'll have the mail, evening news, gazette and, uh, grocer and checkout. And the address, wait for it, 12 Coronation Street. Mm. <laughs> I bet with all this extra custom, you're glad I've moved in, aren't you? Try this. Shropshire Blue. Oh, how long has that been in the attic? It's meant to be like that. Well, where did you get it from? Audrey Roberts. But you're not going to eat it. Oh, 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 oh. Actually, I think you're right. Well, I don't work in the catering trade for nothing, you know. Even if Jim's cafe is a bit down market for Shropshire Blue and Chateau Neuf de Pap. Mm. That was one of Mike's favourites, that. Really? Does that earn me more or less brownie points? Oh, me and my big mouth. <laughs> Skip it. Well, I didn't mean to mention him, you know. I just keep forgetting. I'd just rather not discuss it. Anyway, I know why you hate him. Do you? Well, you never wanted him to marry Susan in the first place. <laughs> it was the age difference, I suppose. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, what are we going to do now? Watch telly, or shall we go out for a drink? I know. How long can you stay? As long as it takes, whatever it is. Good. <laughs> Stop there. Oh, I hope it's not going to be rude. What? I'm a teacher, remember? But they're the worst sort. Anyway, whatever it is, I bet it beats conversational Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> bet? Mm. That's Kendi. I've not seen him, love. Don't say studio. Oh, not funny. <laughs> no, I expect he's in his flat. I just want him to sign something. You having a quick one? Oh, I'm up to my eyes in bills, insurance, life policies, and God knows what else. Have a quick one. Sit down, I'll fetch it up. Oh, go on. Twist me on. We'll have a sure. <laughs> I don't care what you say, Mavis. I'm going to double-check all my doors and windows tonight. I doubt I get a wink of sleep. Surely it can't be that bad. I can see me having to sell and move. Oh, really? I mean it, Mavis. As far as I'm concerned, that man is bad news. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Rita's not well suited. She's got a face as long as a fiddle. Well, who can blame her? Any bloke that pulls a stunt like that on Curly deserves to be behind bars. If he did. Of course he did, and he said. So why didn't he want me to stick up for him? Why did he tear up the petition? I don't know. Maybe he's got a slate loose. <clears throat> Maybe he's in love. Maybe they put in something in the canteen tea. You ask me, anybody working for better eyes turns out to be a flaming nutcase. Are you? I work there and all, you yes, know. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Are you up to speak to the devil? Oh. Good evening, ladies. Evening, Reg. <coughs> evening, landlord. Oh, good evening to you, Reg. May I say how delighted I am to hear you've taken up residence once again in our little community? It's as if I've never been away. <laughs> yes, well, it will. You were in last night. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> what can I get you? Right, I'll have a pint of lager and lime and uh, vodka and tonic for Mrs. Purple. Uh, oh. No, not for me, Alec, thank you. I'm just leaving. Oh. oh, I hope you don't have this effect on all my customers, Reg. <laughs> Cheers, Reg. <laughs> Sorry about this, Mrs. Sedgwick, but you're doing the washing up. Zog? Zog? There's no such word. Well, of course there is. It's oh, you've heard of Zog, surely? No, what is it? Well, it's um, it's a it's a small felt cap, okay. embroidered with beads. Uh, they wear them in Tibet. The Buddhist monks. Dalai Lama always wears oh, one. You must have seen it. I think I'll look it up just in case. Uh, well, it's not a very good dictionary. And you're not a very good liar. Oh, you cheat! <laughs> Get fair cop. <laughs> right, just for that, you can wash up. I'll make the coffee and put the scrabble away. All right, anything for a quiet life. And next time we play, I'm going to check every single word. <laughs> <laughs> i get it. All right, then I cheat. Deirdre! Hi! Hi! Oh, what can I do for you? I'm sorry to trouble you, but I have this form from the insurance. It needs your signature on it. <laughs> no trouble. Come no. on, Ed. I could swear we both signed this form six months ago. Why they want us to do it again? God only knows. They didn't seem to know themselves when I phoned them up. All right, come on, come on. I'll get a pen. Uh... Uh, I can come back another time. No, no, sit down. Sit down. Do you fancy coffee? Well, you seem to have a visitor. Yes, it's Alma. She's making it. Alma? Yeah. Well, to tell you the truth, Ken, I'm a bit pushed, you know, catching up with my bills, answering letters, you know how it is. Right, well, it's up to you. Alma, it's Deirdre. She's uh, just asked to want a coffee. Oh, um, uh, hello, Deirdre. Sorry to be a nuisance, but I'm not stopping. Um, have you signed it, Ken? Oh, great, thanks. Well, I'd, uh, I'd better go. I'll let myself out. Good night, Alma. Uh, bye. 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 Why, for heaven's sake? Hiding in the kitchen like I've been caught red-handed. Playing Scrabble. It's hard for the Hellfire Cup. Yes, but did you see her face? I mean, it was as if... As if what? Well, she looked wounded, Ken. We're not tied to each other anymore. Yes, but she's still your wife. Yeah, well, technically and legally, yes, but not in any other way. She's got her own life. She's had other relationships since we split up. We're both past being jealous about each other's friends. Are you sure about that? Of course. Besides, you and me, we're, well, we're just friends, aren't we? No more than that. Yeah, and I think I quite like it that way. Same here. <laughs> so why do you feel guilty? Don't know. Let's hope it doesn't spoil our friendship. Oh, don't worry, it won't. Watch this. <laughs> Fantastic, eh? Pick it up, Paul. He has to live somewhere, I suppose. What if they moved in next door to you? Oh, that's what Rita says. But... I think I'd have made such a song and dance about it. Yeah, I'm sure you would. Apropos of that, Des Barnes was in earlier on. I think he's found a buyer at last. Not that scrap man. Scrap man? Oh, no, no, no. He was very respectable. He brought him in here for a drink, collar and tie, smart suit. Oh, well, I'm relieved it's not the scrap man. What sort of, like, what type of man was he? Would you say he was sort of professional, like managerial? Well, I'd say he was more your type, maybe, wouldn't you, Beth? Oh, definitely. Mm. In fact, I think you might know him. Really? Yeah, well, you must. I mean, it's uh, Derek's boss. What's his name? Victor... Uh, uh... Pendlebury? Oh, no! Well, he's got to live somewhere, maybe. Oh. Don't you think you're overreacting, maybe? <gasps> You're going to see in your face, Mave. Oh, very funny. You could have given me a heart attack. Mr. Wright, Perler in here. Mave's been gabbing on all night about Rita and 
Oh, not big Gabby, no. You all right, love? Um, I'm not sure, but I'll have a gin and tonic. Coming up. Did you find him? Yeah, thanks. Good. Sure you're all right? I feel as if I've just had a tooth out. Hey? Eh? Well, you know it's not going to give you any more jip, but it doesn't have to take a bit of getting used to. Is this something to do with Ken? Well, you know what your dentist had said? Rinse your mouth out and have a good spit. Thanks, I might just do that. I expect I'll get over it. It's really made my day, has this, you know. Eh? Huh? Victoria writing. I mean, she's barely been back five minutes. More tea. Aye, right, go on. Dear Grandad. <laughs> Grandad, eh? <laughs> Still makes me feel proud, you know. Eh? <laughs> Dear Grandad and what? Dear Grandad and Ben. Good girl. I don't know what's worst about having Vicky in our lives. Being known as a grandma, or being married to a granddad. Well, she seems to be settling in all right. Because, I mean, it can't have been easy for her, you know, not under the circumstances. No. How she needs? Needs? Well, I should hope not. She practically haven't hit flaming shops before she left. No, I mean, out she's forgotten. I mean, we're not exactly experts in this packing for boarding school lark, are we? Well, nothing she's mentioned. You know, it must have taken her ages to write this. I mean, you can tell, can't you, by the handwriting, eh? Of course, she takes after my side of the family for that, you know. Your side of the family? Your handwriting looks like a doctor's prescription. The last time you left out on my shopping list, I had to take it to a chemist, have it made up. Here. Well, I'll read it properly later on when I've a bit more time. It's lovely to hear from her, it really is. Uh, I'm she'll feel the same when she gets a reply from us, or, to be more precise, from her granddad. Huh? Well, there's no point looking at me, is there? You know what I'm like. I need a fortnight's notice to leave a note for the milkman. Well, what am I going to write to her? <laughs> same as her. Tell her what exciting things are happening in our lives. Won't take you long. Be able to get it all on the back of a stamp. Look, Rita, I don't like the idea of Reg Holdsworth living round here any more than you do. Why? Why does he have to move round here? I mean, he must know he'd be about as welcome as a boil on the backside. Why else would he keep it so secret? The point is, he is here and there's nothing we can do about it. Except make sure that we don't utter a single word that can possibly be misconstrued as encouragement. So, I suggest we forget all about it and just get on with our lives. Because, quite honestly, since he's been here, we've talked about nothing else. Oh, you're right. Ah. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. morning, Mr. Holdsworth. Oh, what a fine morning it is. First morning in my new home. Mm -hmm. Yes, new start, new life. And I can't tell you how nice it is to be amongst friends. No, I can understand. And that's two pounds, please. Oh, yes, right. Um, and I can't wait to get things as I, as I really want them, mm -hmm. so I can invite folk round to share my life. Including your wife, I take it? My wife? Well, if I recall, she was very keen to know what you were up to the last time you were interested in these parts. Yes, well, she won't be this time, I can assure you, because she's got her own life to lead in New Zealand. Yes, new home, new country, new man in her life. I can assure you, I've seen the last of her. I'm a free agent now, free as a bird. What more can a man ask? Hey, Mavis. Morning. Ah, daddy, daddy. I should think I'll tickle pink at him as a neighbour. <laughs> tickle puce, more like. <laughs> Just the mention of Reg Oldsworth's name sends his blood pressure soaring through the roof. I'm surprised he's not got you chained to that till after what happened with Ivan. Oh, don't you worry about me. I'm more than a match for the Reg Oldsworth of this world. Mind you, Alec's not complaining. Alec? Mm, seems that Randy Reg has got so many bridges to rebuild with folk round here, he could be buying ale for the next month. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> See you, Bets. Hi, hello. Morning. Oh, listen, if you're looking for Audrey, I'm afraid you're out of luck. She was in first thing, but she's had to go into town. She said she won't be back before dinner. Uh, oh, no, it wasn't Audrey. I, wanted, I just wanted to leave this. I'll pick it up later. All oh, right. Any particular time? Uh, about three. It won't be before. OK, love. We'll have it ready for you. Right, see you. Oh, and, um, about last night. What about it? Well, me and Ken, we, we were just having a bit of supper together. There was nothing more to it than that. You don't have to convince me, you know. Sorry? Well, it really is nothing to do with me. What Ken gets up to is none of my business. Not anymore. I just wanted to put the record straight, just the same. Right, see you later. See you, love.
Will the supervisor go to check out the board, please, immediately? Thank you. Hey, you. Where have you been hiding yourself? What do you mean I've been working at stock room? Do you know my feet have hardly touched the ground this morning? You and me both. Do you know, and I thought he were on our side. Who? Curly, is that me jumping through hoops and all? Oh, come on, dear. he's got a job to do, hasn't he? At least you know where you stand with Curly. That's more than can be said for that boss of his. What do you think he's up to? Excuse me. Um, sorry, Bob. Who, Curly? No, Owlsworth. Moving into that flat. Don't you see enough of our ugly mugs in here without moving in there so he can spy on us in his own time? Oh, don't flatter yourself. He's got his beady eyes on someone, all right, yes. But it's not us, that's for sure. Yeah, well, it can't be Rita Fairclough, can it? Cos she marked his card good and proper last time, didn't she? And nobody would be daft enough to move next door just cos they fancied the chances again. No normal person, no, but we're not talking about a normal person, love, are we? We're talking about Rambo Reg Oldsworth. Two beans on toast. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Oh, do you like a murder one? about what Deirdre Barlow thinks I am. Well, she didn't believe you. I, I, I know she didn't. What's the matter what she thinks? I mean, Ken's a free agent, isn't he? I mean, she's hardly lived the life of a nun since this split up. Well, that's not the point, is it? I don't want folks reading something into this that doesn't exist. And by the look on your face, Deirdre Barlow isn't the only one. No, oh, come on. If you say what you and Ken's got going is purely platonic, who am I to argue? When you see him? Well, I don't know, do I? You don't know. No one. That's the way it is. No strings, no commitments, no plans for the future. That's the way we want it, both of us. Do you want to take the weight off your feet? Be all right. Liz! Liz! Oh, hi. Hi, love. You all right? Yeah. Any problems? No, not that we know of. I'm going to have some tests that make him an appointment. Tests? What sort of tests? Just routine. I'm sure they'll be all right. In fact, I know they will. So, listen, can we tell the boys now? Uh, no. Let's just leave it a few days. Just till I've had the tests. We don't want to tempt fate, do we? That's the way you want it? Fine. But listen, if my lads want to know why I'm walking around ten foot in the air, you do the explaining, eh? I'll have to go. I'll see you later. Hey. Don't go lifting any heavy weights like Ali Gilroy now, will you? Bye. Right, that you paid up to the end of the week, then. Oh, he's not still at it, is he? What the hell's he doing up there? Rebuilding the place? It's not the only thing he's not giving up on, either. Eh? Thank you. He's been down twice while you've been out. What the hell for? I mean, the man's been up and down them stairs like a yo-yo all morning. I was to ask you out to lunch. Oh. I told him I thought you had other plans, but he wouldn't take no for an answer. I see. What do you have to do to get through to him? What I should have done when I first found out he'd bought that flat. Here, love, stick that in back for me. Right. Yes? Reg, it's Rita Fairclough. Oh, right, right. You got my message then, did you? Oh, yes, I got your message. And I'm here to make sure you get my message loud and clear. Oh, well, come up. No, no, I can say all I've got to say out here. Well, Lord, I mean, aren't you going to come up and have a look around? I would offer you a drink, but I haven't unpacked properly yet. But... I don't I don't want anything off you. I thought I'd already made that clear. No, but things are different now, aren't they? No, Reg, they are not different. Not as far as I'm concerned. Regardless of what you think, there is nothing between us. There never was anything between us. And there never will be anything between us. And the sooner you get that into your head, the better it'll be for all of us. Did I ever say there was anything between us? Did I? I mean, I don't mind admitting that I still foster hope. Well, that our friendship can blossom. What do I have to do to get through to you? All right, all right, you've made your point. But, I mean, we can still be friends, can't we? After all, we are neighbours now. Yes, we are neighbours. And there's not a lot I can do about that. But as for anything else, forget it. I don't want to know. 
I didn't ask you to come and live round here. I didn't want you to come and live round here. So please, leave me alone. Now, is that clear enough for you? I'll take it dinner's out of the question, then. Well, one thing to be said for getting married. This time next week, I won't be up to my armpits in sweat and chip fat. I'm actually going to be taking some time off. 20 minutes? <laughs> Good stretch to half an hour. I'll leave this one to you. Oh, you can't eat that bit. Hello. Hi. Well, what can we do for you? Oh, no, 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 nothing, thanks. I didn't come to eat. Oh? Um, I just wanted to carry anything on tonight. Tonight? Oh, hi, Gail. Hi, Gail. Uh, that's right, yeah. Um, a colleague of mine got a couple of theatre tickets and he couldn't manage it, so he gave them to me, and I thought, well, uh, rather than go on my own... Oh, gee, I can't remember the last time I went to the theatre. Yeah, it's a pretty obscure plan, I'm afraid. Well, it can't be any more obscure than my plans for the night if I don't come with you. So you'll come? Oh, why not? Oh, great, good. OK, um, I'll be around about seven. Fine. Right, bye, Gail. <laughs> bye. Well? Well, what? Your place or is? No, he just wanted to know if I fancy going to the theatre. Somebody had a couple of tickets he didn't want. And? Ah, it's something different, isn't it? Oh, yeah, is that all right? A couple of tickets nobody wants. Don't think I've heard that one before. Miss Freeman, just the young lady I was looking for. I don't think we have anything to say to each other, do we, Mr Holdsworth? Oh, but we do, Miss Freeman. Excuse me, I've got a bus to catch. Oh, come on now, Miss Freeman. Surely we're not going to let a little misunderstanding about that, well, carnival float spoil our relationship. After all, we are neighbours now, aren't we? No. Well, it wasn't my choosing, and it certainly wasn't Curly's. And as for that little misunderstanding, as you put it, that's not the way I saw it. No, I saw it as a deliberate attempt not to pay me my legitimate fee. Now, will you excuse me? No, no, this is a genuine offer. You see, what I need is professional advice because I want my home to look like a little palace. I wouldn't work for you if my life depended on it. Now, will you get out of my way and leave me alone? Or it won't be professional advice you'll be needing. It'll be professional medical treatment. Oh, well, if you change your mind, you know I live, don't you? Just change. Afternoon, Squire. Oh. Reg, settling in all right? Settling in. I feel like a native already. Oh, good. I'm very glad to hear it. Yeah. Uh, actually, if you've got five minutes, I could show you around. You know, it's uh, taking not a need to be doing it. Well, well so, some other time, eh? I'm in a bit of a hurry now, Reg. Uh, but perhaps we'll see you later on down there. <laughs> Buy your friends a drink, celebrate your newfound domestic bliss. Are you sure you're feeling all right? You've hardly said two words, you know, since you come in. I'm fine, just a bit tired, that's all. I feel ten times better now. I've got a chance to take the weight off my feet. <laughs> you and me both, kid. So, when did this letter come from Victoria? This morning. Alec with tickle pink. I bet he was missing her, isn't he? Oh, I, I well, we both are. Do you know, it's surprising how quickly you get used to having a kitty about the place. Mind you, much as you like having them around, it's good to have a break. I doubt Alec could agree with you there. He's done nothing but talk about her since she went back. Ah, I know. But between you and me, if we hadn't have had a break, she'd have had us both flat on our backs. <laughs> Not that she was demanding her out like that. It's just that it comes as a bit of a jolt after all these years, having to adjust your life to, to cope with a 14-year-old. How folk go on who suddenly find themselves lumbered with a nipper, God only knows. Go. Bye. Good evening, lady. Oh, Mr. Holdsworth. Oh. Do you know what one of the attractions is of living in a place like this? Having a corner shop that's open all hours, ready and willing to serve, eager to cater for those little emergencies that always crop up at the very worst moments. Oh, yes, shops like this are the fabric of the community. After you. 
It's not what you thought when you were driving your better buys bus down here, is it? No, but it's a little over-enthusiasm on the part of my assistant manager, my dear. But, oh, that's water under the bridge now, isn't it? I must say I'm very glad to see the old place ticking over, in spite of Mr Roberts' recent indisposition. Can I get you something, Mr Holdsworth? Because I was thinking about closing. Oh, right, right. Uh, well, actually, it's only uh, a bottle of milk. And I just wanted to tell you, you and that good husband of yours, Colin, Kevin. Oh, right, right. Um, that I am planning to put an appearance at the Rovers later, so if you would care to join me, I shall, of course, be delighted. Me and Kevin? Yes, and uh, I believe you're very good friends with Mr Watts. Curly, yeah, of course we are. Right, so persuade him to come along with you, if you will. Him and that rather attractive young girlfriend of his. I'm sorry, Mr Holdsworth, there's no chance. Not tonight. I'll never get a babysitter, not at such short notice. Oh, oh I see. But I don't think Curly's doing anything tonight, so why don't you go over there and ask him yourself? Yes, yes, I will. Right, well, I'll uh, leave you to get on. I'll bid you good night. Mr Holdsworth, your milk! Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm not in the habit of leaving theatres at the first interval, believe me. <laughs> oh, I mean, what can I say? Well, it wasn't your fault. It wasn't the play. We just weren't in the mood, I suppose. I'm sorry. I seem to have wasted your evening. Wasted it? Well, there was nothing to waste. I mean, what would I have been doing if I hadn't been with you? Well, you certainly wouldn't have been dragged out to see a play that we both found as depressing as that. Oh, well, forget about the play. I mean, if we spend the night arguing about it, I mean, we really will have wasted the evening, won't we? So, what now? Is that your way of asking me if I fancy a drink? I think I owe you that, at least. You don't owe me anything. Come on. <laughs> That'd be nice to have a little happy drink somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Jack. Yeah? What's up with your op hole tonight? She's about as chirpy as a centipede with corns. Well, she's a bit on the quiet side, but who am I to complain? I get enough of the other. Oh, don't let's have any much. When you're ready, Jack. Come in, cool. Yeah, two pints, please, Jack. Come on, son. Where's your boss tonight? I thought he'd have been here, setting him up for his new neighbours. Do you have to remind me? As far as I'm concerned, the longer he stops out of here, the better. That goes for me and all. Oh, you and your big gobber. Oh, good evening, ladies. I didn't know you were in here or I would have uh, come across before now. Still better late than never, eh? <laughs> right, what's it to be, then? Uh, oh, is that the time? Derek could be sending out a search party. Oh, what a pity. Still, if you've got to dash, I won't hold you up. Well, that goes for me and all, Reg. Oh, come on, you don't have to dash off now, do you? I do. I've got to be up for papers in the morning. Well, you've time for one. Afraid not. You fit, love. Oh, whenever you are. See you, Reg. Oh. Yes, good night. Oh. Well, good night. Uh, perhaps some time for... Oh, Mr Watts, Miss Freeman. I'm sure you are not in a hurry to get off, are you? What would you like to drink? Uh, no, we're all right, thank you, Mr Holdsworth. Oh, I can That's see nice. that, I can see that, but what would you like to drink? Uh, no, no, uh, you're right. Eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. You'll be your Goodbye, Mr Holdsworth. Bye, Miss Freeman. You look out on your feet. Yeah, I'm not so sorry to see me better tonight. You get off, we'll come for you. Thanks, but I'll make it up to you. Oh, forget it. Hey, tell your Jim to try and keep his animal instincts under control for a couple of days. Right, well, it looks like it's down to me and you, Jack. Hey. No, I, I mean, uh, I'm sure you'll not turn down the offer of a drink with me, will you? I was pleased to welcome a new neighbour, Reg. Oh. Seen the time? Well, oh, it's all right. We've got a couple of minutes yet. See who's in. Fire, when did he sneak in? So that's uh, a pint for me and uh, whatever you fancy. I'll pint with you. Oh, I'll take that. <laughs> Time, gentlemen, please. Oh, no, no, Alex, I've... I've, I've on. What did you just order? Oh, no, sorry, I've got the CID in. It's gone time already. I'm sorry, Rich. Can I give you a hand with anything? No, no, you're all right. You sure you don't want something to eat? Positive. Hmm. I've had a thoroughly enjoyable evening. <laughs> I must say, I didn't think it was going to work out that way, not of the way it started out. Oh, well, so have I. And who cares how it started out, anyway? <laughs> Thanks, anyway. No, it's me that should be thanking you. I'm not just talking about this evening. No, neither am I. I think you're just what I needed. Somebody to drag me out of the depths I'd sunk to. <laughs> Somebody to make me believe in myself as a person again. We know strings. <laughs> Hang on a minute, you're making me sound like some sort of social worker. Oh, miracle worker, more like. No, I never thought I'd trust another fellow again. It's not been all one-way traffic, believe me. 
I mean, it's not a lot of laughs living alone in a one-bedroom flat, as you know. Hey, you realise we've started a few tongs wagging, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not giving it much thought, and to be honest, I couldn't care less. Neither could I. <laughs> anyway, thank you for being so understanding. Understanding? Yeah, understanding. You know, the way you've been content just to be with me and talk to me and listen to me. You never know what that meant to me. I think you've given me back a bit of me self-respect. <laughs> now, the trouble with Mike was there was only one person that mattered to him in a relationship, himself. He never gave a thought to the consequences of his actions than anybody else. Never. If he wanted something, he just took it. Yes, I do know. Oh, I'm sorry. We agreed not to talk about him. You see what you've done for me? I can talk about him now without feeling anything. No upset, no hatred. Nothing. I'm afraid I can't say the same. If I live to be a hundred, I'll never forgive him for what he's done to me. Well, I can understand that after what he did to Susan. It wasn't only Susan. Sorry? It goes back a lot further than that, believe me. Marrying my daughter wasn't the first time he screwed up my life. He tried to take my wife as well. Deirdre? You mean... Mike and Deirdre? So perhaps now you'll understand why I will be more than happy to see my bald and rotting in hell. Brewed up, do you fancy a cup? No, no thanks. No trouble, love. The kettle's just boiled, you know. I said no. Oh. Hey, come on. Come and sit down. Take the weight off your feet. You look knackered, Pat. I'm all right. Well, you don't look all right to me, love. You're going to have to stop working all these long hours, you know. Can't have you on your feet all the day the way you have been. Not in your condition. Jim, please. Hey. What's wrong? Something happened at work. I'm sorry, Jim. I know how much you want this baby. I do. But I don't think I can go through with it. Hey, hey! Of course you can. You're not too old to have a baby. The doctor said there wouldn't be any problems. That's not what I mean. I don't think I want to go through with it. What? I'm sorry. Please understand. Liz. Liz. Liz, Liz. She's coming here. Your mother. Yeah, half six on the dot, so. Get the best china out. It's not every day you have a royal visit, is it? Right. <laughs> I used to think you didn't approve. What was living over at Brush? Me? Stealing a baby son? <laughs> well, maybe that's why she's coming round to plead with you. Please don't take me son and put him into domestic slavery. I mean, he's young, he's vital, he's a free spirit. Plus, we need his rent money. <laughs> Do you think she is happy about it? I was getting married. Gail, she's delirious. She's been giving me dad GBH of the Luggles ever since we told him. Plus... She thinks accepting me is probably the most sensible thing you've ever done. And that's straight up. For your information, mm -hmm. it was you that accepted me. I proposed to you, remember, on bended knee. Yes, I know, and I was very touched. You with your housemaid's knee, you know. <laughs> Come here. You are happy, aren't you? You're yes. getting married. I am. Mm. Truly. Truly. Ugh, kissing at breakfast. <laughs> what are you doing with that? 
I'm taking it to clean this for a wedding. I tell them I told you you should get a new one. No, I'm not getting a new suit. When would I ever wear it again? For my funeral, probably. Don, don't say things like that. Well, it's true enough, isn't it? Weddings, funerals and christenings, that's what suits are for. You're not like you women, you know. New outfit just to watch Trooping at Colour on telly. I just want to look my best, that's all. Aye, I'm putting Harvey at shed, I know. Oh, well, she'll turn up looking like Lady Mutt, won't she? Yeah, you too. You'll be that busy eyeing each other's outfits, you'll not see the wedding. Well, I'll see the wedding, all right. I'll be watching my little grandchildren being taken away from me, shan't I? Ivy, they'll still be your grandkids. Yeah, but will they think so when they've changed the name? Do you know? I wonder if Gail and Martin has even bothered to ask them how they think. Well, I expect that, right? Yeah, and put a lot of pressure on them as well. Oh, I feel it. What's in a name, eh? Oh, it's easy for you to say that, Dan, isn't it? Brian wasn't your son. If he had been, it'd have been a completely different story. No, it wouldn't, because I'd still see him as my grandkids, no matter what the name was. And so should you. I'll be late for work. Yes. Oh, Mr. Watts! Oh, now what? Oh, Mr. Watts? I won't mention a word. Glad I caught up with you. Oh, yeah? Yes, yes, I wondered <clears> if, uh, as we are now neighbours, if you and your good landlady would care to partake of some refreshment this evening. Shame what? Landlady? You mean Angie? Angie, yes, and your good self. What for? Well, I thought to uh, pass around the olive branch, so to speak. Yeah, I thought it's the pipe of peach you normally pass around, innit? Exactly, that's right, yes. How about half past seven for eight o'clock? Um, I think we're busy. Yes, I'm sorry, we're definitely busy, sorry. Oh? Uh, tomorrow night, then? At all. Tomorrow night, I'm at uh, Martin Stagnite. Stagnite? What, you mean stippergrams and tars and feathers, that sort of thing? Not quite, no. Hey, I've been to some fantastic Stagnites myself. I have. <laughs> Where are you having it, then? It's just a quiet night, you know, at uh, the Rovers. The Rovers? Oh, well, perhaps I'll pop down and offer my congratulations. Or should it be condolences? <laughs> right, well, I'll see you at work. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to mention about our evening tea a tea to Angie. Ding, ding. <laughs> well, I've seen this deal. It's not on the Rovers. I know, but we don't want Reg turning up with a stripping checkout girl, do we? The kids gone? Yep. Are you finished in the bathroom? Yeah, all finished. I want a bath before I go to work. So, what time's your appointment today at the clinic? Half two. And if anybody asks, I'd rather you didn't mention anything. No, I can understand that. It's our business, not anyone else's. Yeah, there's a lot of people around here who'd give you flack if they knew about it. I haven't just decided lightly, you know. It's not a thing I'm happy about. I didn't sleep a wink last night. My mind's racing. Well, how do you think I feel? I know how you feel. You've told me. We've been over and over it till my head hurts. Liz, listen. Look, just wait a wee while till the dust settles. The longer I wait, the more difficult it'll be. Don't you see that? Every day it grows a bit more. I've got to make a decision, Jim. Yeah, well, sounds to me like you already have. I'm going to have a bath. Right, yeah. well, I'll, uh, I'll see you see later you. on then. Yes. OK, bye-bye. Oh, he's just finished talking to Mrs Williams. Now he's coming here. Have you ever thought to join his special room? Oh, don't you think you ought to go and make a cup of tea until he's gone? Oh, Mavis, I'm old enough to look after myself. And anyway, I've told Reg Oldworth where he stands in no uncertain terms. Morning, Mavis. Morning. Morning, Rita. How are we this jocund morning? Jocund? Yes, merry and sprightly. Well, I know what it means. Maybe it's a forever quote impatient strong at me. I didn't think it were apt. It doesn't seem particularly jocund to me. Ah, well, you see, familiarity breeds contempt, Rita. Now, if you were to see it through my eyes, the eyes of a newcomer, ah, oh, this unpretentious cobble street, sleepy little shop, the pub, the residents bound together by invisible bonds of loyalty and companionship. Ah, yeah. Yes, brings out the betcher in me. You can get ointment for that, you know. Now, are you not familiar with our most famous pastoral poet? Are we back to Patience Strong now? No, John Betjeman, ex-poet laureate, summoned by bells. Was he? Hey, poor chap. No, 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 no. That is the title of his most famous autobiographical work. 
I have a first edition of it upstairs, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. and I would love to give you a reading of it one evening over a glass of very fine claret, perhaps. Kettle's boiling. And um, was there something? Oh, yes, yes. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. And will that be all? <sighs> For the moment, Mrs. Wilton, yes. Thank you. Good day. Well, you might have told him, Rita, but do you think he heard? Thank you. What about you, love? I'm fine. Listen, I just knocked off work. Thought I'd give you a lift up the clinic, yeah? I told you not to mention anything. I'm sorry, love. I was just trying to be Look, helped. just shut up about it, please. Alec. Grey wagons arrive, love. Oh, town. Uh, Liz, do you give us a hand down the cellar? Uh, Oi. Yeah. Hold on, Alec. I'm not having my Liz lugging barrels about the place. I'm not asking her to lug barrels. I just want a hand reorganising the cellar. Well, where's your cellarman? It's not Liz's job to go humping crates about, you know. Jim, it's Jack's day off, love. Well, that's buck stupid, that is, isn't it, eh? Having your cellarman off and your deliveries are arriving. Look, not that it's any of your business, but I've just got an extra delivery coming in for Martin oh, Stagnant. Huh? Well, you know what Martin and his crew are like, eh? You know, they're something that goes out of fashion. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. Yeah, but it's not in here. Pardon? Martin Stagnite, it's not in here. He's booked a club in town. So go on, what was the play like then? Boring. We left halfway through. <laughs> oh, then? Have you finished all your mills and boodoo, what? Oh, no, I prefer real life romance, me. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. There's no romance between me and Ken. Are you sure? I'm positive. I do know the difference, you know. Yeah, but what about <laughs> Ken? I mean, he could still be on the rebound. Oh, I don't think so. People have a funny way of hiding things. No, I think he's genuinely accepted it's all over. I mean, he's got his regrets, but well, we all have them, don't we? Yeah, well, he's his own fault. Shouldn't have messed Deirdre about like that. He had a good marriage there, nice old family, just chucked it away. Well, it takes two to tango, you know. Oh? Do you know something I don't? No. I have managed to persuade them to take it all back. They weren't best pleased. They'd come out of the way, especially. Well, you should have checked with Martin first, love. I shouldn't have to, should I? I expect some loyalty from your regulars. It's no to do with me, mate. I didn't arrange it. Oh, they're happy to come in here any other night, aren't they? But one don't special, it's a different matter. Yes, and while we're on the subject, you can tell that husband off of yours and all. He's telling me what I can and can't do with my bar staff. I'm sorry about that, Alec. I do you think you're an invalid. Can't move a few crates. You all right, love? Yeah, fine. Not tell her out. Oh, of course not. It's just Jim fussing. It does go on a bit. For a minute there, I thought you were pregnant. Great. Better than them sandwiches at school, eh? But, man, uh, listen, Nicky, uh, we'll just keep this as our little secret, eh? Because you deserve a treat. I bet you've been a bit pushed out at home, haven't you? What we always fuss about, wedding. Mum's bought me new jacket and trousers, and she bought Sarah Louise a new dress. Oh, very nice. Yeah, but it's still a lot of fuss, isn't it? Listen, uh, what do you think about this wedding, then, love? All right. Did they ask you what you thought about it, uh, your mum and Martin? Yeah. What did you say? Said Rob be playing football. <laughs> what did they say to that? They laughed. Nikki, you know that your mum will change your name when she gets married, don't you? I mean, she yeah. won't be a Tilsley anymore. Yeah, I know. She'll be Mrs. Platt. Yeah, well, she wasn't a Tilsley to start off with. Not like your dad, my, my Brian. He were a Tilsley. Like your granddad, Brian's dad before him. See, um,. All men in family, they keep the family name, Nicky, even when they get married. Your granddad was a Tilsley, your dad was, and you'll still be a Tilsley. Won't I be Nicky Platt? No. No, no, not really, love. No, you'll still be Nicky Tilsley, like your real dad. Hey, up. Hello, Nicky. Hi. I thought you were on a job. Yeah, I was ready. It was cancelled, so I thought I'd come on and put my feet up. What, uh... What's going on here, then? Oh, I just brought Nicky on for a bit of lunch, you know, for a little treat, you know, wedding fuss and everything. I've had a kebab. Ah, oh, smashing. Have you had hope? Yeah, yeah, I've not put it over. Oh. Look, uh, will you give him the lift back when we're finished? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, there's a cup of tea pot. Do you want one? Yeah, it's a... Just uh, talking about football, weren't you, love? 
So, uh, have you been uh, picked for school team then? No, not good enough. Oh, well. With a bit of practice, perhaps, eh? Oh, I tell you what, Nicky. Your dad, the right good footballer. And that sort of thing runs in blood, eh? Oh, hi, love. Sorry, I didn't hear you. What the hell do you think you're playing at? Hey, Sorry? Coming in the Rovers, blabbing about clinics, making out I can't lift things. As if I'm nine months pregnant already. <sighs> Sorry, Liz, I was just trying to help. I thought you might appreciate a lift, that's all. What did I say to you this morning? I said I didn't want anybody to know. And then you walk in and practically make a public announcement. Hang on, Liz. Hang on. I was just trying to help, all right? I didn't want Alec Gilroy exploiting oh, you, that's all. I work for the man! Not as a sellerman, you don't! Look, I'm really sorry if I embarrassed you. I was just trying to be helpful, that's all. Or trying to let the cat out of the bag. Now, why would I do that? It's obvious, isn't it? To put pressure on me, so I won't go through with it. Do you really think I'd do that? I don't know what to think. But I do know you're not happy about it. Well, neither are you! Liz. Can we please just give it some more thought? I've told I you! I know! I know. Look, when all's said and done, it's me who has to do it all. To carry it, have it, Go through that again for nine months. It's my body. Don't you think I should have the right to make my own decision? It's not just your decision, Liz, is it? The child is mine as well. I am the... I am the father. Or I would be. Don't you think that entitles me to some say in this? Because the way I see it, it's my decision as well. OK. So what's your decision? I don't know. <sighs> One minute. Uh, I really want it. Then I start thinking about all the hassles. But if you think for one minute that, that I would try to blackmail you by telling people just to force your I'm hand. Sorry. I know you wouldn't. I don't know what the right thing I, is either. But it must be for the best. I can't go through arguments. I want it over. Someone's got to make a decision. I've got to go. I'm going to be late for me a point. She took Nicky home for dinner. Ah, yeah, a special treat, she said. She didn't mention it. No, she didn't. Oh, spur of the moment thing, eh? Yeah. Hello. It's gone. I love it. Oh, give us a cup of tea, I'm love, I'm gasping. Why? What have you been up to? Trying to find something to wear for this wedding, honestly. You'd think I'd be able to find something decent, wouldn't you? I should have gone to London. So what do your registry office do, man? Well, un te para ti. Gracias. Pardon? A cup of tea for you is Spanish. Oh, you're still going, are you? Yeah, I'm going to tonight. Soon be able to chat a matador, eh, <laughs> Gail? <laughs> yeah. What does your new beau think of that, I wonder? Pardon? Our sexy school teacher, Kenneth Barlow. He's not my new beau, Audrey. He's a friend. You will remember that, won't you, when you're talking to folk? Alma, I am the soul of discretion. I mean, your private life is your own affair. It's not an affair, Audrey. There's not going on. Maybe not you. Look, as far as I'm concerned, Ken feels the same, and he's never made any suggestion to the contrary. I mean, it is possible, you know, for a man and woman to have a platonic relationship. Mm. So they say, but I mean, why would you want to? It seems such a waste. <laughs> I'm going to start putting bromide in your tea.
Hi. Hi. Tea will be about 20 minutes. All oh, right, well, uh, I'll go and have a shower, get rid of some of this dirt. The boys in? I'm just at rugby practice. Steve's gone round to her mates. Right. So, how'd you get on today at the clinic? OK, I had a load of tests done out of their ages. And? They're sending the results to me, Doctor. Yeah, I didn't mean that, love. I meant, uh, I meant the other thing. Did they give you a date? It's called a termination, Jim. You can say it, you know. Yeah, all right, well, so what did they say? Nothing. Oh, you mean they wouldn't consider it? They said nothing because I didn't ask. You didn't ask, but I thought I know, you were... I know. I was going to, but I didn't. The doctor asked me if there was any problem, and it was on the tip of my tongue, but I couldn't say it. I wanted to, but I couldn't. Don't ask me why. Well, listen, does this... I've just said, haven't I? Don't ask me. Not just now. I don't know what I think. I don't know what to do. So please, just leave me alone. Just for now. Yeah, but you... Jim, please! Right. Well, uh... I'll go and have a shower, then. Say anything to you this dinner time. What's about? Well, anything. She said my dad was a right good footballer. <laughs> yes, see, yeah, I'll get it. Can we go out now? Yeah, but don't wander off. Granny Platt's coming. Oh, wake hey, up, Mum. How are you? So you very early. Hello. Uh, <clears throat> surprise, surprise. Hello, love. <laughs> Sorry I'm Barbara. early. I've got to go and collect my bridge partner. Her car's gone a bit wonky. <laughs> A bit like her, actually, the way mm. she plays bridge. <laughs> anyway, I've just brought you this. Oh. oh! What is it? Well, I usually find opening the box helps, don't you, Mother? Oh, shut up, you uh, uh. Oh. oh! I thought you could oh. wear it under your wedding outfit. <laughs> <laughs> really? Something blue? Yes, definitely. Looks like some kind of blue movie to me, Martin. Mother. Martin! You'll have to take him in hand, Gail. I never could. Well, it's lovely. Thank you, Barbara. You deserve it, love. Especially for taking him on. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Mother. Oh, come on, I've got to get. Oh, I've got to get. If she starts panicking, she'll be calling wrong bids all night. I'll see myself. Yes, sir. Um, oh, <laughs> we've got a surprise for the both of you. Mm. But you'll have to wait till the day. Sir. Yes, sir, Anna. <sighs> now, can you see why I'm so hyperactive? Yeah, well, I wish more grannies were like her. Mm. God knows what Ivy was up to this dinner time. All ready for the big day, Ivy? Eh? Oh, ready as I'll ever be. Oh, I do love weddings. Oh, wedding spotters. Stand in there with your little notebooks, taking bets on how long they'll last. Scoff you may, but you might have one of your own to look forward to someday. Eh? Well, Victoria's a very attractive young lady. Good grief, I'd never even thought of that. And with the money she's got coming, I'll probably spend half my time fending off the gold diggers with a yard brush. Have they sorted the will out, then? No, not yet. Well, there's no problem, is there? I mean, she's near his kin. Well, there can be all sorts of complications. Some families wrangle over wills for years. Why is that, then? I mean, there can be genuine misunderstandings, and then again, some people take a perverse delight in making things difficult for those left behind. Thanks a bunch, Emily. You've really made my night. Mm -hmm. Evening, Ray. Ah, Norman, just the man. Pint for your best landlord, please. All oh, right. And Norman? Uh, no, thanks. I'm just off. Oh. Um, did you discuss my invitation with Weatherfield's Mary Quant? Um, I did, and she said she'd be delighted to bury the hatchet. Oh, good. She even specified where she'd like to bury it. I'm sorry, Reg, I did try. <clears throat> Buenas noches. Oh, hi. Hi. I see the Spanish is coming along. Oh, well, I always knew I've got a bit of Latin blood in me somewhere way back. Oh, hot blood are they? Well, I've had my moments. <laughs> Anyway, I've, um, I've just put my name down for our course's Gourmet Weekend. 
gourmet food in Wine Weekend at the Manor Grange. Hey, that sounds posh. <laughs> Probably be a bit of a fish out of water, really. Many couples that are going. Mm. You know. Oh, by the way, I won't be able to stay for a drink afterwards. I've got a stack of marking to oh, do. Oh, that's all right, because I've got a stack of buying in. <laughs> in fact, I shouldn't be here at all, really. And then I thought, no, nope, I deserve the break. No, so did I. I looked at that pile of washing and I said, you would just have to stay there crumpled and unloved a bit longer, because it's my turn. <laughs> Well, not to stay crumpled on love, you know, but, uh, oh, whew, oh no, come on, you get yourself a deep water. Um, don't take this the wrong way, but, uh, would you like to come for the weekend? As my guest, all above board, of course. <sighs> of course not, silly of me. Why? Well, people will talk, won't they? Well, half of Weatherfield's talking already. Why not give them something to talk about? We've got a pen. Yeah. Alma? <laughs> Set you in. Oh, great. Hi, love. Hiya. What's all this? It's uh, a wedding present I got for Gail and Martin. I picked it up it down mm. today. Do you like it? Yeah, smashing, yeah. Yeah, cost a bomb, but still, uh, they last for years, don't they? Yeah, well, I'm sure they were very touched, love. That. That's a nice thought. Yeah. Uh, your dinner's in the oven, love. Right, it's nearly great. ready. What's this? Eh? Oh, it's, it's me will. <laughs> yes, uh, I put it there to remind me I've got to go and see a solicitor tomorrow. Solicitor? Oh, what about? Well, do you know, I've, uh, I've just realised, darling, that, uh, I've never changed my will since our brain died. So I've decided that uh, I'll leave everything to our Nicky, most of what I've got. Like, well, like my half of this house and that. Right. Well, as long as you don't throw me out, if you go first, eh? Mind you, there will be uh, conditions attached to it before he inherits. Uh, first of all, uh, he'll have to change his name back to Tilsley. Oh, do you think it really is cheaper than stopping here? What? Going to Spain for winter. You know, like these old age pensioners do. That's at uh, 640, Alex. Oh, well, I mean, you yeah. read about it in papers, don't you? I've never met her in them. Anyway, what's brought this up? Well, look. You see that? October. Next one that comes in, November. And then that's it. We've got to dig in for winter. Oh, Lord, can I get through another winter? Rita, it's only September. It's going to be cold, dark, wet, miserable. We won't see the sun. We'll forget what shape it is. Then again, there's chill blind. Oh, you're oh. bad as each other. <laughs> no, I quite like it when you have to start filling your hot water bottle again. Uh, okay. I'm no, I mean, I like the summer, but what do we miss my hot water bottle? It's going to be cold, dark, wet, miserable, mm. and next door to Reg Holdsworth. Well, that's it. I'm going to Spain if I have to swim. <laughs> Morning, ladies both. Oh, Morning. Morning. Do I find you both well? You do. And might I be seeing you at the Rovers tonight? You might, but we're already spoken for, aren't we, Mavis? Mm. Hen party, Mr Holdsworth. Oh, hen party. Well, some of the eggs seem to have hatched, don't they? Look, all I want to do is to make sure that someone doesn't do something stupid like order a stripper grab. Well, who would? Kevin, you can't get to Martin's age without knowing at least one total <laughs> prat. Good yeah. morning, Mr. Watts. See what I mean? I'll see you tonight, OK? Yeah, I'll book the cab. Yeah, make sure you do, because we're all going to be legless. Yeah, I'll yeah. see you. Uh, morning, Mr. Holdsworth. Morning. You know, now we're neighbours, we'll have to work out some kind of transport roster. I'll see. So you're you see, you seem to be in pole position this morning. Tomorrow, I will be your chauffeur. Make sense? Hey, I'm on the subject of back and early orgies. Reggie, Reggie. What? Belt up. Sorry? Oh, hi. Oh, you're not off out, are you? Hi. Well, uh, I've got morning off. Yeah, I know you have. Well, I was hoping you'd be able to drop me off in town. I thought you had things to do this morning, like going to solicitor. Oh, I see. Is that why you're being funny? Me? I'm being funny. Well, you've not said nothing. No, I don't intend to, have I? Well, that's it. Look, Patrick. I don't want to discuss it. If you've made your mind up, all right, you've made your mind up. Right, well, I have. Well, there's no need for me to sell, then, is there? Don't bother about me for dinner. What about tonight, then? Will you want any tea? I suppose so. Not particular. Friday? No, I can't. Not Friday night. What about Saturday, then? Uh, no, I won't be round Saturday. 
Have you got a blank page anywhere in your diary? Well, not really. Not uh, this weekend. You aren't, Emma. Well, you're the one who used to tell me not to know you sitting around at home. So, what are you doing on Saturday? Um, I'm uh, going out with something to eat with Kim. Oh, <laughs> are you? Uh, yes. Uh, oh, well, it is blossoming, isn't it? Blossoming? Nothing is blossoming, Audrey. Mm, well, so why is it Sunday? Well, I'm just busy. Well, I beg your pardon, then. It was me thinking you needed taking out of yourself. Well, I'm taking Spanish, aren't I? And it leads to this and that. I mean, you should have come, like you said. Oh, next year. Mm -hmm. I'm off. See you, love. Bye. Bye. Now, I wonder why you didn't tell her what you were doing this weekend. Liar, you know perfectly well. Anyway, I did tell her. I told her I was going to have something to eat with Ken. You didn't tell her it was going to last from Friday night to Sunday morning. Not, and if you do, I'll kill you. Any road. I know I said I'd go. Cold feet? Well, I mean, it's all platonic, which I like, and he seems to, but on a weekend. I mean, what if he comes tapping? You'll think of something. And I blame you, Emily. What did I do? Well, it was your idea, charity tea dances. Mm, yes, that's when he first dancing. started. Dancing. Do you know it should be banned altogether? You like dancing. I did. Oh, honestly, Emily, he's next door. What am I going to do? Make it perfectly clear to him that next door is where he stays. I thought I had made it clear. Mm. Hello. Hello. You don't want to be hostile, though, do you? Not with a next-door neighbour. Oh, you've not met our next door at Grasmere Drive, struck up cow. Six months before she spoke to us, and then she just sticks her head up and says, I would very much appreciate it if you didn't throw your rubbish over our fence. <laughs> I told her. And where do you throw your rubbish now? <laughs> Emily, you're as bad as she is. Hi. Hi. Just seen Bet. I said you came home early from work. Yeah, I did. Feeling bad? Bit off, that's all. I'm OK. You sure? Yeah. Look at me. Honestly. You don't take time off work for no reason, love. I know you. So, come on. Put that down. Come with me. Sit yourself down. Put your feet up. And I'll put the kettle on. Ah. I think I quite like this. No, yeah, well, don't try it too often. No. Well, it's not been too often, has it? When all's said and done, it's only the second time. And the last. I know it's been a bit of a shock to you this time, Liz. <laughs> Mind you, not half as big a shock as it was the first time, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You were horrified. I was not horrified. You were. I was. You know, why it came as such as a surprise, I can't think. Ah, cos we were too young, too stupid. You know, I don't think I'll ever forget that bus station. Do you remember? I'm not likely to forget. Aye. You there with your wee bit of news and me, God, I was... Dumbstruck. I was. I was. Would we have got married anyway, do you think? What, you mean, would I have married you apart from doing the decent thing? The decent thing? Of course I would. Oh, so you say it. Well, anyway, there's no point in talking about this, love. I married you and I've never regretted it. And if you have, don't go telling me now. I'll make you some tea. Ugh. Hiya. You know, you asked for a day off work to go to a pal's wedding. Anyone would think it was... Think what? He says a pal's wedding. I said, yes, that's right. He said last time it was a granny funeral, wasn't it? Mind you. I said last time. It wasn't the last time. This is the first time I've asked for a day off work. He said, oh, you're just starting. You know, dead sarcastic. Oh, I'll take the notice of him. Got Angie coming round to babysit. Oh, don't mind, no. Most lads sit there half the day, you know, just laughing and joking. I do most of work, yet I get accused of skiving. <laughs> do you know, you're getting to be a right moaner. Yeah. I'm glad I'm going to a different party tonight. What do you mean, Don? You can't be bothered. You've got to have some tea inside. I've you. told you I'm not bothered. I'm ready for off. Martin is getting wet, you know. You don't even try and see my side of it, do you? Oh, I think you filled me in. No, you've not asked me nothing about what I've done. No, I haven't. But 
Fair enough. It's about time I did. What have you done? You don't really want to know. Oh, you're wrong there, love. I do. Well, I've made me well. <laughs> yeah, I knew that's what you were doing, and... Well, the solicitor says that there's nothing against it. Nothing against it? Well, leaving your estate to somebody with a condition attached. What condition? What? You know what condition, what I said. He can have the lot as long as he keeps his right name. Uh, what about Sarah Louise? Uh, don't she come into it at all? Well, she'll be changing her name at any role, won't she? But he'll be keeping it on, done. She'll get bits of jewellery. Oh, see, she'll get the tiara, will she? Look, I know I've not got a lot, but what I have got... Look, what exactly have you got? Why is this estate that you're going to leave Master Tilsley? What have you got to leave? Well, I've got this house. Well, I'm glad you said it. All right, you said it. This house. That's all you've got to leave. Well, so it is. Just supposing you go under a bus before I do, eh? Eh? Don, no. Oh, Don, love, no. This house is yours as long as... as lo well, it'll be ours for, for as long as you live anyway. Oh, grace and favour. Thank you very much. Who do I pay the rent to, eh? Prince Nicholas oh, or what? Don't be so ridiculous. Well, she leaves me asking home to somebody else, and when I say up, she says I'm being ridiculous. Well, I could end up right ridiculous, cos I could have plenty to say. It is my house. Is it all uh, wrote down, this is it? It's all signed and seen and duly watched, is it? All I've done is I've, I've made me will. That's, that's all I've done. I've made me will. Right. And you've made yourself very plain and all. Now, you'll have to pick your way through the debris, maybe. So if you step on something in its greens, it's probably the bait in me, so I won't <laughs> step on it again, right? Here, Hello, sit yourself down. Hello, Mavis. Oh. Good, you're not nearly ready. No, I've just been getting the monster off. <laughs> But he's usually very good once a oh, Honest, honest, no trouble at all, are you kids, eh? Are you? <laughs> Can I play Death Wish? Oh, it's stupid, that. Mm. Not as stupid as you. No, hey, come on yeah, now, Yeah, 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 all right, you've both got to behave for your Auntie Mavis, both of you. Do you think I should wear a tie, then, or what? It's up to you. Come on, Nicky, clear this up. Mm, I don't know, it's a very special occasion, don't you think, eh? Stag do? Well, uh, I don't think you'll be having too many of them, Stag do. <laughs> I don't know what you think, girls, a tie. It is about tying the knot. Uh, yeah, yeah, brilliant, Mavis. No, you're right. It's like a symbolic noose, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> yeah, well, you better wear these and all then. What's that? Here. <laughs> Very stylish. And don't, don't do anything stupid. Oh. And don't let anybody else do anything stupid either. Uh, you can't go laying the law down, you know, on my stag night now, can you? Oh, yes, I can. And you can tell that lot and all that if they tie you to the railings or send you home covered in anything unmentionable, I'll kill a lot of them. Oh, you'll kill a lot of I'll them, will you? Yes, I'll mention that. I will, yes. <laughs> now, don't you do anything <laughs> stupid, all right? Mm. Mm? At least until tomorrow. I'll see you. See you. See you, kids. Bye. Good luck, Mavis. Bye. 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 Suave, Desmond. Suave is the word that springs to the lips. Well, I was hoping a painter do the same trick. No danger. Oh, you lumber it up, then I'll uh, join you. Oh, no, another one. Where is it you're going? Tic Tac Club. Oh, you're going mob handed then? Well, we've got Kevin with us. Well, you do. Right. Yes, I I'm sorry the Rovers wasn't good enough for you for this stag do. Oh, you wouldn't want that kind of behaviour in here, Alec. The girls are coming in here. They can't come in here. Has anybody ever told you you've got a look of Harrison Ford? No. Harrison Ford? Mm. You can just get it in a certain light. Well, I hope they've got those kind of lights at the Tic Tac Club. Must be the glasses, mate. <laughs> right, Cheers. Then. What time's the tack to you? Plenty of time for a pint, Kevin. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Where's Don? He's not with you. No, knocking his door, give him a shout. I just have done. I haven't said he's already set off. Well, he knows where it is if he's coming. Oh, fair enough. Hey, Ken, you monopolising my friends. <laughs> well, I don't think it amounts to a monopoly. I can't afford it very much. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Tightfisted. Have you got any children? No. Why not? Well, because God didn't send me any. Martin's my dad now. Oh, well, that's lucky, isn't it? Martin is my mum, baby. Not babies, only one baby, stupid. W would you like me to read your story? Right. Have you got a favourite one? I like my body book. Oh, which is that? This one. Oh, right. Now, I like the intestines part best. Oh, are you sure you wouldn't like me to read you a, a, a story? I always used to like the one about the princess and the pea. Oh, yuck. Yeah. 
Good night, Alec. I know what you mean. I mean, good night, Alec. That's all. Oh, hi. Well, I suppose you're going to be oh, with yes, the. Yeah, right. Well, then, uh, I'll, I'll leave you to it. Bye. 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 Potter, which is where it all starts. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, did you ever wonder when you were a kid what your married name were going to be? I don't know. It's a good yes. form, but yes. look, oh, I never did that. <laughs> I hoped it'd be something really interesting that didn't sound daft with Sally. My favourite name that I loved, I thought it were great, Sally Granger. <laughs> Wish that made me think about it. The more I say it, the worse it sounds. <laughs> Gail, <laughs> oh, no, it's off. You can tell everybody it's off. <laughs> 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 Found you. Set the bars. Hey, oh, oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. Nice to see you could make it. Yeah, you know, I missed this. Yeah. Yeah. Where was your call? <laughs> well, I just said. I just had to clear my head. It's not oh, clear enough to get around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shame again, again. Yes, yeah. 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 Nicky's handcuffs. Nicky's handcuffs. What sort of kinky things have you been getting up to? I'll tell you what, we'll have to rethink the wedding present. Give him here, give him here. No, 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 no. Right, four pints of lager, Don't I know you? I know you, you live in Wally Rain. Eh? I'm right, am I? Them houses set back just before you get to the shop, right in front of that big pub. Where do I know you from? It's not in here. Ah, well, if I was to come through that door and shout, Cab for Mr. So and so. Of course. Hey, I didn't recognise you in that time. Well, no, the old mother wouldn't. Oh, they'd be well away by throwing out time. It's a well away by throwing up time. It's a stag do. Oh, so is this here. That's one thing, but. Practically these days. I'm looking after them. Old oh, man me, eh? Go on. There you go, Derek. Oh, thank you. I spoke to your friend Salad. I did. I said, uh, you'll take my friend out. I said, so I want you to look after her and show her a good time. I hope you did not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should have done. No, but you know what I did say? He said, well, uh, it won't happen very often because I can't be spending that sort of money. No, I'm not kidding, honestly, I did. I thought, hello, touch of Alfred here. I was a bit surprised, aren't you? Well, you'd be even more surprised if I told you we were going Dutch. You know. Well, they cost a lot, those hotels. You ought to know. Hotels? Yeah, we're going away for the weekend. Not <laughs> that sort of weekend. There'd be a lot of people there to do with food and drink. You'd have found out anyway, so now you know. There you are, ladies. <laughs> Look, it is not like that, and I don't want you stirring the pot. <laughs> Twelve fifty, please. What, what I was saying, what, what I was saying before, your stag. Once upon a time, your stag night, right, would have been all nudge, nudge, wink, wink, you know. Uh, it would. It'd all be about like. You used to live there, isn't it? Big night and all. Yeah, well, at least stuff. I've been spared that, thank God. <laughs> well, we've had a skin full, we'll sort you out, don't worry. Hey, yeah, 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 now, before you start, don't bother, all right? Hey, don't come bother. On, come, on, come on, lads, this is not just another night on the bevy. This lad is getting wed tomorrow. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So, uh, well, let's have another drink. Oh, motion carry, overwhelming. Let's get legless. Oh, no, I am, uh... No, no, I don't mean that. I mean, I'm getting married tomorrow. No, panicking already, panicking. No, 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 it's not that. It's just that, well, cos you live with her and you look after the kids and you've been doing all that, right? Yeah? So why uh, you say we'll get married and you don't think it's necessarily that earth-shattering, do you? Am I making any sense here? <laughs> oh, no, it's just that, like... <sighs> I think I need another drink. <laughs> 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 you see, you see, you see no, matrimony is naturally uh, terrifying. But I mean, don't worry about it. I mean, um, it might not last. Well, I shouldn't have said that. Shouldn't <laughs> hey, hey, Alan. Hey, uh, drinks all right. 
Hey, uh, I hope you don't mind. I just told a bloke over there you're my husband. <laughs> Have you, though? Why? Would you get in a bit? Uh, you don't mind. I am flattered. I knew you would. <laughs> you don't convince anyone with that, Don. You're paying her too much attention, mate. Yeah. Well, there was a time when I might have done. Not before the operation, that. <laughs> Whatever brings you here, Derek? Uh, I got a bit worried about you, Mavis. Worried about me? Well, they can be a bit of a handful, I suppose. Uh, where are they? Oh, they're in bed hours since. I was just watching television and, and knitting. Oh. You seem to have managed all right, then. Well, of course I've managed. No, I'm sorry, it's, it's just that... I knew you were a bit apprehensive about looking after children. That, that's why I came round. Oh, nonsense. Not nonsense to me. They scare me stiff. <laughs> no, it, I just got a bit fed up. Lonely, really, with you not being there. The pub was full of women, of course. And, uh, it's funny, really. I, I can't explain it. You big baby, Derek Wilton. <laughs> well, at least I admit it. Well, you didn't have much longer to hold on. No, but I sat there on my own and I suddenly had this awful vision of what it would be like if you died on me. I did. You can't go like this every time I go out for the evening. Oh, I know. You go out with Rita sometimes. I, I've never felt it before. I don't understand it. They'll be coming to take you away. <laughs> <laughs> You can't spend the night before your wedding with a bride. It's Ooh. extremely bad form, oh, no, 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 I've got to. I've got to. No, you're coming home with me. No. Hey. Does Gail know about no, it? No, you'll have to tell her. Yeah, well, some will. <laughs> um, he's going to your house with you, is that right? Yeah, best thing, yeah. It doesn't look too well, you know. No, 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 hey, no, I'm all right. As long as my feet aren't that far from the ground, I'm OK. <laughs> on my head, on my head. Hey. Go on, look after him. Come on, go and tell Gil. Yeah, yeah, see you later. Remember. Yeah, see you later. No, no, he stretched his life as it is. You go. Hi, hey, hey, yes. He's a grand lad. You ought to see him like that too often. It was nice of you, by the way. You didn't mind? Uh, no, I can't actually believe you, lad, but it's all right, maybe, yeah. Some of them just need it, you know. Uh, well, I'm just going to call a cab, but can I give you a lift somewhere? I yeah, wouldn't mind. There's some funny people about. Yes, you don't have to tell a cabbie that, eh? Just hang on. You sure you don't mind? Look, I've got no to rush home for. Oh, well, kiddo, I've got to be going home. I'll wring his neck when he comes in. Oh, you can't do that, not on your wedding day. Oh, can't I? If he doesn't come in soon, there'll be no wedding. Well, here we are, mate. I'm afraid that's all we've got in the house. Still, it's enough to wish you good luck with and brush your teeth. Oh, no. Hey, you, you can't sleep here. Martin, you can't sleep here. Oh, no. <sighs> Do you never come to bed, love? Yeah. Why did we never think about it? Well, we did. <sighs> Two seemed enough at the time. A girl would have been nice. <sighs> Even money. I regret it, though. What's that? That we never wanted one. That we never said, let's. Well, we did love 17 years ago. <laughs> Only we ended up with twice as many as we bargained for. Never mind. Yeah, well, this is going to be the last time. I know it is. You said so yourself earlier. Yeah, I didn't realise you were going to take it down to use it as evidence. I just wish we were sitting here saying, let's. Well, we are. No. It's already happened. Does that matter? Yes. Yes. Wait a minute. Are we having it or aren't we? Have we decided or not? Oh, decide. Decide. You decide 
If you're going to buy a new three-piece suite, you decide if you're going on holiday, whether you can pay a mortgage. I know, I know. Dear, I wish to God it had been something more than deciding. Something... I suppose we'll never... Oh, it wouldn't make a difference, I know, but... But wouldn't it have made a difference? Don't worry about it. Just leave it out, please, this morning. It's not Gail, it's me. Oh, oh I'm dead. I want to die. Come on, get this down yet. Oh, will you take that fizzy stuff out of my face now, please? Yeah. Des! Martin, <sighs> you can't die. Tomorrow, feel free. But today is the happiest day of your life. Today, you're getting married. You've forgotten that little detail. Calm down. What's the matter? Martin's not been home all night. Oh, is that all? I thought when you rang someone was at death's door at least. What do you mean, is that all? We're supposed to be getting married today. All the persuading and cajoling he's done so that I'll marry him and now it's our wedding day and where is he? Well, he's lying on someone's floor, isn't he? Feeling like death warmed up. That's men, love. I mean, they always do it, don't they? Get legless the night before they get words. Not when they're getting married to me, they don't. Anyway, he could have phoned. <coughs> well, I doubt that. I mean, he'd be incapable. And all his mates? They're incapable too, are they? All too far gone to put 10p in a slot and let me know what's happening. I don't know what you're getting so worked up about. I mean, that's men for you, love. That's, that's the nature of the beast. You just have to put up with well, it. I don't have to put up with it. I don't have to marry him, for one thing. You are? You heard me. I keep asking myself, what am I doing marrying a man who goes missing the night before his wedding because he's too busy making a drunken fool of himself? And when I ask myself that question, the answer I get is because everybody expects me to. And that's the only reason. Oh, come on, love. I mean it. I just might call the whole thing off. <laughs> You two know such thing. Listen, I've bought myself a new hat for this wedding and nobody, not even you, madam, is going to stop me wearing it. <laughs> Late enough when you got in last night, wasn't it? Well, this morning, I should say, be right. Middle of the night when you crawled in here. I wouldn't mind if you'd been out working, but no, you'd been out boozing. That? Is what you do at stack parties. Fella your age. And them lads you were with. Because that's all they are, Don. Lads. You are old enough to be their father. I am not a geriatric yet, Ivy. Even if you'd like me to act like one. And what's that supposed to mean? It means that I'm sick to death of your moaning. So how do you feel this morning? Like a million dollars. It's a serious question, Liz. All right. I'll give you a serious answer. If you really want to know, I feel trapped. Trapped, eh? You feel trapped? Well, excuse me, maybe I'm thick. You see, over the last few years, as far as I understood, you women were always telling us men that you don't have to be trapped. You've got a choice. And if men don't like it, tough. But it's still a trap, though, Jim. All right, you can choose. You can either stop in the trap life's put you in, or you can get out, but only by getting into a different trap. Oh, well, listen, I'm sorry, Liz, but you see, us men don't understand that. You know, we're of the privileged species. Well, excuse me, darling. I'm off to me trap now. It's called earning a living, but I don't have to do it if I don't want to. I can choose to starve. Nine o'clock, still not a sign. Well, why don't you ring round to <coughs> see got him? I wouldn't lower myself. When I ring round <laughs> You will not. It'll be the day when I go chasing after Martin Platt. <laughs> Martin's here. <laughs> All right, Jen, I 
Yeah, don't start around. Just leave this to me. Aye, aye, Nicky. Yeah. You're all right. Yeah. Ah. Audrey. Gail? Here we are. One bridegroom, slightly uh, shop soiled, but delivered as per order. Yes, well, you can take the bridegroom and you can <laughs> dump him on the council tip. Uh, something wrong, love? Where on earth have you been, Martin? I've been at Desi's. Well, why didn't you let her know? I mean, come <laughs> on. It's one thing getting legless on your stag night. It's another doing a total vanishing trip. Hey, but we rang. Yes, Des rang no. last night. Hey, I didn't ring. Someone was going to. John Brennan, I think, was going to. Nobody rang. Oh, well, I can see why she's a bit upset then. Oh, well done, highly sensitive of you. Honestly, she's been out of her mind wondering what's happened to you. I mean, worry more than anything else. Now she's blazing. Look, it's my fault. I'll tell her, right? <laughs> Des, don't you think you've done enough? I'll explain to her. All right. Look, Gail. Gail, what are you doing? Gail, will you just hang on a minute, no, please? I would. Well, I've got to straighten it out, I'm well, not. Just leave her to me, please. Mum's mad at you, Martin. Yeah, I think he's noticed that, son. Look, you can see how she is. Now, if you go after her, you'll make things worse. Things will be said that can't be unsaid. Just get your clothes. Go back to Desi's place. But are we getting married, and are we not getting married? Well, I will do my best to get her there, and I've got more chance than you have. Des, please, get him home. Get him ready. Get him to the registry office. I'll do the come best on. I can. I wouldn't yeah. upset her on purpose. I know, she knows come that. on, then. I'm coming home. Gail, look, look, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Gail, I love you. Yes, you know you that. Get it yeah, come you, on, mate. Please. Come on. I don't believe it. Go on. I'll see you later. I hope. Bathroom's yours. Right, I'll be up in a minute. I have worn this frock a couple of times before. I wore it when she married our Brian. You should have treated yourself. Oh, I'd not waste my money on a frock for this, do. In fact, I don't even know why I'm going. Well, if that's the way you feel, don't flame and go, then. Well, there's no need to jump down my throat. Look, Ivy. I don't care what your opinion of this wedding is, but there's two folk getting married and they don't want long faces and moaning. Now, if you're going to be a misery, do them a favour, do us all a favour and stop away. I'll gladly go on my own. You know, I quite enjoyed babysitting for Gail. So you keep saying, Mavis. Well, is there anything wrong in having enjoyed it? Well, not as such, no, but you keep telling people they take advantage. There's a few round here with young babies and they'll all keep pestering you. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that, actually. Oh, yes. And while you're sitting in other people's houses minding their babies, where does that leave me? Oh, Derek, you're perfectly capable of looking after yourself. Anyway, you needn't stay at home. You could come with me. We could babysit together. Oh, don't be silly, babies. That's what courting couples do. Teenagers. Oh, Sal, you look lovely. Uh -huh. All set for the wedding? Well, I won't be, but it's Rosa. She's all fractious today. It's her teeth. And if I take her along to register office, she's bound to start yelling, and she's going to ruin it for Gail and Martin. So I was wondering, well, if somebody could look after her for an hour or two. Well, I would, but I'm working. Oh, Zach. No, ma'am. Uh, maybe it has to get back to the cabin in, in about five minutes. Uh, otherwise, she would have done it. Well, I suppose the wedding's out, then, as far as I'm concerned. I can do that, girl. You've got to get yourself ready. I keep telling you, no. I'm better employed looking after my baby. And Martin's baby, you know. Oh, Gail! Oh, oh, am I glad to see you. Why, what's up? Would you go and talk to Sense into this one, please? Martin got legless last night and never came home. There was a mix-up, you see, and nobody phoned Gail to tell her. Now she says the marriage is off. It is. Oh, no, it's not, because I've lashed out on a new hat for your wedding. That's what my mother said. Oh, well, you see, great minds think alike. Go on, get yourself ready. So, just because you two want to swank about in your new hats, mm. I've got to say I do to a drunken layabout. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got time for a swift one in the Rovers, then? Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, no, we have not. We're late as it is. You don't want the bride getting there before you, Martin. The bride won't be there at all. I've told you. She will. Of course she will. Good luck, Martin. All the best, Martin. Yeah, hey, but listen, the do's going on whatever. <laughs> marriage or no marriage. Get in the car. What's he going on about? Search me. Nerves, I dare say. Ah. I see Sally found a baby minder. Yeah, she must have. There he is, your old man. Oh, God. Beck, can you spare me a minute? Ah, of course I can. Who's a bonny wee girl, eh? You trust your Uncle Jim now. He'll never known to let a wee girl down yet. Look. <coughs> hey, look, here's your Auntie Liz. Look, look. 
Hey? Jim, what's he playing at? Not playing at anything. <coughs> Ruth. Just minding Rosie. Hey? <coughs> Baby. Yeah. Well, I've never volunteered for anything else either, so I thought I'd better start somewhere. Eh? Mm. Anyway, I don't believe all these wives' tales about minding babies being tricky. It's just a tale sped round by the mother of you, isn't it? Yes, yeah. trying to score a little point, Sally. I take it this is for my benefit. No, it's for Rosie's benefit, and maybe mine. She is a lovely yes, baby. Yes. Just give her here. Let me see That's your Auntie Liz, problem. look. No. Oh, What's that. the problem? She's cutting it fine. Pride's privilege, I know, but all the same. Yes, Dad. Just go inside, will you? I'll tell you what. I'll go in and have a word with the register fella. Get him to hold his horses. They can turn funny, you know, make you go to the back of the queue. Oh. It's all you know, Kev. She's not turning up. All right. Who's this, then? Already. Let's get a move on. Go on, let's immediately you go. I know not of any lawful impediment. I know not of any lawful impediment. Why I, Gail, may not be joined in matrimony to Martin. Why I, Gail, may not be joined in matrimony to Martin. Martin, will you take the ring that you're giving to Gail? Yeah. And please repeat after me, I give you this ring as a token of our marriage here today. What's that? I give you this ring it's Martin's as a token mom. of our hmm. marriage here today. Repeat after me, I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Martin, do take thee, Gail. To witness that I, Martin, do take thee, Gail. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. Now, Gail, will you take the ring that you're giving to Martin? And repeat after me, I give you this ring as a token of our marriage here today. I give you this ring as a token of our marriage here today. Now. Please repeat after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Gail, do take thee, Martin. To witness that I, Gail, do take thee, Martin. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. Martin and Gail, having consented to be joined in matrimony, it is my pleasure to pronounce you husband and wife. Miss, Mrs. Wilton. Oh, everything, Mr. Holdsworth. As you can see, I'm on my own. Rita's gone to Gail's wedding, and Jason and Clint both are delivery boys. They haven't turned up, and of course, I can't leave the shop. And I don't know how the evening papers are going to get delivered. Mrs. Wilton, help is at hand. I am your neighbour, and that is what neighbours are for. Your every wish is my command, Mrs. Wilton. Point me to the breach, and I shall be in there before you can draw your breath. Oh, Mr. Holdsworth, do you mean it? Absolutely. Holdsworth is a man of his word, and his word, Mrs. Wilton, he holds worth more than life itself. <laughs> <laughs> Strange thing, isn't it, surnames? I know that my uh, ancestors yeah, on a uh, white Mr. horse. Mr. Holdsworth, if you could just deliver these evening papers. Now, it's a very simple round. It's Maudsley Street, Rosamond Street, Weaver's Row. Uh, no, I'm afraid that I cannot do. You see, there are some things a better by manager cannot be seen doing, and delivering evening newspapers is one of them, I'm sure you understand. But you said you'd help. You stood there and you promised. Yes, yes, Mrs. Wilton. You will deliver the newspapers, and I will stand here and hold the fort. There we are. You, you mean you'll mind the shop for me? Yes, yes, yes. Because when a man has managed a high-class supermarket and received glittering prizes for it, he can definitely run a corner shop for half an hour or two. Good evening. Au revoir, Mrs. Wilson. <laughs> Listen, why a register office wedding, anyway? I mean, why has she turned her back on church? She's at the wedding that she wants. It was not a proper wedding, and you know it. 
And another thing I'd like to know as well, what's she done with the wedding ring that our Graham gave her? I wonder what she's done with that. For God's sake, Ivy, let the girl be. What's the matter with you today? You've been proper down to. Me? Well, that's the pot calling the kettle black, that is. Right, a pint for me, a pint for Des. Are you having one, Doug? Yeah, please. And then one ready. for uh, Kevin, one for Martin, right. one for his dad. When you're ready, Alec, please. Yes, yes, and I'll stand on my head and sing Mammy if you like. I've only one pair of hands, you know. Thank you. Now then, Martin, you got your speech sorted out or what? Well, oh, and he doesn't have to make a speech if he doesn't want to. Well, I do as it happens. That's good. Why? What are you going to say? Well, you'll have to wait and see, won't you, Mrs. Platt? <laughs> I'm going to make a speech, Dad. Definitely, son. It's my wedding day. If you can't make a speech on your wedding day, what can you do, eh? Hey, think about it. I didn't think you were turning up, you know, at one point. I'm glad you did. Both me mum and Alma threaten me with violence if I do. <laughs> well, you know why that is, don't you? Because they know what a cracking fella you've got yourself. Yeah? Mm. Might be that. Might be. Did you notice their new hats, by the way? Hats? Well, that's got to do with it. <laughs> yeah, mate. All the best. When you've got time. Cheers, pal. Thank you very much. I suppose you've got to tell me we've got to get going. Uh, well, if we want to get to the hotel before dinner... Well, I've just got to get to the flat, pick the suitcase up, and I want to get back to Gail and Martin. Oh, right, I'll come with you. I want to get to the hotel. Dad's going to make a speech. Your dad? Martin, you mean. Martin is not your real dad, Nicky. Your real dad's in heaven. Yes, I know. And he's watching over you all the time, you know. And he's thinking about you all the time. And he wants you to think about him. He doesn't want you to forget him, ever. All right. Hey, miss. I'm back. Oh, you should have seen Gail. She looked lovely. Mavis? Good evening, Rita. What are you doing behind my counter? And where's Mavis? One answer to both questions. Mavis had a missing paper boy, so she stepped into his shoes and I filled her shoes. I see. <laughs> well, while we're on the subject of shoes, perhaps you could direct yours rapidly in the direction of that door. Rita. Rita, can't we start all over again? No. Look, I'm only trying to be friendly and I don't want any thanks for tonight. I don't. But I did expect fairness and I've always thought of you as a fair-minded woman and I refuse to believe that I was wrong. All right, I'm nearly done now. I'd just like to say, I know Gail and I know Martin. And in my opinion, for what it's worth... Not a lot. <laughs> thank you very much, Desmond. In my opinion, for what it's worth, I reckon they're made for each other. And I hope, no, I'm sure they'll make each other as happy as Sally makes me. I should tell her that a lot more than I do, but I don't. <laughs> Kevin, lad, you're on free drinks for the rest of the night. Yeah, what's your game? <laughs> anyway, I'll finish you off now. So if you've got a glass... I'd like to propose a toast to Gail and Martin, Mr and Mrs Platt. Gail and Martin. 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 To the Platts and not forgetting all the little ponytails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean, the ponytail? It's a little joke. It means you and your brother and sister. She likes a drink, don't she, Martin's mother? She likes to be too much, if you ask me. Well, I'm not asking you. Nobody's asking you. Well, I'd like to say something now. <laughs> Well, I've been pestering Gail Rotten to make it legal, you know. I mean, I have. I've been going on at her for ages. But anyway, that's by the by. We've tied the knot now, and I feel a lot easier in my mind. Well, one, because the pools coupon was always in her name. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> I've got myself a wonderful wife. I've got myself three marvellous kids, and I've never been so happy. So... I'd like to invite you all to my silver wedding in 25 years' time. <laughs> I don't know what to say. And last orders in the restaurant are 9 o'clock. Oh, fine. Your key, Mr Barlow, room 17. And if you leave your bags there, I'll get someone to bring them up for you. Yeah, no, no, that's OK, but, uh, but it's two rooms. I'm sorry? Uh, we're booked into single rooms. Oh. I'm afraid it's down here as a double. Mr and Mrs Barlow. No, uh, we're not Mr and Mrs Barlow. I'm Mrs Sedgwick. Oh, yeah, no, I definitely specified single rooms when I rang out. Obviously, you made a mistake at this end. Yeah. Word upon her armour, this is not uh -huh. a cunning plot on my part. <coughs> oh, well, um, we'll go and have dinner while you sort things out. I'm sorry, Mr Barlow, the hotel's completely full. Room 17's the only room we've got. I'll tell you what, though, and don't mind me saying, will you, but I can't help remembering your first wedding doing here. I've been thinking about that myself. 
course, you were only a kid then, the original child bride. How long ago is it? Twelve years. Where the hell does time go? Eh? Twelve years. Well, I can't help remembering. I was so sure that me and Brian, we were going to live happily ever after, like in the fairy tales. Makes you glad you can't see what's ahead of you, didn't it? If you did, you'd do away with yourself. Well, happy ever after this time, eh? Uh, Gail, Gail. So Louise is getting overtired. She's getting quite cranky, in fact. Yes, all right. Well, we're just going. Thanks, Beth. I'll see you. Hey, would you would you mind handing that infant back to its mother? It's a barmaid. I need nor a mother's help. All right. Oh, go on, honey. I'll take him off your hands. Martin. What's that? What? I think it's time we were going. Get these old men into bed. Yeah, well, I think you're right, love. I could do with an early night anyway. <laughs> You'll be lucky to get to bed for midnight, our Martin. Barbara, come on, I'm right, going to give them that? their present. Aye, aye, what present? You're going on your honeymoon, <coughs> you and Gail. Honeymoon? We booked you a nice little hotel in Abersock. <laughs> Abersock? Yes. Uh, uh, did you know anything about this? <laughs> no, I didn't. Everything's paid for. All you've got to do is get there. <laughs> well, well, we can't. Yes, it's the kids. You can. It's all organised. Now, you and Martin need some time to yourself. The kids have been looked after. And I thought I'd move into your house while you're away. Save them having all that old people. <laughs> well, it's very nice of you, but there's Alma and the Cathy. She's expecting me back on Monday. Oh, no, know, she's man. not. Thanks because she's going to help her out next week. <laughs> now, no argument. She's going. Well, uh, a honeymoon <laughs> in Abbasson, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do if it rains? Oh, well, I think we can think of something, love, don't you? Seriously, Alma, I, I do assure you that this isn't some sort of gambit of mine, you know. I mean, I've, no, I've never done this sort of thing, letting your car run out of petrol. Don't, don't I just that I believe you. Some men I wouldn't, naming no names, but you can probably guess. <laughs> right, well, uh, I can sleep in the car. Oh, come on, there's no need for that. That's making too much of it. I mean, we're not a pair of silly kids. Oh, true. So, it's either the bolster down the middle of the bed or uh, one of us is going to have to sleep on that sofa. Uh, me? It's my fault, so you get the bed. That's only fair. I won't argue with that. So, uh, that's the sleeping arrangement sorted out then. If you're sure you can live with it. Oh, look, right. Well, suppose I go down to the bar and have a nightcap. We're giving you time to get yourself ready for bed. How does that sound? That sounds very discreet and uh, respectable, Mr Barlow, sir. You know, I always knew you were a real gentleman. you're <laughs> <coughs> <sighs> It's been a long day. I'm shattered. Yeah. So how did your baby minding go? Fine. Well, me and Rosie got on like a house and far. Did you change her? The need didn't arise. Well, if it did, she didn't mention it anyway. I'm surprised Sally trusted you with little Rosie. No, oh, here. Sally's no dozer, you know. She knows who she can trust and who she can't. I think we'd better have it. Hey. This baby I've got landed with. I know you want it. Well, you do, don't you? <sighs> of course I do. I was just hoping you did. I'm still not sure it's the sensible thing. Oh, sure it is. If we want it. I mean, you do want it, don't you? Yeah. Well, uh, that's wonderful. And you won't regret it, Liz. I promise you. Hey, your skates on, son. Dinner money. Dinner money, right. Hey, will you take it easy with that milk? Why? There's plenty of it, isn't there? Not for you, there isn't. Who's well, it for? <laughs> in this extra part we get in. Uh, what about some breakfast? Uh, sorry, no time. Picking someone up on the way. Oh, yeah. Oh. I knew might that be. <laughs> I haven't got time to stand here discussing my love life. Could take all day. <laughs> right, I'll get off. See ya. See ya. See you later. Are we that confident at his age, eh? His age? I was pregnant and I was scared. Well, you know I have a loving husband. You will want for nothing. I hope you realise we'll only have one wage coming in. I sure will manage. Are you sure? And how's it going, the business? Still solvent. That's not what I asked. Well, all right, Liz. I mean, it's not army money, but, you know, when you start out, you've got to build your stock up and get yourself known, you know. Run at a loss, you mean? Why do you twist everything I say? I just want to know, for my own peace of mind. The only thing you need to know is that I love you. And I love that wee baby in there, right? So, 
Leave it to me. Trust me, I'll look after you. All right. Oh, sorry, wrong house. I thought it was a McDonald's. <laughs> hey, come here, you stupid idiot. <sighs> Listen, don't you think we should tell them before they figure it out for themselves? OK, but not one at a time, when we're all together, eh? Yeah, all right. Can I come in yet? Honestly, you two, if you're not rowing, you're snogging. It's about time you started to whack your age. Will you be in when I get back? Aye, I'm on nights again. Ah, you see, with you at home all day, we could have been looking after them kiddies. Ah, oh, why didn't we think of that? Cos I'm not as flash as some, as I could mention. Paying for Martin and Gail to go in to hotel. Well, it's obvious where her game is. Who? Who do you think? Marty's mother, this Barbara Platt. I mean, she's trying to make us look like skinflints, you know. But I don't like it. I'll tell you something else I don't like as well. I don't like her looking after Sarah and Nicky, I tell you. Why? What did you see her at the wedding? She was tiddly. Oh, everybody gets tiddly at a wedding. Not me, don't. All right, everybody except you. No, not when there are kiddies present. And did you see? She never spent two minutes with her own husband. I seem happy enough to me. Oh, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? Well, what's the point in painting her as a loose woman? They were doing Martin and Gail a favour. Where's the harm in that? And why was she doing him a favour, eh? I'll tell you. Cos she's trying to get at me. She's trying to turn my own grandchildren against me so they won't want to see me anymore. Do you think you might be exaggerating just a little bit? Oh, well, that's you all over, isn't it, Tom? Pretend it isn't happening. Well, I speak my mind. If she's took it wrong way, that's her look out. Speaking what wrong way? Well, what I said. Well, what did you say? Oh, nothing much. Come on. Well, I, I just said that um, if she wants to be part of Gail's family, there were certain standards needed. So what about Martin's mum? I mean, she were a turn up for the book, wasn't she? Oh, yeah, she was a real live wire. Oh, what a laugh. Do you know, after the blushing bride and groom had departed, she got us all doing the conga. <laughs> the kid is an all. Oh, you should have seen Ivy's face. Talk about thunder. Of course, you and Ken had left by then, hadn't you? Hey, how did it go your weekend away? You have come to help, haven't you, Audrey? Otherwise, uh, I'll see you later. Oh, dear, dear, we are in a good mood, aren't we? Yeah, well, I'm single-handed, you know. I've got time for idle gossip. I'm surprised you have, too, with Alstor. Oh, I don't know what I'd do without Deirdre. Right, egg and chips twice over there. Uh, yours was a sausage sandwich, wasn't it, love? And uh, a cup of tea, right. Okay. So, come on, then. How did it go? Fine. Was the accommodation to your satisfaction? Yes, that was. Did Ken have a good time? I think so. <laughs> I bet he did. <laughs> oh, come on now, Mum, what happened? Uh, look, sausage sandwiches over oh. there. When you finish, would you mind uh, washing them plates? <laughs> well, you have come to help, haven't you? Oh, yeah. All right, and spare five minutes. Yeah. So, come on, then. We had a very pleasant time, both of us. Full stop. End of subject. Excuse me. Sorry, it's all in twenties. We're short of change. Can you do me a favour? Well, I don't know. What is it? I've got a man coming. Can you give him this key? Only I'm going to be late. Well, what man? Uh, delivery man. Furniture oh, shop. And what time will he be here? Well, he's promised me 8.30, but I can't wait, you see. Is there some sort of problem? Well... <sighs> well, just, just leave it with Rita if you've got to go out. Oh, no, no. I can see to it myself. Oh, thanks. You're an angel. Do you know that? An angel of mercy. Oh, by the way, I have got another set of keys, so tell him to post it through the letterbox when he's done. Do you know, I'll tell you, I'll be glad when my refurbishment's complete. I mean, camping out up there. I haven't had one good night's sleep since I moved in. Remember me? Yeah, yeah, of course I do. Come in. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you got a little love you. Yeah. Ivy in? Oh, she's at work. Oh, of course, I was forgetting. Oh, well, uh, I won't stop then. Well, just for a minute. Right. How's the kiddo then, eh? Oh, good as gold. Look at him. Hmm. Oh, it was a good do, wasn't it? Mm. I don't think I've laughed so much in all my life. Mm. Did Ivy enjoy it? Oh, aye, yeah. But she's not much for, uh, you, know, uh, you know... Oh, neither am I. But you've got to let your hair down sometime, haven't you? <laughs> I didn't upset her, did I? 
Ivy? Oh, heavens, no, no, not much upsets Ivy. Oh, well, that's all right, then. No, you were just so much she said, you know. I didn't know if it were a joke or not. Oh, she's got a good sense of humour, has Ivy? I thought she had. What, what did she say like? Well, I can't remember her exact words. I mean, I had had a couple of drinks. It's a bit about uh, kiddies needing a sobering influence. Uh, well, whatever it was, I'm sure it was said with the best of intentions. That's what I thought. Yeah, hey, come and see yourself down. Come on. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, I says to myself, I'm taking David out for a breath of fresh air, so I thought I'll pop in and invite you both round. Oh, that'd be smashing. Be fine. I mean, you know, I'm stopping at Gail and Martin's. Well, kids would be looking at him. We'd be really pleased to see you, all yeah. of them. When? Well, any day this week. Come for your tea. If you don't mind taking pot luck, that is. I'll expect you when I see you. Yeah, well, I'll just ask Ivy. Eh? Right. Uh, look, are you sure you don't like a cup of tea? I mean, kettle's on. Go on, then. <laughs> just a quick run. Steve, listen, will you put them pies in the oven, mate, while I get this phone call on? You know the boss? Good man. Dave, Jim. Hi, how you doing? Uh, listen, you know that Yamaha I was telling you about? Aye. Well, listen, I'm, I can come down, well, 40 quid. Is that any use to you? All right, well. Well, listen, if there's anybody else interested, will you tell them to get in touch with me? Will you do that? Aye, oh, you're a good man. Cheers, now. Bye. It's me mum, not to my knowledge, no. Well, either that or you're getting a divorce. I'll never give you that idea. Well, every time me and Andy walk into the room, everything stops. I reckon she's ill, Andy reckons you're getting a divorce. Well, you couldn't be further off being the pair of you. Your mother and I are happy as Larry. She's never been fitter. So why don't you just carry on laying the table and I'll get this muck off my hands. I'll get it. Hello? No, she's at work. Would you want to leave a message or anything? Yeah, I'll just fetch you. Dad, yeah. you take a message from your mum. It's the surgery. All right. Okay, the down. God knows what he was doing last night. He's done carpet bit sound of it on his bathroom floor. Every ten minutes, it would clip clop, clip clop. Just sounded like Ragfella's donkey. <laughs> then toilet was flushing. So you're on about Reg. Mm. Hey, he's not, uh, you know, started anything, has he? Like what? Like throwing gravel up at your bedroom window, that sort of thing. Oh, thanks, Betty. I hadn't even thought of that. Well, they can get up to all sorts of funny things, can fellas. Hey, do you not remember the Weatherfield gravel man? No? Do you want another drink? No, thanks. Uh, no, thanks. Okay. I'd better be getting back to the shop. Me and all, maybe, will be champing at the bit for a dinner. <laughs> Betty, you haven't forgotten Ken's sandwiches, have you? I'll do it now. I won't be a minute, Ken. Oh, OK. Liz. What is it? No, listen, I don't want you to panic, all right? What's up? I've had a phone call. From the surgery, they want you to pop in this afternoon. I've had the test back. I don't know, but they said there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Well, seeing as I'm here, I might as well have a pint then. Oh, the guess who's in the doghouse. <laughs> I hate to drag you away, but... Sir... Oh, it's my fault for delaying her, Audrey, telling her me tales of woe. Don't tell me any, Rita. I've got enough of me own. Oh, how is Alf? Oh, moaning on about stock control and competitive pricing, so I reckon he must be going bad. Good, I'm glad to hear yeah. it. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're the keys. Thanks, love. See you later. All right, bye. Yes, Audrey? Ken! Oh, I think Ken will be for me out of uh, Just waiting for a sandwich. Right. Uh, G&T, Liz, please. Coming up. I thought you were getting your sandwiches somewhere else these days, Ken. I had to pop home with some books, didn't have time for school dinner, so anything else you want to know? No, listen, if you've had a row with Alma, that's your business. Oh, a row? Just seemed a bit moody this morning. Did Alma say we'd had a row? Oh, no, no, not in so many words. Actually, she's been telling me about your weekend. Here we are. Thanks, Liz. Cheers. Oh, shit. Oh, come on, Ken. You don't need to worry. Look, me and Alma are mates. We have no secrets, honestly. You can trust me. I could sue that hotel for what happened, you know. Oh, could you? Yeah. Too darn right I could. Definitely book separate rooms. Oh. Sorry to keep you waiting, look. They are paid for. Okay, thanks, brother. Yeah. I don't know what Alma's been saying, but you can take it from me. We behave with the utmost propriety. It was all above board. Even if it was a bit embarrassing. Well, they better had turn up because I can't go for my dinner till they do. 
Yes, well, if you must know, I don't think Rita is disposed to demonstrations of neighbourliness just at the moment. Oh, well, I hope they do, because my tummy's rumbling. Who with that on phone? Victor? No, it wasn't. All right, don't bite me head off. Right, go for your dinner now. I'm sorry I'm late back. Uh, will you try and get back for half past? I want to go to Thole Sailors. I don't want any dinner. I beg your pardon? I don't feel hungry. Well, go home and put your feet up. Make beds. I mean, Hoover Harriet's sand tray. Do what you want your dinner hour. No, I thought I'd work through and, and maybe finish early. Oh. Oh, well, in that case, I'll go to Thole Sailors now, then. Are you sure you're all right? Well, yes, of course I am. The funny way of showing it. Right, lads, see you tonight. Mind how you go. They must think we run a home for waifs and strays here. <laughs> Been on that dartboard since 12 o'clock. I don't think they've sucked four pints between the lot of them. But still, rather them than the Eddie Ramsden mob. Oh, leave them, Liz. Get yourself off home. Oh, they'll not take five minutes. You get yourself off home and have a good rest. How do you mean? I don't need a rest. Don't you? I'm not ill. You sure? Of course I am. Well, then I think I can guess what the problem is. If it is a problem. I'm right, aren't I? It's all right. Nobody's set out, but they will sooner or later. Is it that obvious? To them that have been through it. You? Is it not a cause for celebration? Is that it? It is Jim's, if that's what you're thinking. Never crossed my mind. Listen, I'm sorry if I've been a bit sharp. It's just when you get to this stage, it comes as a bit of a shock. Do the lads know? I've told Jim I want it. He's thrilled to bits. And what about you? I don't know, but I honestly don't know. One minute I'm looking forward to it, planning ahead, and the next I think it's too late in life to be starting again with all that caper. It's not too late, believe you me. I'm 34. The lads are grown up. I was a lot older than that. It was only three years ago. Go on. Didn't you know? Me and Alec would have given anything for that child. Anything. I'd no idea. Well, I don't celebrate anniversaries right like that. I'm sorry. But whatever your fears and worries are, being too old isn't one of them. You've plenty of time to start another family. Yeah. But don't worry. I'll not say out. Or pass judgment. Thanks, Ben. Yes, just put the keys back through the letterbox when you've finished. That's next door's letterbox. Right, now, where was... Oh, yes, 4P change. Thanks very much. There's a fella outside, and I think he's delivering some at next door. Really? Mm. Well, I hope it's some carpet for that bathroom. Or a flush muffler. Oh, what? A flush muffler. Something to stop that toilet making such a racket at middle at night. I didn't know there was such a thing. Well, happen there isn't, but I'd buy a box of chocolate for any fella who invented one. Do you want to uh, come and help me unload the car? Looks like a tent. You don't think it's joint boy scouts, do you? No, it's not a tent. It's rubber. Rubber? Yeah. What does he want with all that rubber? Don't answer that. that it's his bed that's arrived. Is it? Yeah, it's a water bed, Rita. A water bed? Yeah. How the heck do you know that? Well, I've seen photographs. What sort of photographs? Well, brochures, then. Because it, it's supposed to be very good for aching muscles, and Derek and me once explored the idea. Went into it very deeply, as a matter of fact. Did you buy it? So there's nothing to worry about? No, your tests are absolutely fine. I just want to ask for your uh, cooperation over the next few months. What's it about? Well, the practice is taking part in a research project. We're monitoring pregnancies in women in their 30s and 40s. There's no problem, is there? 
No, no, no. So long as you're fit, which uh, you appear to be. We need your permission, that's all. I mean, maybe there'll be one or two extra examinations and a couple of questionnaires to fill in. One for you, one for your husband. My husband? Yeah, he's uh, attitude to the pregnancy. Oh, he's chuffed a bit. And you're not? No. No. He's dead set on the idea. It's made him feel like a teenager again. Oh, don't get me wrong. We've got a good relationship, but... I just wonder if he realises what we're letting ourselves in for. I mean, it's bound to put a strain on the marriage, isn't it? Does he know that you're not quite as enthusiastic as him? Oh, yeah. We have talked about, you know, not having it. You've considered termination, then? Either way, it's not going to be easy, is it? There you are, love. Thank you. Thank you. Ta-ra. Anyone home? I'm making a phone call. Oh. I'll leave these on the counter then. Haven't I made myself plain? I don't want your present. I just want you to leave us alone. They were for Mavis. Hello, love. Oh, you haven't made me tea, have you? You're a little treasure, what are you? I'm a little treasure. Oh. <laughs> have you been anywhere? Well, I'll clean car. I'll clean bathroom. You little love. Give us a kiss. Mm -hmm. Come on, sit yourself down. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Barbara called round. Did she? Yeah, she brought David with her. What did she want? Uh, well, she uh, she thought there might have been a bit of a misunderstanding between you and her. No misunderstanding as far as I was concerned, Don. She'd had too much to drink. Oh, well, she might have had one too many. One? She couldn't get enough. Anyway, why are you defending her? Ah, oh, she's all right. So, uh, you made her welcome, then? I made her a cup of tea. Oh, did you? So what did she want, then? Well, I told you she wanted to be friends. She asked us to call around for tea, see the kiddies. And what did you say? Well, I said I would. Oh. Well, in future, I'd be glad if you've asked me before you accept invitations on my behalf. Thank you very much. Hiya. What kind of a day have you had? Oh, hectic. Oh, Pity Kenneth couldn't have helped you in his lunch hour. Oh, <laughs> You were in the Rovers, didn't you know? Look, Audrey, just because Ken and I went away for the weekend, it does not mean that we live in each other's pockets. No. Or share the same bedroom, I suppose, hmm? What did you say? Do you know, it seems a funny set-up to me, sharing the room with a fella and not getting up to out. What, Ken told you that? I didn't ask him, Mama, honestly. He volunteered it. Oh, he did, did he? A pleading innocence he was, honestly. Oh. But when I think of the fellas I've known, I would have been so pleased to pull a stunt like that. Oh, oh, shame nothing happens. I bet you're dead disappointed, aren't you? Audrey. Yeah? I'm fed up with you interfering. Look, I don't ask you details about your sex life because, quite frankly, I don't want to know. But if I did, it might explain why you're so agog to hear about other people. So just sort out your own problems, will you, before you start poking your nose into mine. Right? So there is a problem. Still don't know what all the fuss is about. Look, I just don't want her to think we can't look after ourselves, that's all. Well, she is, though, isn't she? Come on, you can tell the truth. We're not kids anymore. Lads, I promised your mother I wouldn't say until we're all together. That's all. God for one. Hi, I was getting a bit worried. Well? Everything's fine. Well, what did the doctor say? Have you told him? No, no, he just answered the phone, that's all. Well, come on, then. What's the big secret? Your mother is gonna have a baby! You are kidding. Ah, great news, eh? Brilliant. What for? What do you mean, what for? Well, aren't you a bit old for that sort of thing? No, she is not. And neither am I, for that matter. Aren't you pleased? If you want a sprog running around the place, that's completely up to you. 
So long as you keep it out of our room. Well, stuff you two, me and Lizard's over the moon. Aren't we? Double eight's lucky tonight, kid. No, Rita thinks he's pursuing her, but I, I think he just wants to be accepted as a next-door neighbour. Well, I don't know what women see in the fella. He's got about as much charm as a... as an aardvark. A what? An aardvark. It's a, it's a sort of an animal. I'd steer well clear of him if I were you. Uh-oh. Chocolate is heavy. Oh, for you. Oh. My saviour. <laughs> I'm afraid they got slightly damaged in transit. Right, what can I get you and your oh, charming husband? Yeah, lovely, thank you. Well, then, um, just a sweet sherry and a half bitter. Um, thank you. Uh, oh, nice. If the park keeper comes in, he'll have you for receiving. Oh. And what does he mean, his saviour? Hi, Elaine. Hi. Hi, Ben. Quite pleased when you're ready, love. Orange juice for Liz, I think. Don't you take a wee jar, Deirdre? Oh, what's this in here, Doc? Cheers, oh, you right. knock off me. I'm looking tonight, eh? Oh, Jim, let's just have a quiet drink, eh? Yeah, sure. What are we celebrating, then? Jim's good nature. Oh, well, thanks very much. I'll have a pill. Now, listen, we can't keep it to ourselves any longer. Not now the lads know. Well, do you want us to know or not? Have you won pills or what? I'm going to be a dad. I thought you already were. No, 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 again. That's right, isn't it, Liz, eh? Well, oh, good on you, Liz. Oh, that's wonderful news. Thanks, Beth. Congratulations, kid. I wish you all you wish yourself. Oh, oh that's, that's, that's great. great. That's great. That's great. That's great.